Oh, PKA 600 with our guest, Sam Hyde, a.k.a. Janet Reno <coughs> Taylor. This episode of PKA brought to you by Lucy. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> this is our big episode 600. Taylor, are you back? Oh, great. What the fuck happened? <laughs> you, froze. you ruined it. You ruined it, Taylor. You ruined it. Did, this did, is did it. you not we hear were, anything? With your faulty air conditioner and your cheap air conditioning and your, your bad internet. <clears throat> well, did you hear the sponsors? No. No. Okay, this episode is brought Lucy. to you by fucking Lucy. Uh, Death by Gummy Bears, a new sponsor of, of THC products. And uh, Lock, Lock and Load, and low. finest cum pills ever. Janet Reno, Sam Hyde, thank you so much for joining us. Did I've you been say a cum pills? Fan. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. we developed a proprietary blend of cum pills, Kyle and I, as a joke initially, and over time, it was and never a lot funny of, to me. Well, does it make well, you we, have we, more cum? It so makes you cum more. Cum. It makes you. Right, you pause the show. I gotta away. buy these real quick. Where do we'll, I go? We'll uh, you go I'll to just search for cum pills. Hold on. This shit is fucking hilarious. <laughs> it also helps with the propulsion, uh, and it helps with the pearlescence. Yeah, Kyle, and lessons. your pre-com production is going to be off the chain. <laughs> no joke. The pre-com becomes almost real com. No like more it, loop for you. Damn. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're like, like when you're getting like the beginning of a handy, you've been on this for a couple weeks, the Pygeum in here, you're going to be leaking like a faulty faucet. Little damn. bits of cum are going to be coming out. Yeah, and it, I mean, every time uh, you cough, essence come in out. your yep. penis, we'll come, we'll and then pearlescence volume and range. All do, do you get luminescence also? We're working on Me. that, Pat and Penny. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of cancer in the rats. We tested that on oh. mm. a tremendous amount, but it might be mm. worth mm. it. But I've been a fan of yours for many years. Uh, watched all your shit. I find it very, very funny. Uh, so I was excited when, like, the Sam Hyde universe and the PKA universe through Harley kind of connected a bit. So we <coughs> got the Harley fight take from his point of view where he was telling us, like, I was worried about getting punked, but Sam's being sincere. He's being genuine. From your perspective, were you really high on Harley the whole time, or were you thinking like this motherfucker might get beat up by a game grump? No, he's uh, he uh, was dedicated. He was definitely serious about. Um, he was very serious about. Like he would he would do little jokes and everything because he was making a video at the time. But as far as the actual like um, fun activities that we planned out, he was uh, he was deadly serious about that. He did a really good job, okay, as nice. evidenced by the fact that he mauled that little fucker. No offense. <laughs> How serious? Were you? I, I have in my head. Tell me if this is at all on top, on, on target. Did you maybe think you were gonna fuck with Harley before you met him, and then he won no, you no, over, no. and you decided? No, he like, was he was sincere from the the jump. He was uh, he was very sincere, and he sent me his um, uh, his sparring footage, which is uh, you know you wouldn't really that's kind of an extension of trust right there, sending somebody mm -hmm. footage of you in a in a vulnerable position. Um, so right off, right off the bat, I knew he was going to be a, a serious uh, play there. I knew he was. I was asking I, if you were, you know, maybe contemplating like pranking him a it. little bit. No, 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 no. I just, uh, I, de I definitely, <clears throat> I've always kind of had like a, a pretty, pretty serious, um, not loyalty code, but just sort of an internal calculation about who is, who's fucked with me. <laughs> and, who, and who's done me? A, who's done me a solid? And um, I, tr I try my very hardest not to like violate that for uh, for any old any old reason. You know what I mean? There's a code. Sure. Yeah, there, I, of course, there's a code. It's the entertainer's code. It's the YouTuber's code. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the YouTuber's, uh, I didn't, the I didn't YouTuber's see code. That coming. I thought you were. I get. I'm sorry. T Taylor wants to talk to you, but I. I, no, I no. From the outside, you looked more like a. Is it called ironic comedy? I, I saw it online today. I was looking at you, mm -hmm. like it. I don't want to say bully, but like you know, if you're not prepared <laughs> to like <laughs> mess with the, the you know, to, to stand, I don't know. If you're not prepared for what's coming at you, you're gonna get steamrolled. That's kind of what I what I thought might. Yeah, happen. you're a provocateur. You like you you're yeah, like, yeah. You're like pushing people's buttons. So the idea of luring Harley down from fucking Canada and then what? getting him down there and messing with him would be would be pretty funny. No, I mean, <laughs> right? A the, little? No, man. All the all the people who've hit me up in the past that mm -hmm. I've fucked with have been like Reuters journalists and like people that write for the New Yorker 
Like they, it's, it's just immediately yeah. apparent from the first line of the first email that it's some faggot that's trying to make me look <laughs> foolish. And I yeah, that, that BuzzFeed was, guy who who like got the show taken down. He he came at yard. Mm -hmm. I remember that. But I could tell. You can tell right away when somebody comes at you. The first line of what they say is some sort of like simpering, cautious, circular. Well, what if it was like? like you you can tell when someone's coming to uh, try to make you look bad. Like I knew with iDubs. I was the whole time I wanted to keep an open mind and like help him make something cool because he did make me extra famous now. But I mm -hmm. knew that he was gonna try to he was gonna try to punk me there too. Yeah. But I I could tell I could tell as soon as I talked to Harley that he just was you know being straight up and that's what I try to do. Harley's with a good I like dude. That. Yeah. I watch yeah. Yeah. All that iDubs footage and as I watch it, I feel like I'm in the shoes of iDubs <coughs> and. I would have fallen for every one of those pranks. I would have been your <laughs> sucker, your bitch. I, I would have, I would have not fared well in I Dub's situation. The the reveal that that wasn't your real girlfriend. Oh yeah, man! <laughs> I don't know what. That, that was, was the, the funniest, best part. That was the funniest thing. That was yeah. the best part. <laughs> Something about I think there were like a handful of wasps dead on the table. Like something about that. Like like even though I don't even think I think I saw them. Just the idea that there were dead wasps about. Was 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 yeah. really good. Was really good to me. That I liked really how like retarded up. so much of the ideas were. Where it's like, how about this, Jack? Ball bearings <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> That's perfect. You can say so fucking stupid, but like, yeah, I, I think you're right. Like, do you think that iDubs had to like change the direction of his documentary as it was going because he realized the kind of sandbag attempt wasn't going to work? It or it wasn't going to show right. I think in for him he was. Um... Look, this is not a nice thing to say about somebody, but I know, I know what he, th I know what he's, I know what wheels were turning in his little mind, uh, the first second that he contacted me because he was getting, he was getting a lot of shit from 4chan people, poll people, because he's his girlfriend is a whore. <laughs> I, look, whatever, okay. Sometimes you just have to get pussy. I don't know, whatever. Mm -hmm. All right. But he was getting he was getting a lot of shit, and in his mind, what he was thinking was, I can't punk the entirety of 4chan, I can't go punk the entirety of Poll. So what I'll do is I'll take the guy that's posted there, that's the mo uh, th often posted there. I'll punk him, and by proxy, I'll show all these little nerds that I'm not a cuck. I'm the guy <laughs> with the hot girlfriend, and I always get one over on people. Like I know, the I know. Guy in the room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he he even said to uh, one of my crew members o overheard him saying during the shoot. He said, um, "I'm usually the puppet master in the, these types of situations," <laughs> which is just like it's just like a mentally sick thing to Wait, say. Are you serious? Yeah. Yes. He said, "I'm usually the puppet master." That's like a sociopathic yes. way to see the world. All the interactions you have are puppeteering. That's it's men Bizarre. mental mental sickness, and it's something. It's like a. He's got the, I want to cure him. I want to make him better. He's got this weird little weaselly thing where he's like, in his, in his mind, he's always running the calculation of like who looks better or some shit like that. Like who, who's on top right now in this situation. It's like a very, uh, I mean, it's a very content creator mindset to have, but mm -hmm. it's something you, you don't want to be thinking shit like that. Well, you really put him out of his comfort zone, which is like the perfect way to throw water on something mm. like that. Because, mm -hmm. like, everything that you did with him was, like, he was just like, wait, what am I doing? Like, the yeah. guns and stuff. Like, like that wasn't his shit. That was, that yeah, was fun yeah. to see. Yeah. I enjoyed I, it. I, I watched both videos. Um, Taylor turned me on to you maybe three, four years ago with, um, I, I, the first thing with I saw moms. was. moms. Yeah. Moms mm -hmm. is always moms. how I introduce people to Sam. I've shown moms to my mom. I've shown moms <laughs> to everybody <laughs> I fucking know. Um, and Officer <laughs> Maggot. I have a soft spot for Al Officer Maggot. Oh, yeah. uh, especially in, in these in these times, it's like I, there's there's an officer maggot on every corner. I'm sure. Like, like, like I, I like to know that he's out there in spirit, <laughs> looking mm -hmm. over us, you stay. watching, yeah. spitting on people. Mostly just watching. <laughs> yeah. Mostly just watching and, and spitting <coughs> on people. <laughs> yeah, I, some of my favorite ones you do are well when I can't tell if it's an actor that is being put up to it that you're like like the uh, the Nazi in occupied Paris, the black and white one makes mm -hmm. me laugh so hard. If that is an actress, if that is yeah, an actress, yeah. she needs to she needs to be in more shit because she's yeah. killing it. If that is because she really played it like a journalist who is actually very upset. 
She did a good job because she wasn't ready. She wasn't prepared. Like we didn't set her up beforehand. Like let her know. But she did a really good job rolling with the punches. That's my favorite kind of uh, my favorite kind of actor is one where they when the trap is sprung and they know that it's like good, I'm gonna look bad. Like this is gonna look <laughs> bad for me. But they keep roll. They keep rolling with it. I think that takes a lot of fortitude to uh, continue to to play it that way, and that's what I like too. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. I uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just so fucking funny. <laughs> I I was uh, I think World Peace, your show that got canceled back in 2016, 17, whatever it was. That was. I didn't know much about you at the time. I just saw that on Adult Swim. And I remember in my head thinking like, oh, this is like Tim and Eric if they went like 10X, like next mm. level. Like this is going to be the new thing, <laughs> like Tim and Eric kind of passing the torch. And then, because I've always thought Tim and Eric was funny. Yeah. And then I I saw that video of Tim Heideck, I think it was Tim, who <laughs> really worked hard to get your show fucked. And yeah, I've, I've never been able to look at their show the same way. Like, I don't, I'm sure Eric's fine. I don't know anything about him. But mm -hmm. that really was upsetting where it's like, God damn, like they clearly see a guy who's like funny in the same way they are, but pushing the envelope. And I don't yeah. think they want to lose their, their, their limelight. I think I think that's what it was, was just jealousy and uh, a sort of a fear of getting old, which nobody's nobody's immune to that. You know, if I saw somebody doing like something that was like MDE, but better, I'd be like, oh, oh. <laughs> but you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go out of my way to to squelch their uh, career. But that's yeah. what um, that's what Mike Lazo, the the guy that created Adult Swim, he said. You know, he he said we're the next him and Eric. We're going to shoot a hundred episodes of this show. He he, lo he loved it. He was uh, he was so pissed off when they canceled it that he took a two month sabbatical. He he stopped working for two months after Damn. our shit got taken down. Yeah, but um, <clears throat> yeah, Tim just weird, very strangely went extra out of his way to make sure that a, a comedian was not making, making money, uh, which is, yeah. which is kind of crazy because comedy, like you kind of, you kind of rely on freedom of speech and, um, just like a, lic a licentious, is that the right word? Attitude of the public towards content. Like even if you're, mm -hmm. even if someone's making something that you don't like, you don't, it doesn't really serve your interests to, to be like, oh, this shouldn't exist, you know? And that's why, like, Dave Chappelle, Joe Rogan, these guys are all pro-free speech is because they know that their, their bread is buttered with the ability to go up in front of a crowd and say anything. So yeah. for Tim to be, like, a fucking Karen and talk yeah. to the manager <laughs> about the, sh the show that he didn't like, it's just crazy. It's really crazy. And I imagine he was, like, who, who's bigger in the past 20 years at Adult Swim than Tim and Eric? Like, they have mm -hmm. to be the main, like, their word is law, right? Mm -hmm. Like, they can, you know, kingmakers, I would imagine. Well, ulti ultimately, the, uh, the decision, so um, <clears throat> Adult Swim's owned by Turner, and the two guys that are at the top of Adult Swim, Keith Crawford and uh, Mike Lazo, they both loved our show. Uh, but above them is Jeff Zucker. Jeff Zucker is the guy who runs Turner, and mm -hmm. the ultimate, the ultimately what happened uh, to get our show taken down was Bernstein directly emailing Jeff Zucker with the article. The article had no engagement. It had fucking like 60 fire icons or whatever BuzzFeed does for a like. Like nobody was, <laughs> nobody was reading this thing. It was yeah, not- it was nothing. Nobody's paying attention to this. The, re, the, the tweet that he put out had like 12 retweets. Um, <laughs> he he emails Jeff Zucker with this thing and it gets it gets pulled like that. That's actually that's actually no bullshit. Swear on my life, that's what happened to get the show taken down. Do you think that like Jeff Zucker just didn't want to deal with it, or I imagine he's like a boomer and so he probably didn't notice the complete lack of engagement uh, and tread that it had. He was I just like, oh, an article. I think he saw the words Jews rock and went, nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a funny bit. Yeah. It was a funny bit. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. That was that was one of the few shows that I've seen get canceled where I was actually bummed out. Like, well, fuck. That was. I, I can't go back to Tim and Eric now. It's a little too tame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Man, once your like edgy humor <laughs> gets to that next level, you have mm -hmm. to keep going further. I feel yeah, like Opie gotta... and Anthony back in the day fucked me up with that because they did some horrible things to people. It's and like now porn. Like some, you have to keep. Yeah getting less uh, <laughs> more desensitized and yeah. then you're taking and then you're taking pills to make you come more yeah, yeah. 
You have to. Well, that's, that's normal. That's part of being. That's part of being a sigma male. Yeah, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> Once you start coming more, coming like a regular person seems ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, point. inferior. All the women in your life are gonna be blown away. Mm -hmm. Moms, sisters. Mm -hmm. I literally judge. blown away. Maybe. Well, yeah. I think of them as glazed. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Just fucking, no, oh, that's disgusting. I won't even say that. But uh, so, <laughs> what? what the punch did you just pull? It was gonna be a, a, a bad cum joke. It was because it, it was bad, not because it was too dirty. <laughs> but we can so cut that I, part so out. I see, don't worry. I see all the stuff about I Dubs on there. You're trying to keep. You want to save him. You want to redeem him. I think you want to get redeemed, that that yeah. Yoko Ono, as you've said, out of his life. What's your plan to? Because I remember <laughs> I Dubs content cop and how funny he was. And and how good those videos were. Those were hilarious. And he was, he really like, it's a common saying, but like, he really is like pulling the ladder up after himself. Where he's like, I got wildly popular with edgy stuff that is not chill by 2022 standards. But you apologize for it. You don't do that. And it's like, well, that's how you got six million subs, dude. Like yeah. that's how you got where you are. I think what he needs, what he really needs, is to ditch that fucking bitch that he's with. Unfortunately, what is the backstory uh, to this girl? We've heard we've heard a couple of uh, uh, yeah. What's so quite bad about frankly, his, his I don't things. even. What I've <laughs> it doesn't so, seem like, like if I overstep with that. <laughs> what I've seen, what I've seen, and what I've heard from other people is that she is almost like his handler. So when when he's when he's oh. talking to people backstage at the creator clash, when he's telling my crew that that I'm kicked out, that I can't come, all that stuff, he's kind of sitting back, like in the background like approving of, of certain things that are said or just sort of sitting there. And Anissa is uh, the one that's doing all the talking. Oh, there she oh, is right okay. there. What a peach. What a sweet <laughs> actually, peach. actually, I don't know. You say she's so, a whore? Uh, well, she's got an OnlyFans, so she's kind of, yeah. I'm just saying, you know. How much? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Let's look it up. I have prices and pictures of what I need to know, and we're halfway there. Okay. It just went up like $500 because we did this. No, guys, no, not that. We need to get people to buy cum pills and, and weed gummies first. Don't be <laughs> sipping through that clown-faced woman by our cum pills. <laughs> uh, but that's, that's what I've heard um, anecdotally is that she's, uh, she's the one who does the talking in this okay. relationship, which so is, is kind of... Like like it's kind manager. of strange because she's not famous. She's just she's famous for being Idubs' girlfriend. What the fuck does she have an opinion about? And I've heard from her family that she's weird too. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't I don't want I don't want I'm not going to talk about that because her the person that contacted me <laughs> is nice, but she's like a freak. <laughs> <laughs> just just chatting with her family. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I heard from her family she's weird, but I'm not allowed to go any more into that. <laughs> yeah, she is she is weird. <laughs> That's what an audacious statement. <laughs> from your family, she's weird. Well, why do you have it out for her, though? It seems like your battle's really for him. Or do you I, think that she is the puppet master? She is like, you remember, you remember Master Blaster from uh, Mad Max Thunderdome? Yes. She's like the little midget. That's the, the situation we have we have here, Kyle. That's the situation exactly. Master Blaster scenario. Is a Master Blaster scenario. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know a Master Blaster scenario, but it sounds important. We well, you have it. a little midget, uh, you know, high thinking on top of a large oafish like uh, retarded man. Oh, and, okay. and, 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 and Master is the little guy and Blaster is the big guy. And he sort of operates him like a giant tank. They're very close. Very close. Mm -hmm. That sounds the, fun. Deadly like arena. They're twain, as Sticks Hex, as Sticks Hex and Hammer Six 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 would say. A unit. They're twain. <laughs> They're twain. What the fuck does that mean? It's just don't. It doesn't even matter. There you matter. go. There's the Master Blast. <laughs> oh. Yes, you know that's, what? An, I, that's Anissa on top, and that's Idubs in the mask. Bio, <laughs> Bioshock completely ripped this off. You see that, mm. right? I do. So I see. Yeah. Like you think that she's holding him back from his full funny potential because you know he's a very funny guy who has very funny ideas. Like he is. He knows how to write skits, how to produce. He's a talented dude. He's good I looking. Think she's she's made him into a fag. Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, strictly that's not true. Well, a a, a um, spiritual fag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. That clears that's that the up. That's worst. <laughs> spiritual ones. Let's People use the word like pussy. We'll say pussy. Bleep that out. Because oh, when you F said word. a spiritual fag, I picked I pictured a ghost going, 
<laughs> You're just waking up every night with ectoplasm in your mouth. It's like didn't mm-hmm. seem that bad at all. <laughs> Is that a lot I wanted to know man? about. Uh, Could be. I one of the I don't know remember what year you did it, but that TED talk where you made an absolute ass out of a bunch of retards at Drixel University was one of the it's it's still a classic. If you guys haven't seen it, listeners, look up Ted or uh, Sam Hyde TED Talk. Man, How so hard was ago. it for you to be to get into the TED Talk? Was it difficult? Did you have to come up with a fake background or was it easier than you guessed? It was mad easy. I just sent him an email. I said that I was uh let me see if I still have the emails <laughs> from Drexel. TEDx Drexel. Here we go. The organizer's name was Daira Pujara. So, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said, I said I was a photographer. Uh, I was a war photographer in Somalia. <laughs> and um, <laughs> that there was, some, there was some group of women in Somalia who were cleaning up trash. And uh, that was who I was documenting, was like the trash ladies of Somalia. <laughs> 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 yeah, he, he just That's such a stupid it. fake story. <laughs> and they're, like, they're like, we got to get you in front of the front of the people. Yeah, yeah. they're not doing a good job. Somalia still looks like we shit. We got to bring attention to the trash ladies of Somalia. Trash ladies of Somalia, the refuse handlers of Somalia. That's so fucking funny. And they were just like, that is very interesting. We'd love to have you on to give you our speech. And you were yes. like, yeah. this sounds very interesting. Can we Skype sometime this week to explore <laughs> possibilities of a speaking engagement at TEDx? Uh, Mr. Pujara, my name is Sam Hyde. I'm a videographer slash photojournalist. In the past six months, I've done two projects that are pretty interesting. In California, I did some video work for SpaceX and shot a mini documentary about Elon Musk's quest to put a colony on Mars. I have permission to share my footage, including uh, f- a video of Elon talking. The other project I worked on was a piece in Mogadishu, the most dangerous city on earth. A courageous group of women is behind a statistical drop in the rates of suicide bombings, murders, and kidnappings. <laughs> Their secret? Cleaning up the streets, removing trash and scrap. Not completely dissimilar to the broken window situation in NYC in the late 80s <laughs> slash early 90s. That's all, I, yeah, that's all I said, and he said, uh, yes. <laughs> you said yes. Yeah. Sorry for rambling there, but yeah, that's that's no, no, how that's I set it up. No, yeah. I love that. No, I love that. <laughs> wow. So once once they said yes, you can come on. Were you then like, okay, I have to come up with the whole thing now? <laughs> I didn't expect them to say yes. Yeah, I just had my friends. I had uh, my buddy Wyatt, and I can't remember who else was involved. I know, fuck man, there's this one kid who's so funny and continually has done stuff for me, but he's like super paranoid about being credited, so I never know how to credit him, and he's got like fucking five aliases. So I don't know which alias, like fucking Mr. Gizmo, that's him. So I had uh, Wyatt and Mr. Gizmo and myself, we all jumped into a Google Doc and just started writing the most schizophrenic shit possible <laughs> about the future. And yeah, that's, uh, that's how it went. When, with the beginning of that video, <coughs> where you climb up into the set and then sit down and drink a whole bottle of water and then say, give me 25 seconds, was, <laughs> was, it was one of the funniest. I laugh so hard at that to this day, just to get up there, to drink water until you're out of breath, and then you go, oh, give me about 25 seconds. <laughs> and then just take eating, you're just, just eating the uncomfortable silence <laughs> right in front of them. And you're saying, no, you that. can't have any. I want it all. And they're just like, we didn't want any. Why are you enjoying that so much? <laughs> that, was, that was brutal. Everybody pat man. yourselves on the back. <laughs> yeah. And of course, you're dressed as a motherfucking like, Roman soldier. <laughs> mm. A centurion. Yeah. <laughs> a centurion. <laughs> well, that's no, that's so one of the can... things that appeals to me most about comedy is just punishing the audience because most. Um, and you can't, you can't really do it online because when you're online, the people that are looking at your stuff are people who've sought you out. So it's like mm-hmm. they're, they're like-minded, they're with the program, so, so it's, you can't really abuse them too much. But when you're out in the world with regular people who, you know, you say, if, the, the people in that audience, I can imagine saying something that I feel deeply and like heartfelt and sincere and being looked at like I'm a fucking like uh, axe murderer or something. Yeah. So, so why why not torture them with uh, like silence <laughs> and uh, schizophrenia and all these other all these other things? That's I, that's I what. I, I, do do you not get uncomfortable at all? Like when you're up on because like, I watched no, your stand man. up where you go in there. No. 
There was a whole stand-up where you were wearing like an Arab robe, and you're like, "All right, guys, we're gonna do a little different stand-up this time. I'm gonna read crime stats, and that's, that's all that you did." And like, yeah, you just man. ran the room, and like at home watching that a few years ago, I'm like, "I'm like, I'm uncomfortable imagining myself having to deal with the hatred he's getting." I just, I. The thought yeah, of it bro. makes me so uncomfortable. I'm, I'm amazed. It just, it doesn't bother you at all. You get, you no, enjoy I, it. No, because I know, I know when that's happening that it's good, that it's successful, and that people are people, people who seek me out and are looking at it online are going to be happy. So that's how I know that it's going to be like an effective thing. Like I don't give a fuck about the people that came to watch it. Because the <laughs> other thing is, the other thing is, um, anybody who goes to open mic uh, to do stand up and like try out stand up in a in a liberal city is just a scumbag. Like they're all they're all like idiots, and their material their material is so bad, and their ideas about like these are other stand-ups, and they're not laughing at some of the, some shit that I I know that I've said some shit that's super funny. I don't think I'm a great stand-up. I don't think that everything I do is like good, but I know that I've said things in front of audiences like that that are super funny that people mm -hmm. should laugh at, and these <laughs> dumb motherfuckers are just sitting there like. Like that, like waiting for, <laughs> waiting for me to get off the stage so, that, so they can do their like Louis C.K. ripoff bit that they, that they practiced. Um, <laughs> so I forgot what your question was, but oh yeah, hey, in that, in that Arab one, is that the one where I had the fake bomb at the end? Did you see that? Yeah, yeah, you had, you had a fake bomb in a suitcase and then That's the organizer so funny, man. removed you from the premises. <laughs> Fuck, I love that so much. That's so good. My friend JD made that as a prop. He's like a prop maker. He makes crazy shit. We made this fake bomb. Wait, that man. was that was the bomb that when you open it, like a uh, fuck a foghorn goes off. Yeah, yeah. And a bunch of lights start flashing from the bomb. It, it was like a suitcase, and when you open the suitcase, there's a foghorn and a police light, and it's supposed <laughs> to look like an explosive device. <laughs> <clears throat> it did. It was funny. You that, did upset I would be some worried of the people of, there. Are you not worried with something like that though? Because people are so, for lack of a better word, trigger happy. Um, like, like you know, if the cops ever show up. You know, explain yeah. to them that it's a joke bomb might be awkward. Yeah, but probably. joke bomb. <laughs> no, I'd just be like, no, it's a fucking foghorn and a police light in a suitcase. What are you talking about? But are you're in the crazy? robe, so so all they hear is la 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 <laughs> la. That's all I had to wear. That's all I had to wear. My clothes. It's laundry day. <laughs> <laughs> is it illegal? Is it illegal to wear a sheet, officer? <laughs> It is illegal to wear a sheet and yell "Hassalamu alaikum" at people that who do, don't want you around them. <laughs> Listen, here's the here's the thing about police is that you just all you have to do is make them think that you're a pill head and that you're mad about uh, something really insignificant, and and you need to be you need to be aggressively more mad than they are interested in questioning you and you need <laughs> mad, mad at somebody else not them yeah. so for example i recently uh sent a bunch of death threats to somebody and th <laughs> and threatened some person really bad and yeah. uh and I, I after after i did it i was like oh man i fucked up i better get ready to run and uh this <laughs> the uh <clears throat> state police came to talk to me and when they came i went uh yeah, listen, he, they were like, did you, did you threaten this man? Did you threaten to kill this person? <laughs> no, I didn't say I was going to kill him. But listen, I was, I, he made me late for my Uber Eats. So I'm standing there. I'm hungry. I've been hungry for six <laughs> hours, dude. Dude, I've been hungry for six hours. And it was like the topic, the real, the real thing was he was trying to find out if I was unstable about some <laughs> political issue, which I am. So if I had said, if I had said yeah. And check out whitenationalism.com. <laughs> that would have been the worst answer. So what You're I said right. was, so what I said was, yeah, I said some shit because I was pissed off at him about my Uber Eats. That fucking guy made me so mad. And if he comes back here, I'm not saying I'm going to kick his ass, but I might do something. <laughs> like I didn't, I, obviously, I, I wasn't in character like that. But I even I upped the ante by like threatening. I was like, yeah, and if I see, if I see that guy again. Listen, I'm not a violent person, but if he makes me miss my Grubhub, it's on. <laughs> <laughs> and the fucking, this fucking state trooper was like, yeah, I get hungry like that too sometimes. <laughs> Listen, don't contact him again. <laughs> don't contact me. Yeah, I got yeah, angry. Yeah. a big fat fucking pig. I get hungry too sometimes. <laughs> well, he was a, he was a uh, state trooper was a cool guy. He was handsome. He was a Chad. 
And uh, he was like, he was like me. He was like me. He had my body type. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he, and I knew that I knew he was uh, I knew that he was gonna get pissed off when he's hungry because I get pissed off when I'm hungry. So yeah, I knew that that do. would be like the common bond with this uh, state trooper that was jacked like me. You're, you are really <laughs> fucking. No, I, I, I didn't want to gloss over that. How tall are you? I'm six foot four and a half. Okay, that half. I'm almost important. six five. Almost six what? five. That, that's a, that's an important half inch when you're already six four. It, you, it, you're fucking jacked. So I saw, um, I was just scrolling on Reddit and I, I found a picture of you, and uh, I don't even remember what context, but it was you like, double bicep, looking ridiculous. Oh looking, yeah. Like, looking ridiculous, like somebody spilled some ooze on you or something. Yeah, I got do oozed. You, <laughs> <laughs> do you uh, do you use any like uh, uh, TRT or anything like that? I'm on like TRT, that? yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That makes. But sense. not not like a super high dose though. I'm just on. I just have like normal like 1950s man testosterone. That's yeah. <laughs> I mean, th there's a different picture than this. Like if you keep digging, where he's like giving double bicep, uh, and he looks. Well, he so many so sores all over. <laughs> he's clearly done. This is not how he. This is not representative. <laughs> Representative of Sam's physique. What I think kind that of was... filter have you put on your face so that you look like a sick Skyrim <laughs> character? You look, yeah. you look like a character from Skyrim who has the you plague. You look like the clown emoticon. Just just the psoriasis <laughs> filter. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> I think it's well to be. I think if you're asking seriously, I think it's shadow and highlight. Which don't tell anyone. That's my secret special effect that I put on lots of videos. That's how you got your face like that shadow and highlight. <laughs> Yeah. Jesus. It just boosts um, the shadows and it, it reduces the highlights. Well, this no, is not the picture we were imagining. There's one of you that was very recent yeah, where you're looking I can very find it good. For you. But, like, I've, I've seen enough images from your Instagram and stuff where you intentionally upload pictures of yourself looking just horrific with, like, psoriasis filters and, like, <laughs> like I don't leprosy. think there's psoriasis filters. I think I actually have that shit on me. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, nah, so, dude, you were you you very skin, bro. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, this, emerging. This yeah, what I was thinking of. Yeah, your uh, your biceps here are like colossal. Like, like yeah. I'm gonna have to uh, lose some weight, but thank you. Yeah, you need to cut, <laughs> but but not a tremendous amount. Like like you don't need to lose a tremendous amount of fat. Like like you're like, I don't know, 15 pounds away from being like shredded. Uh, you think 15? I'm more than 15, but he's, he'll be jacked. Because you 15 are, pounds he is lighter. A big guy. Yeah, I think I'm I'm pounds later, though, he'll have the when emerging abs. Pounds, he'll feel good. Fucking badass. I'm just saying your 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 biceps are absolutely absurd. Like, like thank you, brother. Like stop. It's what. <laughs> no, don't stop. You're you're looking yoked. <laughs> I mean, Kyle says you need to lose weight, but I'd hit it now, Sam. I just trying to. Lose. I, I got honestly. I got to lose. I got to lose twenty weight. pounds. So I'm doing a I'm doing a fight. Did you guys know that? I had I no heard idea you were fighting. Tell me more. Fighting? I'm it's doing, not it's boogie, gonna, is it? It's gonna no. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a bully move. What? I, all right, I gotta write that down. We'll circle back to that. <laughs> yeah. That one. Listen, Dude, I felt, I felt boogie bad. Later, Woody. I felt Wait, bad about on. threatening. <laughs> I felt very bad about threatening boogie, but uh, so many people boogie. asked me to do it, and I put an Instagram <laughs> poll. I said, "Guys, this is evil. I don't want to do it." But if you make me fight Boogie, I'll do it. And they all, they all wanted me to fucking do it. I, I don't know, man. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a people pleaser. I can't. Yeah, you're a man of the people. I've written down the topic, so we, we won't miss the fight topic. But Boogie and Wings, right? In my view, both of these are kind of punching down, right? You're, you're very who's, who's popular. Wings? Wings, wings of Redemption. Redemption. I saw a video that Oh, that was made. a cameo someone. I don't know who that is. Someone pay, someone bought a cameo and made me threat and made me call out Wings of Redemption. I don't know who that is. I did not have the background to that. I didn't. The, 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 the context changes everything. That's but, but my bad. Are you that's suggesting, a, uh, Woody? Can I can I jump and like predict where you're heading with this? That maybe sure. Sam should fight Boogie and Wings. For, they're, they're a that's combined. What I'm saying, yes. I, I can just see like like the poster. A combined one thousand pounds versus. Okay, that guy's fucked like, up. This is Wings yeah, of Redemption. My, you my challenged bad for, him to a fight. Uh, what you might not know, that guy out there. Wings is kind of internet bullied a lot. That's like Damn. his whole thing is kind of his audience <laughs> takes on him. Mine too, actually. Mm -hmm. but, but his whole thing is that his audience like just erodes at his mental health through a lot of online stuff, but also in real life stuff. Like the feds are always knocking on his door, the FBI, mm. the, the the regular police, and then pizzas and mailmen. And Parents whatever. looking for their children. Right. They hire mechanics. <laughs> Parents looking for the children. They hire <laughs> mechanics to come to his house and be like, hey, I heard you needed your truck fixed. And he's like, what? No. Like this, 
that's that's not real. Sorry to bother you. He gets well. Anyway, I'm gonna dump this load of chicken shit that you ordered and get on <laughs> out of here. <laughs> yeah. So when you challenged him to a fight, I was like, oh, I wonder why Sam is piling on. Yeah, no, that's and... terrible. I'm my bad for that. I didn't know. I didn't know who he was. Nah, okay. It's okay. He's... Yeah. But the one the of these little thing... punks paid me to say it, <laughs> <laughs> so I had to. Yeah, and I'm sure this won't result in a lot more of that. How yeah, much yeah. would it cost to get you to say more things about wings? $149. Oh, bargain! <laughs> bargain! $149. Do you, do you get a decent amount of people who pay you to do that shit? I always wondered with cameo personalities. Is it like one a week? Are they hitting uh, like multiple a day? I had it I had it open for a few days and I made 10000 bucks And then I closed, I closed it because it was a waste of time. $10,000 waste of time. Good for you. All right. Because, no, listen, it's, uh, if you do, because I wanted to make it so that people were getting their money's worth, so I did two-minute-long, like, little mini, like, it's almost like a mini stand-up routine. So if, mm -hmm. you do ten, if you do ten of those, it's like doing a 20-minute improv stand-up set, and you can't, you can't really do, like, fucking 100 cameos. If you're doing it the way that I was doing it, you can't do 100 cameos a day. It's just too sure. taxing. So I just, it literally was not worth, worth the uh, money. In general, anything where you're selling your time for money, you yeah. can only do so much of it. Very true. Mm -hmm. and especially diminishing returns. Like, if it relies on you being funny, like, uh, you, you're, you five hours in is not in the yeah. mood, you're not funny, you're not feeling organic, yeah. you're totally scraping the bottom. Mm -hmm. You look at the really rich people, they sell products. Mm -hmm. you, were, you were talking about that cop tip for when, you know, like a natural part of everything, you send people death threats online and then you need to cover your ass. Of course. I'm also interested, because you've given some, some mind-blowing, I'll say, financial advice over the years in regard to maxing out as many credit cards as those foolish companies will give you in order to buy crypto and then <laughs> never ever pay your credit cards back. Can you explain that theory and how it's working for you? Well, <laughs> it's working beautifully. And I'm continu I'm continuing to cred max right now. Listen, I would be <laughs> if I you're <laughs> cred maxing still? If I if I hadn't cred maxed back in the day and gotten my bag of, of magic coins, I would be dead right now because I would have killed myself. Okay? So yeah. that's how that's that's my financial uh, <laughs> my financial independence. The ticket to my the ticket to my financial independence was a magical little card that said Barclays on it, and another <laughs> magical little card that said Capital One on it, and another magical little card that said Mastercard on it. Like that's that's how I fucking. Uh, but look, the um, if you if you know of an of an asset or a play or something that's going to go up in value, mad, why not? take out a bunch of credit card debt to finance it. Um, that's only mm. if you know of something that's going to go up that's going to beat uh, you know, 20, your 25% APR or whatever. So it's, it's mm. case specific. Oh, you're case, actually going to pay them back? Case specific. I have been because I want to buy a house. But uh, there's really, if you're not going to buy a house, there's not really any reason to pay back debt. You can just that was always it. the thing. Because I was yeah. like, yeah, it makes sense that he cred maxed and bought <laughs> a bunch of Bitcoin cheap. And then, but your like advice was always like, and your credit score, fuck your credit score. And I'm like, well, what if you ever want a home or, well, most, or anything like that? You would pay it cash for the home. Unless you're making 10 grand a day on, on fucking Cameo, you're not going to have the capital. Most and, people have no hope of ever buying a home. And for, for, most, people, it'd, for most people, it would probably be, be a retarded decision anyway, because you, you buy a home and you're the value, your wealth that you're trying to preserve in this investment vehicle is getting sucked away by property tax and, uh, you know, maintenance costs, whatever else. I don't, I don't know if, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure buying a home is a good idea from an investment standpoint. I just want to do it because I need a place to put my vehicles. Um, but it's typically one of the greatest wealth builders in any family. The real estate market's just about to fucking implode. Just, just, I'm, just, it's just about I don't know. to fucking implode. I don't disagree like, with you. I'm just saying I don't know anything about it. Like the not. last time the real estate market imploded, prices barely went down. They just sold more slowly, and then they went back up, and then they went higher. Like is that okay. true? But with yeah, like, like uh, the cost even, of a house went to like 400 grand. Now it's there's some markets like Florida swampland in Las Vegas where perhaps it did go down. But the bulk of the country, your four hundred thousand dollar house dropped to like three hundred and ninety, sold more slowly, and now it's at six hundred. Hmm. Mm. I don't know with inflation and 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 then the rake hikes and everything, it it is really difficult for someone to 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 get into a house for the first time. The 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 system does seem to be uh, set up to keep them out. Good and, gosh, you're right. 
I mean, you want to keep them out if you're a landlord, and I, I see that like movement on Reddit. I was really confused by it at first, like the hate for landlords. Okay. Because like I've never had any like love for any of my landlords. I was never like, oh yeah, Realty Investment Company, six million. I love them. It's not that. It's just like, but I mean, they own this fucking place, and for a reasonable amount of money, they let me fucking stay here. And like my rent was late that time, and they they just like nudged me. They weren't shitty about it. So like. <clears throat> Got no problem with them. I didn't understand the hate for. I don't them, hate I, everyone else. I buy goods and services from. Yeah, no. I feel, I feel like we've come to an agreement about what this is worth, and and, and we got a good thing going. So like, I, and I still don't understand the hate for landlords as much as I understand. It's it should be a hate for the system that like, like you can't fault the landlords any more than you can say fault a billionaire billionaire for not just paying more tax. Like you know he's what? just following the tax me? code. Here's my new billionaire billionaire frustration. Mm. Whenever I hear a billionaire talk about how frugal he is, I think, suck Leave my Buffett dick, alone. you absolute asshole. Yeah, I, Warren Buffett today on Reddit was like, I spent $3.25 for breakfast on a he day. He gave all of his money away today. You know that, right? To charity. Did he really? Like, the vast majority, like 95% I or something. I saw it in a tweet. But my question is, but did he really? I don't know. He's always... I'll tell you what. Since Bill Gates gave all his money away to that charity, his net worth is like quintupled, right? Like it hasn't gone down one bit. It hasn't gone down once yeah. any particular year. Bill Gates just gets wealthier year after year after year, and he's still like the greatest philanthropist ever. I'm half wondering if these charities that they set up are some sort of tax avoidance scam thing. They obviously are. <laughs> I, I just can't prove it, but I have my suspicion, and it's PKA, and I don't need any like proof. Like the Bird Foundation. But I, I've heard... Uh, um, Elon Musk lives in some inexpensive home. What and, a dick. Uh, I doubt yeah. that. I want Elon Musk. Elon Musk should build $20 mansions and then shoot missiles at them and build more. Just fucking pump some money into the economy. I don't care. I think I, that's what billionaires he... who don't live big, lavish lives. Yes. Like, we know what you're doing. We know you're faking. We know you're trying to be endearing to us commoners, us peons. Like, fuck off. We know. We know you're drinking, you know, champagne and having caviar behind the scenes just because you had just because you pretended to eat a bite of the commoner's Big Mac once. I just right, don't know, you know why anybody cares. I want like, you to like, be. I want him to buy Kyle's used socks for $75,000 for the left and $75,000 for the right. Just piss money away. <clears throat> and then Kyle will take his 150 and do something awesome with it. I, I, don't, I, I don't care. I'd waste it. I'd, That's I'd fine. Buy, then the I'd, guy who you wasted on <laughs> will do cool shit with it. I'd, I'd, buy, a, I'd buy a full Soren X fucking Olympic style <laughs> gymnasium that I that I'd put in my. I'd knock I walls out. To get it all That's in. a yeah. good ass idea. I'd, I'd have that idea. giant power rack with the fucking stacks on either side, the three hundred pound stacks. Mm -hmm. Oh, we get so fucking. Yeah, strong. if I were a billionaire, I'd get squat and never use it. I'd have whatever the nicest functional trainer available was, and I'd have it in every room in the house. I'd buy so many vapes. These are twenty five a pop. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking uh, of vapes, uh, there was something else I wanted to ask Sam about. So, like, people all the time in the comments on your videos, whatnot, and I'm sure you see it, are like, oh, what's this guy smoking? This guy's mm. just wild. He's goofy. He's crazy. <laughs> he gets a little cuckoo. And, but you're a, you're a totally straight edge guy. Smoking does meth. That, does that, yeah, you're, you're straight edge other than meth. Does yeah, that ever bother you a little bit? Where you're like, yeah, no, I, I, no. I mean, I think, I think, uh, <clears throat> Man, people really want to believe that I smoke weed really bad, but I think partially that's probably to excuse their own habits. Uh, you know, like that guy, he's like me. He smokes weed too. I can, yeah. <laughs> I can do this. Uh, but yeah, man, I'm a, I'm a teetotaler except for the nicotine. Okay, yeah, you're a big cigar yeah. guy, right? Mm. But I, I've given that up since I have this uh, aspiration to uh, fight this gentleman. Nice. Was it hard what, uh, to put the cigars? No, not really, not at all. What uh, how do you, where do you get your TRT from? Like, like a doctor there, or like online clinic? A doctor, yeah, that does. Uh, I you had I had to go for the in person visit, but ever since then it's been telemedicine and uh, blood work. Good. Every six months. Yeah. What? I, what's your? I may have missed it. What? What's your weight now? And what are you trying to get to for the fight? Two sixty right now, and I probably uh, I could probably lose ten pounds. Just for just to be lighter on my feet, but not to feel too zapped energy-wise, I think 10 pounds is the right number. I know that uh, extreme weight <clears throat> loss. Uh, <clears throat> Andy Andy Ruiz and uh, Tyson Fury. Uh, I don't think I don't think losing a ton of weight's a good idea. No, but you can do that. Mm. That's like a four-week cut for someone mm. your size. Like that's mm. just like cutting a few hundred calories out and doing a bit of cardio. Mm -hmm. 
Did you cut how much in four weeks? Ten pounds. Ten pounds. He's two sixty now. He's big. Yeah. We need to loop Sam in with uh, with Derek. Yeah, if you're into like performance enhancing stuff and like I don't know, geeking out about like micronutrients and uh, <laughs> <clears throat> testosterone and everything under the sun that's performance enhancing. Our boy mm-hmm. Derek, he's got a YouTube channel called More Plates, More Dates. He was on Rogan oh, not guy. too long ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He, we partner with him to make our cum pills. Oh, uh, no way. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, he's got a big supplement company, and he also has a TRT clinic. So I work with them um, doing the TRT I get stuff. A S- Sam Hyde supplement. Yeah, what would it make you? Yeah. What would it? What would it make you more? It'd be funny because I hook, hook a brother up. Increase <laughs> disjointed thoughts by three hundred percent. Well, there's a uh, fuck. What did I think? I, there's one called Zippy Water, which is. Uh, <laughs> Beta alanine beet powder. That's, I, I used to drink. I used to drink big beakers full of this blood red <laughs> concoction that I. Did I, you make jokingly, that? Yeah, Is it just yeah. Mostly beet to make your poop red and butt itchy. That's what uh, beta alanine and beet juice would do. Yeah, I remember well, the the giant uh, to play. test tube or beaker you were drinking <laughs> out of. You gotta pay There's, to play. It would look like you were you were having a miscarriage every time you took a shit. <laughs> it really would, and it would. <laughs> be so ter- it's so terrifying. Man, I was ext- I just linked a video to you guys. I was extremely bloated in this one. <laughs> oh, there's, you look stout. That's it right there. That that is what I used to drink. I like that it's in the beaker so so much. <laughs> <laughs> and how man, much beet that, powder is in that? It's blood red. <laughs> it's a lot. Um, yeah, I'll give you so a good yeah, pump. That's, that's one idea that I had. Also today I was drinking milk and I, I think I said this should be called husky milk or <laughs> horny milk or something like that. Mm-hmm. Must, hustle milk? Hustle milk. Fuck yes. Nobody steal that idea. Hustle milk. Oh, I'm that's, sure. And what would it oh, do? Oh yeah, baby. Hustle it's milk. milk with caffeine in it? It gets you hustling, baby. It gets you hustling <laughs> a real play. You know what I'm saying? So it, gets just, you, it, breaks, it breaks down walls, busts down doors. That's a hustle milk. <laughs> Riding slab. You know why this idea is safe? It's just expensive milk. Partly, people aren't doers, so no one's going to take it. And partly, uh, you can have that idea. Yeah, I'm good <laughs> with that one. Hustle yeah, well, milk. Just the, dollars, amount, so the amount of fucking I really <laughs> supply chain rhymes. issues with dealing with mass orders of milk. <laughs> that would be horrible. It's not taken, also. It's, A it's, shelf-stable milk product. Oh, there's an Instagram yeah. called Hustle well, Milk. Well, I mean, Muslim Milk has that. Black lady. <laughs> Uh, I wanted it in cartons milk. though, like 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 square cartons. My creamers like that. Uh huh. Like uh-huh. those uh, pure protein shakes and like those little pure tetra packs. Shakes. Yeah, or like nice. Yoohoo's. When's uh, the last Yoo-Hoo's, time you had? Wait, a, Yoo-Hoo, Yoo-Hoo's are in glass bottles. You can get them in cans, glass bottles, or squ- or rectangular cartons. Oh, it, you've got to have, have it out of a glass bottle. If you're drinking you some of these low glasses, Yoohoo, you. You need to spice it up a bit. Put your pinky up, throw the that. Same little... way, like if you drink <laughs> fancy sparkling waters, like a Perrier, it's it's uh-huh. way better out of a glass bottle because you feel like you're French. Mmm, I hate sparkling water. I feel like a douchebag when I drink it. I know you like it a lot. I, don't, I can't oh, get. I, I love sparkling water. <laughs> What's wrong with it? It doesn't make you feel like a douchebag. I douche really bag. came out like I hate sparkling water. Douchebags drink it. Like I want, you. I like a little bit of lemon <laughs> flavor I mean, it's fine in my for water. You, but like me, nah, nah, I couldn't. Be <laughs> I don't want to be a piece. I'm just. I'm gonna switch I, to zippy I, water. I literally just don't like the way it like feels in my mouth, all bubbly and shit. With like without the added like fake sugars and sweeteners that this sun kissed zero has. It's Dude, too sun-kissed feminine zero and decadent. Sucks. This is fucking classy as shit right here. This is a delicious beverage. All right. No, I'm saying that's a bad flavor. Sun kissed zero. No, it's an excellent Moral. flavor. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're just wrong. Oh, they're is drinking it fizzy because water. it brings high class women. Like what? What makes it class? Oh yeah. Oh, because he's got stop. it in a koozie, a Braves koozie. Oh God, I wish I had one so in a cocktail in a dress to like, like, like come in <laughs> and like, like not hand me a new one, but fill this one back up from like a crystal decanter. <laughs> no, I like and I wish one. I was into more like, uh, like fancy foods, fancy drinks. I see people like drinking fancy whiskeys, and I wish I like knew how to enjoy that. The same way, like I see someone smoking a cigar. Like if, when I go golfing with my dad once every five years or whatever, he always wants us to have a cigar. And I like I see everybody else, all the other guys smoking their cigar and they seem to be enjoying it. And like I get a couple puffs in and I really hate it, but I can't get rid of it. Everybody else is smoking. I'll look like an asshole if I get rid of it. And so I like you basically sign up for a two hour dry mouth <laughs> session. I fucking hate it. <clears throat> I'd rather smoke only- a cigarette. 
I can, I've had friends like want to celebrate their, uh, that their wife is pregnant and they, they come with like the box of these cheap ass fucking cigars. And now everybody's holding a smoldering dog turd, looking at each other. Like how long does this go on for before we all put them out and throw them yeah. away? It's like, I remember it's like realizing, that, like, if you held it outside the golf cart as you were driving, it helped accelerate the burn. And so I was, like, trying to get rid of it sooner. It's never been my thing. I don't, I, I'm not, I, I kind of like smelling someone else's cigar if they're true. not too yeah. close. That's kind of a sweet tobacco -y smell. Mm -hmm. And I remember um, I had an uncle, or I still do, who used to chew uh, Levi Garrett chewing tobacco. And if you, ever, if you ever smelled that shit, it smells wonderful. It smells like something you want. You don't want it, though. You don't want that. No. I remember, yeah, my grandpa's chew would always smell really nice, but it looked like you ever smell, yeah, dog um, shit. It's like, uh, you ever smell sweet feed that's for, like, cattle? Sure. That, that like, sweet, it's like these, it looks kind of like dog food, but I don't know, they coat it in molasses or something. So when you smell it, it smells like a sweet breakfast cereal. It's like, damn, there's no way that's not good. It's, it's not, not good. good. Did you try some? Of course I tried some. <laughs> I did at my grandpa's cattle farm, too. You think it would taste like, uh, what were those? those Honey uh, pops? Is that what they're called? Those, like, just sugar balls, pops? Yeah, or, they like, honey bunches like, of oats yeah, or something. they smelled smells... like pops. And I remember, like, being out there by the cattle, and my grandpa would be like, Taylor, get a handful. Give it a go. And I was like, oh, <laughs> no. It tastes like it's absolute me, ass. This is yeah, making terrible. me hungry. I want to try some of that stuff. Some sweet feet? Yeah. Have, you, have yeah. you seen that, that 4chan <laughs> post of the guy who like circumnavigated traditional fitness by being the way he eats is he orders bulk gorilla chow from zoo suppliers <laughs> and it has it has a tremendous macro split and so he and like he proved it and like you know how they'll be like i'm eating gorilla chow i'm on month three and the guy they're like fuck you and he posted like a body picture and showed like his morning bowl of gorilla chow and he was Damn. like you're gonna need a lot of hot sauce it's mostly it's very dry very tasteless but the macros are out of this world <laughs> and the guy posted his body, and he even said, he's like, I only do gorilla-based workouts, only pull back. <laughs> so only so pull he, back. Was, he, he, was, he was looking like he could swing from the fucking uh, branches to each other, but not a, a very underdeveloped chest like gorillas have, but a very overdeveloped back. Dude, is that gorilla Damn. chow? Yeah, I think that's the gorilla I, chow. I, I, I totally see like some like freeze, some like dried up bananas or sweet potatoes or something. That looks mm -hmm. good. And then it's like a bunch of crude protein, and whatever it, it that. It kind of looks like it's frosted as well. Like like yeah. some that's a master master. That looks right outstanding. There. Is that really gorilla chow for sure? I I could have a big bowl of that in the this, morning. This looks better than what that guy posted. So. It looks better than what I had for breakfast. That, that looks does. tasty. Yeah. I had I mean, eggs the guy made a point. pretending to be an omelet with some salsa in it. You can I get 3,000 grams of protein for like $40 if you eat gorilla chow from zoo supplies. I just got a shit ton of uh, Derek's protein powder. Uh, I've only had try. like 700 calories today because I'm stupid. Oh, I'm going to eat like a fucking freak after the show. I'm so excited. I have like all my calories left for the day. <laughs> you, you were saying, yeah, there's the this? gorilla chow, the guy. Yeah, see him, see, see, pull day all day. <laughs> what the fuck? Put that, put that up. There's there, no Zach, way so he's actually can... eating the gorilla chow, though, right? Yes, he's eating the gorilla chow. He, no one would lie on 4chan. Dude, yeah, Jesus I'm Kyle. gonna need to see like videos of him eating it because, like, I did that video that time eating like vodka <laughs> Wheaties. I took one bite. You don't think I finished the bowl? <laughs> <laughs> there's no way, there's no other man's eating fucking gorilla chow. You can't keep that, you can't keep that up. Nobody can. But what if you did, though? Well, you probably get very, very sick. Very simian. <laughs> what, like, if like, you, I, what if it awakened within you some type of primal <laughs> epigenetic beast? Like, unknown to you, <laughs> yeah. unknown to you, gorilla chow is made of dead gorillas. And they use dead gorilla brain matter. And those prions somehow yeah. latch on to your human brain. And, yeah. and, and somehow you become a gorilla-like man. Apify you. Yeah, you, I mean, like, like somehow there's did? like latent, latent gorilla thought process, processes come in yes. through the gorilla chow and plant them, and you be start becoming more gorilla like. The more you eat, the more your brain is slowly becoming that of a gorilla. Yeah, we yeah. could benefit from becoming more gorilla esque. They have peaceful societies. They, they eat, well, the leaf eating part is, isn't think something they, you aspire to. I think they have like the smallest penis to body size ratio of any. Primate. They do, yeah, but but like so that's one thing we don't you have to worry want. about that because we as humans we've got the biggest dicks we by ratio, jelk. and so we're gonna we're gonna steal all the good parts of being a gorilla, okay. and then like we'll also keep the like gorillas can't drive, we still want to be able to drive. Like, yeah. do you think like that's why you know they always talk about the other hominid species that were around that we like beat out like 
the Neanderthals are the most fam famous, but there was like five other ones. Like, there were some little people in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Do you think we won out because we had bigger dicks? I think we won out because they were like two feet tall and like you, like they had no reach. Oh, I like Kyle's theory. All the all the lady monkeys chose us. I, I think that like all those hairy ass Neanderthal bitches were like, holy shit, those mm -hmm. those those tall dudes over there with that without hairy backs are like hung as fuck. Like, what like, if I thought the Neanderthals like a... were bigger than us in every way, and we only like one I'm just saying, because separate we the Meanwhile, I tricked them by shaving around it. It's really not that long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's an illusion. <laughs> they don't have that technology. <laughs> mm -hmm. You made sure illusion. to keep your pubic fat down so that the fat mm -hmm. pad was, you know, made it yes, elongated. You have to, you have to That's push the thing that happens to guys. Is there like a pubic fat pad? That yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh absolutely. absolutely. Oh yeah. If you, like, if like, all right, so do this. Like, like, <laughs> so if you go in, if you if you like touch the like your dick root with your finger, and then like, yeah, everybody, everybody get your dick root real quick. Everybody right? touch your uh -huh. penis. Uh, go, okay. go down with like one finger, top of your dick root, and then push, and then push it, <laughs> and then. <laughs> that's not your dick root. That's, that's something else. <laughs> you went too far down. You're too low. Um, oh, and then okay. you like, and then you like hook, right? You feel that fat that you're able hook to it. hook? Yeah. All no, right? that's my ass. Uh, you see, see, it's too low again. It's too far. Don't hook the Actually, hole. Actually, honest to goodness, it's, it's muscle. If I flex You're my very hands. lean, though, Woody. Pure muscle. You're very lean. You've got a six-pack, okay? Yeah. You're lean. So at you're, first your I was like, he's right. It's display. really squishy. And then I, I flex my abs, and I'm like, oh, actually, but this is mostly. You can reach in there, and like, and you can grab a whole pocket of fat if you're a normal human being who's not ripped as fuck like Woody is. Yeah, just one <laughs> pocket of fat like a normal human being. Woody, <laughs> just, <laughs> Woody, Woody sent me. I woke up to like one of the gayest pictures ever. I was like, I'm bleary eyed when I wake up and mm -hmm. my, I look and I've always got like a ton of missed messages from like every app I use and I'm like flicking through them. And there's Woody in his underwear. Like, I don't think that's true. I was in board he's, shorts. He's, they he's were in board shorts. Dick no, he stuck his dick through the fly. So it was <laughs> out. That is, that but, is but true. But he's doing that thing where like when you stick it through the fly, like it, it gives you some lift. So he's mm. clearly like peacocking for us, literally. <laughs> and he's all, he just, he clearly just got out of the gym. He's all pumped up. He's like vascular, a little red. And he's like, he's trying to flex while forcing a smile, which is hard if you've never done it. Try, trying like to you're, flex like for a I'm trying to pick out the parts of the story that are true and shit. untrue. Yeah. <laughs> see, see, that's, that's what, yeah. I, I'm melding truth with awful lies. <laughs> yeah. I am trying to get the, the, the gym bro talk rolling again. I, I feel like we haven't been as gym bro in the private PKA chat, uh -huh. kicking it off. Kyle, Kyle held, was carrying us for a little while with his gym purchases, <clears> and uh, I'm, I'm bringing back the well, see, in our things. in our group chat, like, we're all talking about everything every day, but Kyle and I got on the chat where we're sharing videos back and forth of mic'd up NHL players because, like, it's hilarious how much, how polite they are. Like, you want to go? Before their fight, we'll be like, you want to fucking you. go, bud? You're too big. Like, Not you, you're too big, bud. How about him? I'll be like, all right, I'll take you. <laughs> and so then they fight and they give a, that's nice, good, good for you, bud. And we were just sharing those back and forth. And then Woody's like, this is gay. Here's a picture of me naked. <laughs> yeah. like, let's yeah. talk about the gym. He's like, all right, yeah. all right, bro, you're no, looking I like, great. I, I like gym talk. Um, I'm not going to get any updates pictures? until I'm I done. Curls I saw the, the curl rack. videos. You're looking good. You're looking solid. You're looking tight. <laughs> I, I, fit. I, I, I'm going to be honest. I didn't watch the you're video. Doing your kickers and twisters. Uh, you missed it out. I, I, um, I, I appreciate it, though. I don't have a, curl, a rackable curl bar, but mine goes on. I've got a piece of equipment that it sits on really nicely, the, the mm. cheap cap bell I've got, so I, I won't. I won't Don't spend like more money on a rackable one, but I am jealous of yours. It's cool. I like it. Oh, um, I, uh, but, with uh, with Sam on here, I don't want to waste any time with Jim stuff. You're so, right. You're right. You're right. right, you're right. Know, <laughs> Yay, Taylor. What what is if you had to pick one thing that you're like most proud of that you've made? Would it be World Peace? The I show. I think um, that's a that's a hard question. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of stuff that's like. Un, uh, unseen, like there's got low views and it's extremely weird and esoteric that just makes me really, really super happy because of how, how strange it is. What's but, an example um, of that one for someone to go find? Man, uh... All this stuff see. with your mom, you just harassing her was there's very one, funny. There's one, like, master cut that's unreleased and, and not, uh, not edited of, of me harassing my mom. And it starts out with, um... Her, she's she's getting on my case for my logeria, my in, my inability to keep my mouth shut around her. And she's she does an impression of me, and she goes, uh, 
Uh, actually, you know what? I shouldn't. I shouldn't even say that because it's going to be. Uh, fuck. I'm sorry, guys. That's not really good. <laughs> good conversational okay. flow there. I can't. I can't say what what she says in that. But um. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Your mom me, sounds I, awesome. Actually, my mom said something that I can't utter. <laughs> <laughs> my mom. And, and, and hard R. Hard R. Mom is what I call it. There's one thing that we did. We. We did this yeah. project called The Great War. Um, that's uh, it's probably a lot of fans who've seen it think it's the worst thing I've ever made, and I think it's my I think it might be the best thing I've ever made. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's like a five-hour-long war movie. Really? Yeah. Um, that's I, on how the, did I not know you made a five-hour-long war movie? That's on our Gumroad channel, um, but it's it's pretty retarded and it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty bad. People. Uh, People hate. It. Let me let me put a link here. So this is the type of thing. This right here, that link right there. I'm oddly happier looking back at certain things like that. Can you pull that up? Yeah, we, we could watch this. Sam's not going to strike us. It's short. Right? Short. No, no, no. <clears throat> Take a second, Rose, to get it up. Oh my god. I remember this. Can we get audio though? Yeah, we need audio. Need it louder. <laughs> Those fucking glasses. <laughs> They're just so stupid. <laughs> Isn't he wearing them right now? <laughs> I think so. No, this is different. That's so fucking funny. I can't believe so, I haven't seen that one. There's the a million of, the, videos like that. The kind of thing that makes done. me the happiest is that it's just like the insane joy of uh, like being desperate and like fucked up and making some weird freak iPhone video. That's kind of like the most joyful. <laughs> it's the thing happiest that I, you get. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah. Do you still ever? You know, you don't troll your mom anymore with the videos. You're no, no, no. Too I old for to, that. She's too old for that. She needs to be loved and cherished. That's, that's very mm -hmm. mature of you. Mm -hmm. Loving and cherished. You, you sp see your family a lot? Your mom? I see my mom a lot, yeah. That's good. You're in, uh, uh, she's, in uh, Rhode she, Island, right? I'm at, I'm at that phase where I know she's going to die, uh, and, I'm, and I'm trying to not red pill her. That's sort of everybody's... All these, all these kids, their instinct is to try to red pill their own family. Are you, are you familiar with that? No, oh, where people will be like, I want to talk to my dad about politics and how yeah, I have yeah. it all figured out. Yeah. Hey, hey, dad, you know that vaccine is fake, right? Like, that's that sort of thing. Like that and level these, of shit. Okay. These people, you know, uh, people on the, on the left do this especially, though. But everybody sort of, they think it's worthwhile to create this schism with their, uh, uh, with their loved ones over some stupid, not, not stupid, but over, over some point that there's no chance that they'll ever see eye to, see eye. Eye, to eye with yeah. you on with so I that's I'm I'm well past that phase with my mom and so I try to just uh, you know when she talks to me I say yeah Hillary Clinton is good I, I love that oh, you saw that on the news today that's <laughs> yeah. scary that, that would be bad. <laughs> the, the Ukraine yeah, situation is really bad uh, yeah I agree mom like that type, <laughs> that type of stuff is what we talk about yeah no you're 100 percent right because like it is a young guy thing where they're like oh, I figured it out yeah. I, I've got the keys in my pocket. I can teach my parents. They're going to be so appreciative <laughs> that their boomer <laughs> minds will have to reset to a whole new heuristic of reality. They're going to be so appreciative that I showed them this. And mm -hmm. then, like, really, you're a dumb kid who doesn't know shit, and all you're doing is marginalizing your own parents. And it's like, it's not 
go talk about politics with your friends or do it online. Like your relationship with your family is too important to put stress on for something like that. Like just, for sure, yeah. just like, I don't talk like my dad and I, if, if politics comes up, it's like, Hey, how are the blues doing? Mm-hmm. Like just, just talk about sports, talk about fun mm-hmm. stuff, reminisce about fun memories from childhood. Like that's, mm-hmm. that's a much better way to spend time with your family than you voted for Trump. Yeah. You voted for Hillary. I can't people. Just, I can't believe people actually do that. We we never did that in my family. It's embarrassing. Like, Nobody like, in my family at like Thanksgiving does that. I thought it was like a meme. It's like oh, crazy uncle gonna argue. Like no, people are all cordial okay. at my you family. You know, events. you know, it's fair that you when you say crazy uncle, like, like yeah, my uncle will go on about like what he saw on his Facebook or whatever. But mm-hmm. you just like you go yeah yeah. That, you, you literally say that's crazy, mm-hmm. that's wild, and then oh. just like like he'll run out of steam eventually about like the conspiracies and the microchips and shit, and it'll be done. Mm-hmm. We can talk about something normal oh, that yeah. we both are on the same page. Dude, I have, to, I have people have in my family. Like, who... um, you have to treat it like you're in Times Square and someone's trying to get you to listen to their mixtape. Mm, you know when the yeah. guy when the guy comes up to you and puts the headphones on you and makes you listen to it. You go oh yeah. <laughs> That's crazy! <laughs> wow. <laughs> take it, take it off. Interesting. See ya. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just not worth it. So, yeah, that, that's good advice that you you give to the young people. Definitely better advice than uh, destroy your credit for your entire life. <laughs> <laughs> it's only for seven years. I'm like, 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 I don't know. If you did it when you're, when's the earliest that they start giving kids credit cards? Eight? No, eighteen. Right? Eighteen. Yeah, eighteen. You okay, can get them like under someone else's name younger. Okay, so like, a huge error. you know, get started at 18 and really max them out. Get yourself a couple hundred K maybe if you can and right into the, right into the crypto and then file bankruptcy and, and you got yourself a nice <coughs> little, little start there, huh? Mm-hmm. How, how much did you credit max, like overall, <laughs> if you're comfortable saying, like how much total did you credit max into the crypto sphere? Uh, initially 12,000 and then I have probably like 50,000 of vehicle payments that I have to make good on. <laughs> <laughs> How many cars do you have? Uh, it's motorcycles. I have it's just okay. the the truck and then a few bikes that are financed. I have to ask, what do you got? Do you really have a few uh, motorcycles? I have a Ninja H2. I have a uh-huh. Tuono. Uh-huh. Um, I have a Moto Guzzi Daytona 1000, very rare. And then for cars, I have a Raptor. I have a Trans Am. I have a Toyota Sora and a Toyota Supra and a Dodge Ram. Jesus Christ. Uh-huh. I'm into it's, motorcycles too, but not as rare. As yours. What do you? Uh, what bikes do you have? Favorite bike: KTM 890 Adventure. Doing a uh-huh. huge trip coming up. I'm excited. Very um, cool. I have a DRZ 400. I put miles on that. I have a KTM oh, 500 in Supermoto trim. Uh, mm. It's broken. I don't ride it very much. <laughs> I have a 125 Honda dirt bike that I just mm. learned. I just used to practice wheelies mostly in my yard. Mm. And um, I feel like I'm leaving one out. It doesn't matter. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> <Jesus Christ. laughs> Oh, I, yeah. I did have a 300 two-stroke, my dirt bike. It's hard mm. to keep track. You've got a whole fucking... You've got enough of your own little motorcycle gang over there if you need be. <laughs> we Between talk you about, and Sam, you got a dozen. Jesus. Rough riders over here. <laughs> <laughs> Is it... I mean, you're a huge guy. Do you look silly on the motorcycle? Yeah. Do you have big motorcycles so look you don't like look ridiculous? Circus, I look like a circus bear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> little little feet stapled to the pedals. <laughs> and I have a I have a big head too, so I have to wear a three XL helmet, which is an, oh, another shell is size. I, and, I know I know that feel. So I look like a fucking lollipop on top of this. Uh, <laughs> on top of my H2. Do you um, wear like leather full suit protective gear gloves? No. No. Do you wear anything you don't wear special anything? aside from a helmet? Just the helmet, yeah. Just the helmet. No Sorry. gloves. No. No. Okay. Uh, if you could have one bike, which one do you keep? Uh, H2, for sure. I thought you'd say that. Yeah. Ninjas are like the retardedly fast brand, right? I don't know. I'm the only one here without a motorcycle. Well, the thing that's special about the H2 is it represents the best Japan has to offer. Uh, and I'm not a huge weeaboo. I don't, I don't fawn over every Japanese bike ever. Uh, mm-hmm. But when a nation comes together as one to create the ultimate machine, that gets me that pick, make, picks my antennae up and it doesn't sure. matter if it's if it's italy england whoever that does it it's something that i need to own in my stable uh, but the the ninja h2 the thing that's special about it is they they drew from kawasaki heavy industry so the 
Kawasaki Heavy Industries is this huge company. They make ship engines. They make nuclear power plant parts. They make generators mm -hmm. for fucking d uh, river dams and shit like that. And then Kawasaki Motorsports is like this tiny little subdivision that doesn't do as much, nearly as much sales. And the, um, the Kawasaki Heavy Industry logo, the river mark, was never put on any motorcycles except for the original H2, I believe, and, uh, and now the new H2 that they made because that's the the motorcycle that um, best exemplifies There's fucking the fucking front brakes. There's as big as the tire. So the tr <laughs> the, is, yeah. yours in, is yours in green like that? Look up, green look up H2R because this exhaust. Yeah, like car brakes. The look calories. up H2R because the, the, that exhaust makes it look <laughs> fucking hideous. Uh, but the, tre the trellis frame is like welded by robots. The, uh, it has a supercharger that was uh, designed by the people that make the fucking river dam generator things. It's just fucking mm -hmm. like a, a powerhouse, a monumental you sell creation. sell it so well. I want one now. And I don't it's, even have, I don't, that's not the mission I typically fulfill. How, what's the yeah. fastest you've been on it? Uh, probably pretty fast. <laughs> I mean, like, I, hypothetically, I that time you were in Mexico. How, I, don't know, I don't know, man. It felt pretty fast. I wasn't looking at the speedometer, though. <laughs> tell you that much. Um, but that's, uh, like, are you familiar with the Lexus LFA? No. No. The um, <clears throat> Lexus, really the like Lexus LFA, when they made the, the Lexus LFA to, uh, <laughs> man, to like solidify morale around the building of this kind of skunk works project, they recruited. <laughs> what is happening right now? <laughs> I'm just getting teary eyed thinking about it. <laughs> they recruited uh, the Toyota uh, company baseball coach <laughs> to be the pro <laughs> <laughs> why they have a company baseball coach? It might be pranked right now. It's Japan. No, no, no. I get emotional. Oh, yeah. Japan this. loves baseball. Yeah. To 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 make it so that the <laughs> the team making this car had like the highest possible. <laughs> <laughs> the highest possible morale. They recruited the baseball coach. <laughs> you got, hold on a second. I got to send you a link. If he's like in like the plant wearing his baseball uniform with like a like a bat <laughs> over his shoulder, he's got a slugger. On. <laughs> I don't I don't know how he did it, but damn, he sure did it. <laughs> Man, I can't wait to see that car. Fucking sounds crazy. Um. So yeah, it's just kind of like uh, that kind of story is what draws me to vehicles and makes me need to to buy them. Is that your like your main hobby? You'd say vehicles and motorcycles, cars, yeah. or is there other stuff you're into? I mean, weightlifting, obviously. What was no, that think, piece of uh, shit that you were tooling around with iDubs in? That, that slingshot or whatever that's the it is. Oh, the, the slingshot. Oh my God, that fucking thing was a monstrosity, man. Those are awesome. That's the, I don't hate I've... them as much as everybody else does. Every, have, like, you, have you driven one? No, but I. They're so one. bad. They're so bad, man. Okay. They're so bad. Once you drive it, you'll hate your life. Why are they terrible? It's it's like uh, have you bought anything from Amazon Basics? <laughs> 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 you know the you know yeah, the feel shit. the feel of pure disposability. <laughs> Once you sit in the slingshot, you'll know that you are you're in a car made by the same people. <laughs> It was I, I as I was watching you like help iDubs through that. I also don't know how to drive a stick, and I was putting myself in his position. Mm -hmm. And every time you were like, "No, you're thinking Lamborghini. <laughs> you have to think Ferrari." <laughs> like, <laughs> in my <laughs> head, I was advice. like, I was putting myself in there, and I'm like, I would have been like so panicked. I wouldn't have known like <clears throat> the right way to shift. Like, and then he was like endearingly asking you, genuinely for advice, and you go, "Honestly, I got it." Well, we You're I, not I did, think in Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did. I did coach him. I did tell him what to do in clips that he didn't uh, didn't use. Oh, okay. I didn't just I didn't just say think Ferrari. I was like, you gotta <laughs> it's ease off that the, way, though. Yeah, no, it is funnier that way. It is. <laughs> you don't know how to drive a stick. I've never driven. I I drove a stick shift uh, ATV in like a, a couple of pieces of farm equipment where like you had to like lean down and like shift on the side. Like those little levers that were down by your feet. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I've never done one in a car now. Huh. It's fun. Yeah. It seems like more work. And driving is already 
one of the most boring tasks imaginable for me. Maybe that's because I drive a boring ass Honda car <coughs> and I was not into the racing and shit. I just, I don't know. It, it, it's such a, it's a hobby. I'm glad I don't like it because it's so fucking expensive to get mm. into anything motor related. I don't know. I kind of want a jet ski. Okay, like jet really skis are one. tight. I do like those. Like a really fast one. Like, like how fast do they go? I bet you could like. Have you ever gone like forty miles an hour on a jet ski? You feel like you're about to take off. Like, like what is a ten, like a ten thousand dollar jet ski? I'm sure that's not top of the line, but let's just say, like, how fast does that go? <coughs> oh, wait, like, like a sixty, like sixty. That feels almost. That feels like a dangerous speed on a little thing. Yeah. Like that, right. Back yeah. in the day, they went about forty. I remember mine went thirty-seven according to the specs. And they might be faster now, and now they're like little mini boats that you kind of sit on. Like twelve hundred horsepower. Wait, that, that can't, can't be true. Be right? That's <laughs> even, how do you get twelve hundred horsepower? There's, no, there's not twelve hundred horsepower in that thing he's sitting on. There's no fucking way. No, that's, that's how many hit points you need to survive a ride. <laughs> that's <a> hit <laughs> one of those things. Yeah, I, I don't know about that one. He has two twin turbos. What an asshole. Those are fun. All right, yeah. I'll watch that video later. Then that's absurd. But, so but, other than uh, than cars, motorcycles, are you are you into gaming? What else does do you do in your free time that you enjoy? Um, I've been uh, I used I would I would have said boxing, but I've been doing it so um, seriously now that I don't like it anymore. Um, mm. So I that don't sucks. like that. Yeah, and then uh, also um, probably the the fourth thing on my list would be uh, game development. We we have a game. That we're uh, not even developing it; we're planning planning on developing it. But that's uh, I would consider that to be a fun hobby. I think that's what's going to sort of drive me in my 40s. I think. What kind what of game? Of, uh, it's going to be like uh, our attempt. We're going to attempt to combine Skyrim type side quests, lore, RPG elements with Quake-like shooting uh, gameplay. Okay. I've never played Quake, but it's a uh, it's a part of a science fiction universe that we've been writing for like ten years called Joyride. <laughs> Joyride, yeah. so that's that would be the name of the world. And it, jo uh, Joyride Universe is the name of the game. So you'd be going around Skyrim style, killing killing giants and and dragons, pissing off y'all Balgriff. Yes. Okay. The, well, the actual plot line, are you familiar? Have you heard of the many worlds theory of quantum whatever the fuck it's called? I can many pretend worlds. to have, yeah. So the, the idea is that um, one, of the, one of the ideas uh, proposed ways of, of dealing with quantum weirdness is this idea called many worlds where at every possible moment in time, reality is like this cable of infinite thickness and at every moment it branches off into a near infinitude of more nearly infinite cables of near infinite thickness. Um, because the 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 point the, mm -hmm. the reason why that's needed is because uh, when a when a quantum particle particle or whatever the fuck it's called uh, materializes into either a top spin or a bottom spin or a positive or a negative or whatever, supposedly an alternate universe is created where this is retarded that I'm even talking about this. I'm, no, I'm, I'm in. S supposedly an, an alternate universe is created where everything is the exact same, except that one particle, instead of being positive, is negative. Yeah, you're talking um, about with that, mm. that experiment they do where they fire the particle and, uh, and it hits both things. It, is that way. multiverse theory or is that something different? You, it's, a, it, it would, it's the creating, a, it's the, yeah, it's a, it's a multiverse. It's one, oh, okay. one way of like, there's, yeah, this is a multiverse type thing. So um, my idea was that... Uh, You've got the the Big Bang is this singular singular moment at the beginning of all realities. So if you you go into any of these different multiverses uh, or universes in the multiverse, you trace them back to the origin, and they all originate at the Big Bang. So what you have is if you if you had another spatial dimension to like reckon these things, you would have sort of a koosh ball. You'd have this mm. center of nougat of creamy nougat, which is the Big Bang, and then from mm. that moment radiating outwards. You would have um, yeah the cookie crust. You the cookie crust. You would have these like hairs of of Hazel reality. Mm -hmm. Exactly, um, and so my idea was like if there was a if there was a, a, a an entity that could perceive 
the multiverse, they, if they had one extra spatial dimension and one extra time dimension, so they have the ability to reach into any reality, they view our version of, they view our time, that's to them as a spatial dimension, and then their time dimension is called Stein. And Stein, Stein. Stein is like movie time. So you know how in Back to the Future, when, he's, when he fucks up, he starts to watch his hand disappear? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That should be instantaneous, but it's not instantaneous because you're watching it with Stein. That's so true. Okay, so, <laughs> so Stein is the, is the second dimension of time that these, uh, ex, the, that these extra they can manipulate Stein, but the player can, which is how you have any chance of fighting them in the first place. Um, so it would be, there, it would take place in four different game universes. One would be a, a Skyrim type universe, but it's, mm -hmm. it's actually humanity so far ahead in the future that technology and magic are indistinguishable. So you've got these like energy weapons, but the people, they're all retarded. They have an 85 IQ. They think the energy weapons are like magical lances. Like what? Wow. Okay. Yeah. And they, is that what Warhammer 40K is like? To a big extent, like, like techn uh, humanity's like met its peak and then it's been uh -huh. on the decline for 10,000 years. So mm -hmm. they think of their high technology as magic and religious. Like, okay. God, like, like, oh, that's a. Yeah, because they couldn't recreate it, right? Same not, thing. Not yeah. even close. Yeah, they can't recreate yeah, yeah. the tech. Same thing. So you've got these people with 85 IQs saying shit like, pour fire on him. <laughs> and, there's, and it's like some energy weapon or whatever. And then, uh, so that's, that's one universe. Then you have. Uh, Neo Schneider, which is a noir. It's uh, the the main plot line in that is there's this. Um, it doesn't matter. Never mind. Uh, and then there's like a, <laughs> then there's like a 80s. No, that's a, like a, that's like a mystery one where you're, you're solving it's like a crimes. One, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then there's an 80s karate biker universe called Daytona. And then the last one is uh, well, there's what was the last one. <laughs> What's the last two, one? Oh, two uh, two masks. Yeah, yeah. I for, I've forgotten this because I don't work I don't work on this project every day. The last one is like a, a hyper paused uh, AIDS high tech cyberpunk uh, <laughs> space space colony. Wait, an AIDS space colony? It's just like it's it's the most it's uh, humanity at its most decadent and like trivial. Tell him about uh, bug hunters. Okay. Tell him like, tell like, him, tell him about bug hunters, Taylor. He can work that into his game. Bug hunters. Wait, what? What? The, the, the you game? Mean bug chasers. Bug chasers. Bug cha that's what it is. Oh, bug, yeah. chasers. bug chasers. Yeah, yeah. I already got bug chasers in there. Like You've I'm, already got like bug chasers in the game? The main character is a bug chaser. <laughs> but only when he gets to <laughs> don't, decadent Kyle, don't world. Worry. Don't worry, Kyle. We got mad bug chasers in there. <laughs> is, um, <laughs> is there going to be like, 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 can the bad guys like, like throw, for, instead of shields, they start taking prep? They're going to have, well, prep is a, a, an item that you can take to sort of boost your, uh, <laughs> 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 you can sort of boost your immune system with prep. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. All yeah. right. Oh okay. no, I'm on the decadent world and can I just you, got you assaulted. Make... I need to find a <laughs> prep loot kit to, yeah, to make yeah, sure yeah, that yeah. I don't and then it'll be like when you get sick and fall out, it'd be like you have contracted AIDS. Yes. <laughs> then you have to, you know. I want one of those Doom yeah. style like representations of your health bar, and when it's bad, I want it to look like Tom Hanks from Philadelphia. Yeah, like right at funny. the end. <laughs> that's a good idea. Yeah, work on yeah, that. That's one. A, that sounds like just a baffling world to to be involved in, so I can't wait for that. The sky, as long as the Skyrim world is vast and still has all those fun dungeons, I'm in. Hopefully, I won't fuck it up and ruin my life chasing an impossible project. No, nah, you'll be good. that would be a shame. Okay, that makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> You'd always come up with your own like crypto coin, pump and dump, and like you're good to go. Mm -hmm. So you, so you're always just kind of working on something. You're not a, you don't sit down watch movies, not very much like that. Just always something Not you're interested really. in. I, I figure I'll do that. I have the energy now to be kind of hyperlateral and chasing after all these different uh, goals. So I'll, I'll do that now. And then when I'm uh, 60 and senile and uh, dying of heart disease, I'll watch uh, Grey's Anatomy. Grey's I'll be Anatomy. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a good way to look at it. Yeah. Not the way I do. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoy being a fucking bum. I just there are there are very few shows I can like sit down and just enjoy anymore. So I always find myself rewatching early Simpsons, King of the Hill, mm -hmm. shit like that. But where it, I've been it, watching it, King of the Hill. I that's what I watch when I eat dinner. King of the Hill King rocks. Of the Hill. Have King you watched awesome. all through it? I'm on season three right now. 
Oh, you're in you're in the the primo zone. Yeah. I got I got I was like blackout drunk once a few years ago, and I like DM'd Mike Judge like I just love your show. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't respond to me. Oh, I think he, how much I think would it he, have made you? Think he your, blocked me. <laughs> would, would that have really made your evening if Mike Judge had been like, "Thanks, Taylor. I like yours too." If he had said he'd seen our little retarded show, I would have lost no, then, it because and I then fucking love you'd have King like, of the Hill. You'd, you'd be like, really? You like us? Like, <laughs> yeah. <"Fuck." laughs> you would have been like, no. Fuck you, you dumb shit. <laughs> you <laughs> stupid <laughs> bitch. I hope you never watch another episode of my show ever again. <laughs> hmm. No, that, uh, he's that got show's a new, great. You know they're bringing it back, right? Um, the same way they're going to make a new Lord of the Rings show. I'm, no, not, like holding, I'm not holding like, my breath for it. Well, I mean, they Aren't are they going to make Bobby an adult now? No. I, look, I don't know anything about the development of the show. I just know that Mike Judge is bringing King of the Hill back. As long as Mike Judge is very involved in it, it'll still be good because that guy's. Hilarious. Oh, and he's doing a Beavis and Butthead project right now, though. Beavis like, and Butthead was never good. He should have put it all in King of the Hill. Yeah, I'll agree with you there. It, Beavis and Butthead was like the prototype for King of the Hill in a lot of ways, and yeah. adult like animation in general. Yeah, that shitty like teacher from Beavis and Butthead kind of became Hank in it's, a way. It's like, Hank. Yeah, yeah, it's it's Hank. The Hank character's there, just like like a. I don't know prototypical Hank yeah. Hill. So like, I, uh, oh, go ahead, Kyle. No, 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 I'm done. No, I was saying, so like all the, so like Game of Thrones, as all those things were coming out culturally, <coughs> you were like, don't care, don't know, not interested. I, wa Just, I watched, I watched, uh, let me see, uh, The American Office. I've watched that a fuckload of times. Um, mm -hmm. There's cer certain things I go in for. I like, I like the Lord of the Rings movies. Yeah, those um, are the best movies ever. I like, uh, I like some pop culture stuff, but I definitely don't, uh, go in too too deep on many things fair we, enough we started to talk about your upcoming fight and then I, I guess we got off topic with boogie and wings and what do you got going on uh there's a fight that's gonna be damn it's gonna be crazy there's a it's the ksi mm -hmm. undercard in london so okay. it's gonna be seen by like fucking millions of people damn and i'm i'm gonna do my candy man character and i'm having a the suit <laughs> So the person designing my costume for, for the Candyman character, her main job that she does is making vests for service dogs that say things <laughs> that have like embroidery on them Do and big yellow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's, it looks, it, it look, it's the type of signage that looks like very specific and crazy. Mm -hmm. like when you see these signs, you know, okay, I'm dealing with some like retarded person. <laughs> uh, so I'm, she's going she's gonna to make an entire suit covered in like, um, like threatening Hassan, <laughs> Threat threatening Hassan Piker, and like all these different things. Um, let me look up. I actually have a, a Google document with the copy for that. So so let me. Uh, yeah. Away from <laughs> so yeah. Who, and Hassan, who, who's a who's a very popular uh, political streamer for people who don't know. Yeah, yeah. Hassan, he's my. I'm trying to goad him into fighting me, and I'm gonna. Uh, when I when I beat this guy, I'm gonna call him out. Um, call out Hassan. Uh, in front of uh, fucking 10 million people. So on my Candyman suit in the service dog embroidery, it's gonna say, ignore limits, disregard safety, annihilate expectations. Follow me for access to extreme illegal bestiality pornography. <laughs> take, a, take a stand. What is your religion? Who do you believe? Who did you vote for? Hassan Piker, I'm gay and I'm in love with you. Parentheses, obsession. UK British stink tooth. Please stand back 300 feet. More honky, less tonk. Designed, designed in Apple by California. Please let me kill you. I've soiled, I've soiled me britches. Uh, the malted menace crushes balls. A sticky bomb. Uh, abuse, violate. If you see me without my handler, please take me to the potty. <laughs> <laughs> An officially licensed Marvel product. Punch a hot girl in the forehead. I love to threat. <laughs> I love to threaten. <laughs> I love to threaten and humiliate you. I punch women in the back. Suicidally <laughs> sweet. Has all caps. Hassan Piker is my gay crush. Good thing I'm obsessed with him and want to live inside him. See you soon. I'll shave my head first and bring a hammer and Vaseline. <laughs> some, some ting wong, bada boom, bada bing. It's a Candyman thing. Dominate the, <laughs> dominate the weak and oppressed with your sweet style. Horny and frustrated. Don't know who to trust or how to bust. Muscle Museum. 
It, it goes on. I'll, I'll leave you guys alone with that. But there's, there's pages that of is, this stuff. <laughs> she has to put all of that into the suit. Yeah. That is so yeah. fucking funny. NASCAR style. <laughs> NASCAR style. <laughs> Punch hot women in the forehead. In the back. Mm. In the <laughs> no, he punches hot. Nope. He punches women in the back. Punch hot women. Now, the instructive oh. one was punch hot women in the forehead. My mistake. Which is an All embarrassing right. place to punch someone. So That's great. Nice. Like, okay, well, I don't know how to play any sports but ice hockey, so mm -hmm. I, I don't know what to do here. <laughs> I hope he doesn't punch me when I'm not looking. Like that would be my fear. I would assume like someone who knew how to box could just be like, <clears throat> like just so quick, just pop me right in the forehead like a hot girl. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. That's what that needs to be your new thing. Like the hot ones guys make you eat hot wings. You just interview celebrities, box them under a dilapidated bridge in Rhode Island. Mm. Yeah, no, I would like it to be only fought women. Well, uh, that's, that's a style. risky business there, Kyle. That's could get you in some hot water. I mean, I mean, they would like sign a waiver. They I'm not suggesting you attack women. I think it yeah. would still make me unpopular. <laughs> it would make you, you undefeated. <laughs> it would make me undefeated. Hey, now I'm controlled. <laughs> you pull a whole Andy Kaufman where you're like, you're like, I'm, I'm 150 and O, and like, like mm -hmm. then go out and beat up a woman real quick. Be like, 151 and O. And it, <laughs> that's, that's good shtick. I like that. I like the woman, the, the like unapologetic like woman, woman beater. beater. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, let's call yourself that. Like, like the the woman beater. That works. That's good. Yeah. The woman trouncer or brand. something. You could you could be a little little less gauche than beater. I watched I mean, a guy KO this like blonde chick that was scratching his face today. He like just spun her onto the asphalt and hit her in the head, and she went into like a whole seizure thing. And everybody was like, "Why you never hit a girl?" And I was like, scratching his face. And now she's were like, they oh. good scratches? I mean, I wouldn't have slammed her. I'd have ran away because you know I'm a felon and all. But like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, you know, I didn't blame him for slamming her. That is true. You have to look through the lens of felonhood mm. every time something like that comes up. Some, some, you know, some guy comes into a gas station, starts making a scene. You can't be the hero anymore. I have to live You've my life. you got to get out of there. I have to live wow. my life like a responsible black man. I have to always look, 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 look through things of the lens like, ah, I might not be judged with evenly here. So better just not even and just like, like kind of leave the situation to itself. I hadn't thought about that, mm -hmm. but you're right. Yeah. Like, I guess in my mind, once the probation was over, you were, like, it was done, you're fine. But actually, they might look at you through a different lens. Oh, no, there's a country song. It's called, uh, it, it's, uh, it's about a guy who went to prison, and uh, he's, he's like, I paid the debt I owed them, but they're still not satisfied. Now I'm a branded man. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, like it, in the future, like if there's some kind of an altercation, right? Let's say I get in like a fender bender and the guy attacks me and I beat him up. They're like, well, we've got a dangerous felon here. He spent some time <laughs> in the federal slammer. And then we've got Mr. Jacobs. I, I don't know him, but he never spent any time in federal prison. I know that. <laughs> and he's unconscious, can't even speak for himself. That's true. And, and Mr. Jones doesn't have thousands of vile hours of like him saying reprehensible things online. He's also not like like all jacked up on Mountain Dew like me over there. So, so it could, it oh, could, it could I, be a bad I, optic. I had some written optic. down that I wanted to talk to Sam about. Or it's more of a, a Kyle Sam thing, really. So Kyle used to be a used car salesman back in the day. Oh, cool. And Janet Reno here. You were also a used car salesman for a bit. Like, it's yes, usually sir. Nick Rochefort, Rockefort, however you say it. He's the one yeah. who is like the big car sales guy. But you, you did it as well, right? How long did you sell cars? I did it under Nick Rochefort's wing. He was my uh, mentor in the car sales biz. And I think I did it for like eight months. But it was so, it was so painful and torturous that I, I really couldn't have done it any longer than that. It was one of the worst. I mean, I've never, I've, it's probably, it's the worst job that I've had. What did you hate so much about it? Yeah. Uh, just that uh, the people, people come in and they think they have license to do battle with you because they've, mm -hmm. they've watched uh, you know, the, the stereotypical car salesman thing and they, they know you're out to screw them over. So they, mm -hmm. they come in armored up for a confrontation without uh, any other sort of preface. And so they're just combative and that was not something yeah. you wanted to deal with. Yeah, yeah. Some like uh, bull dyke lesbian with a uh, binder this thick full of information that she printed out from <laughs> Edmund, Edmunds.com. Uh, 
<laughs> telling telling me she knows my tricks. <laughs> <laughs> I know your tricks. That's what, why. A, what a condescending beginning to a conversation. Yeah, yeah I, I never like trying to. I never like trying to sell a car to a white woman. Mm. Um, like, like that. That was literally like the bottom tier customer was a white woman. Very woman true. in it, particular. It, why like, not man? Well, I mean, the man can be. It, more right, often than uh, not, the man is going reasonable. It is more likely to be able to like, like whether you like it or not, like pull the trigger today. Um, right. yeah. where, I thought you'd and, say and, that. And it might it might not even be like the right thing for him to do. Like he may get cussed out tonight at home. I've I've seen guys come in and be like the macho man and fucking pull that trigger, and then like the next day be trying to return the fucking car. Mm -hmm. Like like uh, you know like, like like they got home and someone put the fucking foot down. But mm -hmm. and I've seen women come in and, and pull the trigger too. But more often than not, I would much rather sell to like black people or brown people because they've usually got so, their shit together yeah. and they're they're white there women to were do, annoying. They're there to do business and they're not going to like some rich white woman will haggle over fifteen dollars and like some Mexican guy will be like, I want to get on the road, yo. Like like let's just do this thing. You know, <laughs> like like we're not talking about a hundred fifty thousand dollar car here anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Not all the time. Yeah. I can't imagine liking selling cars. It's really, it seems I like, like it. it would be very stressful because you're right. Like the combativeness of everyone walking in. Because like when I when I bought my car a few years ago, like I went in with the thought of like, these guys are going to try and take you for a ride. Like be defensive. Like don't agree. Like, like when be someone's willing like to that, argue. When someone's like that, you just immediately disarm and be like, look, it sounds like you've done your research, sir. So let's just like, you're going to get the best deal available. The way it is, is we pay a certain price for the car. We try not to lose money when we sell one. We'll show you the invoice. How about on a fifty thousand dollar car, we make a thousand dollars? Does that seem fair? That's not Dude, a huge my, markup, and they're usually like yeah. cool. My salesman was a very cool guy. He was super chill. He was similar to that. It was the finance guy who wouldn't let me leave for like forty minutes, and he kept like giving me shit to sign where he had snuck a like a like an additional fucking insurance thing in, and I'd be like. No, no, no. I said no to this. Remember that from 40 seconds ago before you printed it? I said no. And then he, like, did it again. I had to do it, like, three times telling him I don't want any additional shit. And they, like, they, they are skeevy as shit, those finance guys. They can he, literally, he literally snuck it onto the contract. If I hadn't read it and, like, the, the little line item, I would have signed it and I would have owed an extra $60 a month or whatever the fuck. Well, that's yeah. why he gets paid so much. Yeah. Probably not sixty dollars yeah. a month. That's ridiculous. But more he's than I want to pay. Yeah, I mean, if you don't sign something, he's getting like a base pay on that on that deal, most likely, depending on if he made anything on the rate or not. Um, but uh, so yeah, I mean, it's his job to sell it. When I when I bought that motorcycle the um, well, like last year, I was like, she before she got started, I was like, listen, I'm not gonna buy anything at all. And when I wreck this bitch, it's wrecked. Like I don't care about wheels and tires and brakes and insurance and rock mm -hmm. and damage. I was like. I promise you, I don't want any of it. Just like basic bitch, like let me sign oh, that yeah. up here. Well, I just, I hated that guy trying to sneak something onto the contract because for a couple of years out of college, I worked at fucking Enterprise and <laughs> so many of my coworkers would just reduce the price, throw on insurance to get their own sales numbers up. And then like, if I'm doing fleet management, returning it, they're like, I didn't pay this. And then it's like, you're right. I have to return that for you, like refund oh. that for you. So you actually paid four dollars a day because that bitch Amy cheated again because she wanted to go home early. I fucking hated that. And so when someone tried to sneak something on my contract, it really pissed me off. Like I would I would do that, too. Like early on, I'd be like, hey, I got to get my numbers up. How about I give you roadside assistance and I lower your price six dollars a day? You're actually saving 40 cents. And they're like, yeah, that's great. And I'm like, hell yeah, brother. Roadside assistance package, a little wrap for you. We called that the wrap package, where you just straight up tell someone, I am on the back seat of the struggle bus today. I'm giving you free roadside. When you go out to the lot, please just tell them, yes, I purchased roadside. Like, just say that. And they're like, oh, that's great. Is this like an inside deal? And I'm like, yeah, yes. Like, when, it, uh, an inside deal insofar as it makes me not get yelled at by my fucking bitch boss. We had to spoof our, uh, our customer reviews because it was a corporate store. And yeah. reviews were such a big deal. And it, it, like 99% is a fail. 99% yeah, yeah. is a fail. It's got to be 100%. And I, every time I, I sold a car, from you. every time I sold a car, I'd be like, listen, they want this 100% this so bad that we can get you free oil changes, free car washes, multiples of them. You got a stain. If you just come back and bring this thing to me, they will give you anything you want short of like a new car. 
Like, like they would replace floor mats. They'd mm-hmm. detail your car, fill it up with gas, oil changes, anything. If you would just please, please, please come back and fill that motherfucker out. And the, and yeah. I would I would bribe them every time. I would I'd be very open about that. I was I was like, I even w- if the customer's angry, I'd be like, look, I know you didn't enjoy your experience today, but let me tell you how I can bribe you to pretend to lie and say you did. Dude, so I had important. a I had the guy who sold me my car text me half a dozen times over the next two weeks after I bought it in like 2018 or whatever. Where he's like, I really need that ten from you, Taylor. Can I get that ten from you? And I was like, Yeah, you know what? I'll give you the ten. I go to give him a ten. I have to sign in with Facebook. I, so I have to make a Facebook account <laughs> to give him a 10. And I was like, I'm, is there a way to do it without making a Facebook account? And he was like, no. And I'm like, Damn. Oh. Then, I'm, then I'm sorry, man. Like, I'm not making a Facebook to give you a 10. <laughs> that's not going to happen. Oh, that's sad, man. He probably lost his job. Probably lost his job. <laughs> they well, really they, they, they should have had a fucking option to just click 10 stars. I would have given him 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10, whatever. But I'm not making a Facebook for it. That's yeah, ridiculous. I don't like it when I don't want to act like I'm a big shop. Like my Facebook has a lot of people looking at it, and when they're like, "What do we want you to click our business?" It's like for free, but for you, for kindness, like people yeah. fucking look me up. People like it, <laughs> what is a big fucking deal, I need, right? Any little cashola. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't know. You're like it, what? It, it's it's almost like hey, hey, we want you to mention us on your podcast. Well, I mean, you can buy that. We'll yeah. do that for for, for money. Yeah, yeah, if you give us money, we'll do that. But uh, so, something else I wanted to ask, Sam. So you you did this car sales thing for eight months. You're, I, th- I think you're like Kyle's age, like 36. So clearly you had other jobs before you got into the entertainment you know, field. What did you do? Like what were your, your first jobs that you hated so much you, you left and pursued this? I did uh, sports marketing graphics for stadiums. <laughs> what does was, that mean like go sucked. cardinals or something yes it sucked i did um graphics at a motion graphics place that did stuff for like discovery channel and fucking national geographic and that sucked and i did uh i briefly worked at an aluminum shaving i don't even it's like a metal working place i worked there for one day it was uh <laughs> the worst that was All probably right. the worst job <laughs> how so, did that so, go <laughs> So during the years when you're working at the metal shaving place, no, the day, the day, <laughs> okay, uh, and, and and like selling cars and uh, and, and making graphic designs, like like, mm-hmm. what are you wanting to be doing during that time? Like, like, like and who like like, you you uh, you've got a very unique brand of humor. Who are your influences? Like like like, who is it that you thought was funny growing up that maybe you took a little bit from? I think uh, I, de- I I don't think I had any crazy like ambitions to be famous or anything. I think I was so just so dissatisfied with uh, all the other options, and I've mm-hmm. I, I've sent I think I've sent my resume I've sent probably like a thousand resume emails. That was the most humiliating process ever. Like directly yeah. after exiting college and sending my resume out a thousand times and having like my dad give me pep talks. About how, like, how this process, like, what a great process this is. Are you shaking um, their hand? Yeah, yeah, a firm handshake. Look them in the oh, eyes. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, type of thing. Um, oh no. So, uh, so, I, so I just, like, everything else was, was bullshit. So I became mm-hmm. a YouTuber. That's really all. <laughs> that's all so you're just like, uh, well, people are making a bunch of retarded nonsense on Kickstarter. I can do yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> and I was, it wasn't even like I want to be. I'm gonna be the next guy. It was just like I fucking hate all this other shit. I gotta just make a YouTube video, <laughs> get famous, um, and influences. Uh, it's it's hard for me to say not Tim and Eric because I I never I never like binge watched Tim and Eric like I was aware of their their style mm-hmm. and everything and it probably probably subconsciously seeped in, uh, but I was never like oh this is the most amazing shit I've ever seen. Yeah. I definitely had that feeling for Wonder Shows in though. You ever seen that Wonder was Shows? Hilarious. Wonder Shows really like warped my world and kind of. I think that might be that was pretty big. That's pretty big influence. Um, and then there's this other program called Liquid Television. You remember Liquid Television? I, know. I remember it, but I never yeah. watched it. It wasn't really co- uh, comedy specifically. It was just the idea of this kind of like um, the variety of it. It was kind of like uh, neon signs in Tokyo or something like the, that level of variety uh, mm-hmm. and intensity 
it made me feel like watching, like I was watching the movie Hackers or something. So I, Liquid, Liquid, <laughs> Liquid Television was a big uh, influence also, just aesthetically and like variety-wise. That makes sense. The, the Wonder Show is the one that sticks out to me. That makes sense yeah. as an influence. There was, I remember watching that like in high school at like a friend's house, like just sleeping over and like, mm -hmm seeing the like little seven-year-old kid like walk up to an investment banker and be like when we revolt where will you hide yeah. and then like and then like interviewing him like that i remember being mm -hmm. like like losing my shit laughing being i didn't know like that kind of comedy was out there yeah it was yeah. so that was, funny that was very novel back in the day too like there's now now there's all the type of like on the street prank stuff on youtube and all that stuff mm -hmm. whatever but back back then wonder shows and was like the only uh it was the only thing like it like there was nothing there was nothing else like it, so that's yeah. why it was so special, I think, at that moment. They would, like, dress little kids up as Nazis and have yeah. them interview people on the street just to make people as uncomfortable as possible. Like, that's yeah. what it was. Make people uncomfortable. The comedy <laughs> is their, like, inability to understand what is happening right now. Mm -hmm. Like, why the fuck is this little kid dressed like Hitler asking me offensive questions? That would like, make my day. If a You'd little like, Hitler, yeah. <laughs> if, if I was just like at the gym and like little Hitler <laughs> fucking sauntered up to me with like a microphone and you know like he's got the news channel microphone with the little box below the mic head and it's got mm. a swastika on it. <laughs> and he's, just like, <laughs> he's just like shooting the shit asking me my opinions about like rel you know relevant political stuff and like, mm -hmm. like not talking about the fact that he's dressed up like little Hitler. That'd make my fucking day. That'd make my yeah. day. I'd love it. I give him a little little half salute as he left and everything <laughs> that's a damn shame that show went off mm. wonder shows and too early yeah that, that was yeah. like fucking 15 years ago that was popular now probably crazy how long as you age like shit happens and, and 15 years ago is a long time anyone who remembers stuff from 15 years ago is not that young I, mm. my insurance company today i got a weird letter from the dmv had to talk to him and they thanked me for 30 years of patronage <laughs> from the get go. Damn. I'm like, the fuck? <laughs> you might need to see if there's a better deal out there. <laughs> right? and that, that ruined my day, getting thanked by the DMV. <laughs> Damn. Oh, the insurance company, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah oh. that's, that's rough. I hate the DMV. Nothing stresses me out more than going and hanging out with those incompetent retards that make the easiest things complex. You can go. bring in fucking. Ev I I swear to God, I've gone in to like get shit renewed, and I've had everything, and the bitch has made something else up <laughs> that I have to like leave because I've she's about to go on break. Two DMV issues right now. One is I don't have insurance on my motorcycle, motorcycle, but I do. I had to call my insurance company, had them send proof. That's what I did. Just talking about. And the other is um, I like haven't paid property tax on a bike that I have sold to a dealer who you'd think would have done the paperwork and such, and I turned in that license plate. And it's like, bro, I don't have this bike. Of course I haven't paid property tax. Yeah. Yeah. Get oh, your shit together. The yeah, feds should probably, probably, probably I had this dip car out. That Oh, do you? I think DMV what? is probably the right time for me to escape here. But <laughs> yeah, I, sorry, I, did, no, I did it. Blame me. It's honest. I'm, I'm not bored or anything. I got to eat some food, though, because I'm kind of crashing, and I did like a pretty strenuous workout today, so I got to get some get fucking some. Uh, hustle. You're milk. good. Thank, yeah, thank you so much for coming on, man. Get your hustle love, back in there. Love thank your you stuff. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, I'd love to have you on again sometime. It was great. It's good getting okay. to know you a little more. Yeah, well, for very sure, nice man. talking Big to you fans. guys. Is there anything you want to push, Pimp? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, MDE.TV. Sign up today, chump. Get in there. <laughs> Give me your money. Well, that's all. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> All right, MDE.tv. Yeah, yeah. All right, thank you guys again. All right, thanks, Janet. Thanks, Sam. Peace. See ya. All right. <laughs> <laughs> he was oh, that great. Was fun. I fucking love Sam. Such a fucking yeah. funny dude. Yeah, I I've, enjoyed. Uh, I've been. Like, a, he he's like I've said it before. Like he's like not as big of a deal as like Anthony to me. Like Anthony, like I idolized in his like comedy. Like right, wanted right. To, to be like him. But like Sam is another guy that I've watched for so long. It was like when Chiz was like, oh yeah, Sam's on this week. I was like, oh really? Oh, I can't wait for Thursday night. I can't wait. I want to talk to him. I want to ask him questions. I want to see what kind of guy he is. Well, somebody new yeah. for 600 who's a big deal, who's, you know, and mm -hmm. he was good. I wasn't sure what side of the, of Sam I would get, you know, like it, I didn't want him to do to me what he did to iDubs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like there was some genuine fear. Like, like at the very beginning, he was, uh, he was typing something um, and he was typed for a long time. And I thought it was a bit. 
I thought that he was going to fuck with us by typing <laughs> super loudly, continuously. And I was like, oh, no. But he was just sending like like some information yeah. that we had asked for. And I was like, oh, OK. So he's, he's going to be like normal Sam. We're we're not getting Officer Maggot tonight. We're, we're no, gonna get to talk to Sam. I, I did. I did think it was funny when he ate chips on the, on the show <laughs> and, and intentionally loudly. That made me laugh. Yeah, yeah. I, that was great. I, I enjoyed little, it. It was uh, it was cool. Right no, it was cool to uh, like see that side of him because I don't think I've ever seen that side of him. Not that I like yeah. scour the end. I'm sure he's given little glimpses, but mm -hmm. I've never uh, seen him talk like at length about normal shit. Certainly not. I don't know normal shit. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Like it was that that was what I was hoping having him on would be like getting some sincerity and like getting to know him a little better. Like I because I'm a big fan of his. I think he's you think uh, you think I can get any to, into any trouble for like shooting solicitors with like a water gun no a water like, like, gun? like 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 what if i had like the most pimp super soaker that they make and then the next time one of these like orkin men or uh like vinyl siding salesman guys like knocks on my door even though there's multiple signs saying keep out mm -hmm. um like, like can i just like hit them with the super soaker start soaking them down i bet you could then like laugh and go back inside like can they do anything is there any recourse for them is that counted as like assault spraying someone with a water gun? I don't know. That's what I'm asking. Oh, well then I'm not one the one I could, to ask. I could get, <laughs> I could get in a sec one of my second floor windows and it's got a good like perch, if you will. A very Lee Harvey Oswald ish, right above the doorway. You could put a could, but you know what you could do up there? You have a potted plant up there. It's just trying to get some sun. You're just trying right. to give it some sun. If it were to fall out at an inopportune time, I don't think anyone could say that was intentional. Oh, we're, not gonna, we're not going to all that, but 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 like, like, like I, you know, give them a good soaking. I, or I, I a think water balloon. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. You don't want to. You don't want to shatter ceramic over their head on your front porch. <laughs> <laughs> no, probably not. I mean, I mean, I do. I just think that you're, you're really risking, you know, some sort of legal action. Then I'm just wondering if you can get any trouble for shooting somebody with a water gun. I don't think so. You'd have to be a real bitch to make like an assault charge about a water gun thing. Yeah. I think I'm going to buy a super sucker then. And uh, next time that they knock, I'm going to literally do what I just described and go up to the second floor and hit them with a super soaker. And that's going to be the time when it's actually someone who needs me and it's not the Orkin man. I hate you. Like, <laughs> you're just <laughs> soaked kitty, kitty, kitty down there. Yeah, just shoot her in the ear. <laughs> Um, no, I hate the fucking Orkin man. Um, I've got so many signs outside that say like keep out and like no soliciting mm -hmm. and, and stay off and get the fuck away. And he's just like, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. Hey, what a bitch. What an asshole. <laughs> what are you rude. doing here? Like, like, like I was, I was like, there's signs. I, I do like, have a pest problem. The Orkin man keeps bothering me. He's yeah. pestering me. Can you take care of him? I've got another, the last Orkin guy's still in the basement. Can you take care of that? <laughs> <laughs> Can you kill him and drag his I, body out? I was, I was like, like, I refused to shake his hand right away. And, uh, and then I was, and, 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 and he just like kept holding out there. And I was just like, no, I was like, what do you want? What do you want? I have to ask him like three times because he's trying to like go through like introductions. And I, I'm like, you've, you've rang the doorbell at like noon. Like, what the fuck do you want? He's like, Pretend well, to be I, deaf, man. I, I'm like, do you not see the signs? They say keep away. And he's like, yeah, your neighbor has those too. But I talked to them and they've got a huge pest problem over there. And they said, I'm like, I don't care if they've got pests. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Like, like, I don't. And I really yeah. don't. Like, like, I don't have any fucking annoying. Pests. I, yeah, I don't blame you. That is I was thinking of getting one of those signs that says like baby sleeping don't ring doorbell. Just just don't ring the doorbell. Maybe I'll yeah, just say it. Yeah, I would like that too. Every mm. time I get delivery, I put in the notes, please don't ring the doorbell. Mm. And often they do. And it's like your dogs, right? Ugh. Yeah, cuz my dogs are little babies and they, they think go into everyone panic mode and, yeah. yeah, just They think it's a they think it's a dire threat to their immediate safety every time. Someone I wonder. Comes to the door. I've got those. Uh, I've got LEDs throughout the house that are kind of hooked up through like an Alexa system. I wonder if I could make the doorbell like just pulsate all my LEDs, like 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 to let me know someone's you at the could. door. Yeah, I don't want could. a fucking ding dong anymore. It scares me. You should get a. Can you just like open it up and snip the wire? I'm sure I could silence it. I mean, I could bash it, and it would it would <laughs> just, just, me just bash it. Now, have you ever done that to like a chirpy uh, uh, smoke detector in the night? Like like you've just had enough. It's cheap, cheap. Like every <laughs> every every 25 seconds, it goes off, and you you don't have any batteries, and there's no way to like like it's plugged into the ceiling for some reason. 
at my last house, I literally smashed it. I, I, I smashed it apart. And I was like, I, I'm, I hope the buyers don't mind that this. They didn't, they didn't <laughs> give a shit. They didn't give a shit. That they, I, was, I was like, oh, and there's no smoke detector here. And they're like, eh. Eh, who cares? I couldn't take it. I was so fucking angry at that goddamn chirping. It's like the episode of It's Always Sunny when they move out of the suburbs. Mm -hmm. I've been hearing it the entire goddamn time. Yeah. yeah, it's a good episode. So before we move on to the next thing, we're going to hear from a couple of wonderful sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Lucy. Lucy Nicotine is a company fun founded by Caltech scientists and former smokers looking for a better and cleaner nicotine alternative. Finally, tobacco alternatives that don't suck. Researched and developed for four years to be made for people, not patients. Lucy has created a nicotine gum with four milligrams of nicotine that comes in three flavors, wintergreen, cinnamon, and pomegranate. Cinnamon's the way to go. Lucy also has a lozenge with four milligrams of nicotine in cherry ice flavor. Each and every flavor actually tastes great, and it's convenient and discreet. Their products can be enjoyed anywhere, on flights, at work, on the go, even in the gym. It's 2022. Get rid of your cigarettes. Unplug your vape. Shave your fat head. <laughs> oh, did Chiz put that in there? You must <laughs> <laughs> shave your fat head, throw out your dip, and get some Lucy nicotine gum or lozenges. You bitch, Chiz. This is the real deal. <laughs> A subscription to Lucy comes direct to your door each month. Regardless of head circumference, it's so simple, and you don't have to leave your house because Lucy has delivery down. Painkiller already listeners, go to lucy.co and use promo code painkiller. They switched it from PKA to painkiller. So use promo code painkiller to get 20% off all products in your first order, including gum or lozenges. That's lucy.co, promo code painkiller at checkout. Also, we have to give this disclaimer. Warning, this product contains nicotine derived from tobacco. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. So to all of our listeners, don't be a melon head like me. Head over to lucy.co and be sure to use promo code painkiller for 20% off all products. So check them out. They make very good stuff. And we've got a brand new sponsor, a brand new sponsor, Death by Gummy Bears. Today, if you guys have the stuff they sent, you can hold it up, the, the pouches of them. I do. And we'll go ahead and uh, Did we get more today? these guys. Uh I got some more uh, a little bit ago. You should I be a, getting I did more. I get a second batch. I, I put it in an order. I, I said Kyle needs more edibles post haste. Yeah, so you, sh I, I you, got, sh you should both be getting some more. I got some the other day. They came with the shirts. Um, yes, yeah, the shirt. Yeah. And, and I like them. These are quality shirts. I was expecting like kind of the crappy, you know, like rough it's ones really that you soft. get for free. It's a very no, nice it's really shirt. soft, and it's kind of it's a funny logo, so I don't mind wearing it. Um, mm -hmm. I'll say this: um, these are really potent gummies. They're 100 milligrams each. And um, I don't know. They're the main I'll, uh, thing. I'll, I'll do the, the read first, and then we're oh, going yeah, like, to have to prep people on how fucking strong this shit is. Yeah. Uh, this episode is brought to you by DeathByGummyBears.com. DeathByGummyBears.com. Are you or a loved one sick of mediocre or even bad THC alternatives? I know I am. Well, we've got great news for you. DeathByGummyBears.com has you covered. Death by Gummy Bears was founded by a group of passionate professionals who were sick and tired of low-quality Delta-8 products that are spray-coated and very often incorrectly dosed. That's a huge problem out there. That's why Death by Gummy Bears had the boys in the lab cook up a high-quality, powerful 100-milligram infused Delta-8 gummy that's accurately dosed and actually tastes great. These gummies are no joke, folks. DeathbyGummyBears.com offers a range of delicious and unique flavors that will have you saying, wow, I sure am high right now. <laughs> with seven I, I added that <laughs> with seven delicious flavors and customers all around the USA American made death by gummy bears serves all states where hemp derived THC is legal this is a 21 and up product so whether you're a current gummy enjoyer or just interested in something new go to death by gummy and use promo code PKA 20 for 20% off your order, PKA20. They were going to do PKA10 at first. I said, let's juice it up a bit. We come mm -hmm. back with PKA20. Yeah, PKA20, 20% right. 20, 20 off your order. Once again, that is deathbygummybears.com. Code PKA20 for 20% off your order of delicious and powerful gummy bears. And I have to give like a true addendum on this to people. I'm not memeing for the show. We are not joking. These are the strongest delta eight gummy bears available to anyone i would imagine because and like this happened to me so. just just a Joey little diaz can't do this shit <laughs> this it, it's unbelievable there's 10 in each so a thousand milligrams 10 gummies in each package 
And this, so just like an example, I have taken a decent amount of Delta eight in my day. And if you're out there and you've been getting this crap from gas stations and head shops, you may get a pouch like I did at Myrtle beach that says, Oh, this whole pouch, it's got 400 milligrams in it. I ate that whole pouch and just got semi pretty high. Do not think that because you can eat 100 milligrams of gas station shit that you should start with 100 milligrams of this. I'm not joking. It's much stronger. It's accurately dosed. And so be, you know, start if, if you're if you're someone who has like a high weed tolerance, high delta A tolerance, you, you know what you're doing. I'm not going to insult you by telling you what to do. If you are someone who's brand new and you're thinking, hey, you know what? Nighttime's coming around. I'd love to get a nice relaxing buzz. Maybe make that show funnier. Maybe make this book better. Maybe make this game more fun. But, you know, what, what am I going to do? Have a couple beers, get hung over, get the calories. What, what, what? No, no. I'm going to take a little bit of this edible, feel like a million <laughs> bucks. And tomorrow morning, I'm going to feel like another million bucks because I'm not hung over. I'm feeling prime. I'm feeling good. And you still got your nice little end That's of the night. That's what will happen if you eat the appropriate amount. If you I, eat the appropriate amount, don't I ate go three. overboard. I started with That's three. That's too much. I started with three because I, I literally thought that like these so are like much. gas station gummies, like everything else I've ever, ha ever had. And I ended up having like a borderline panic attack where the only way I could keep myself from vomiting was to lay <laughs> naked in my bed with like the fan on. And like <laughs> I had like thrown cold water on my face and on my chest. And like the fan like evaporate, you know, blowing on that cold yeah. water was like. I don't know. That felt really good because because for at least an hour and a half, I laid there and my hands were numb, like like my hands had gone numb and like tingly, like like, like they were going to sleep. And yeah. uh, and I was just like, oh, my fucking God, like, who are these people that Taylor has has allowed to, to drug me? I was like, <laughs> I was like, this shit is so fucking strong. And then yeah. like very high quality, I, like, like a week or two later, I was like, two, I can handle two. And I think what I'd been doing is like taking these nibbles to like accurately mm -hmm. get my, and maybe I forgot and had like, instead of eating like two whole ones, I tried to like get a hand, a double handful of nibbles, yeah. <laughs> like, 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 mm -hmm. like the things that had been left over from multiple yeah. nibbles. And I still overdosed again and like had another <laughs> like, oh no, what have I done? Like cold yeah. water in my face. See, th that's, that's really exactly strong. what I'm talking about. This shit is strong. It is potent. Like literally with my wife, like, or, or friends of ours who don't do this stuff. Like I tell them, like, they're like oh, the people who like, they might be like, I, I would like to try this stuff. I'm interested, but I'm kind of intimidated by the dosage of it. What I tell that person is you're not going to feel silly. You're not doing anything like ridiculous. One foot, start with one foot of the gummy bear, not from the waist down, not from the knees down, not both feet, Start with one foot because what's going to happen <laughs> is that's going to that's a tiny piece of it. That's going to be like five milligrams, like that tiny amount. That's like, like my dose. Yeah. And so <laughs> that way someone can take it and be like, oh, you know what? An hour they wait an hour or two and they go, you know what? I'm very comfortable. This is where I want to be. Or they go, you know what? That little five milligram foot I just had or whatever it is, that wasn't quite enough. Now I know I can have a little more than that. So just and if you're someone who can get high off of a foot of one of these, this the is going to last you months. <laughs> this is going to last you months and months and months, probably the most part of a year, a thousand milligrams and 20% off. It's $40 on their website, 20% off. Yeah. Now you're paying like 30 bucks for this thing. That's, it's a great deal. It, yeah. I, there's more in there and it's 20% off. It's a deal. Yep. But it's a great deal. Around. Don't, don't be, take them if you're going to try about it. Don't, don't yeah, by the way, click on the link. Give us some uh, metrics and stuff to make, make them happy. Yes. Click on the link, buy the product, use PKA 20. Mm -hmm. It's a new sponsor, and I really hope that they they get a good response and that they want to stay with us because I I enjoy getting getting shipments of these delicious potent gummies from them. <laughs> yeah, they have other products that we can't push yet, but they're but not like, available. But there's a lot coming. There's a bunch of stuff they're gonna. They I was make talking a to lot them today. Of cool stuff, yeah. Like, like like it's not just the gummies. It's it's a lot of cool yeah. stuff. But but the gummies are the thing that I've been predominantly using. Uh, I think right now two gummies is my dose, and it gets me really re like I don't take that willy nilly. It's like. Maybe at 8 p.m. I'll take two because they're going to kick in by 10. And then I watch a movie and just pass the fuck out. Yeah. And Kyle has a very high tolerance. Do not start with two. They're Do so not strong. start with one unless you have a very high tolerance. Mm -hmm. Go into it slowly. 
because they taste pretty good too. This is yeah. oh, they taste great. I I had them send me another <clears throat> shipment of the birthday cake ones, which usually I'm not as into like the goofy flavors of gummy bears. It tastes exactly like like a sugar cookie. I love it. So these ones and the key <laughs> lime so pie, heavy. those are the those Taylor's are the top giddy. two tiers. I'm I'm giddy. I'm happy. When when this guy shout out to Sai when he reached out to me on Twitter, he was like, we, we're a Delta Eight company, and like my initial reaction was like. I'm worried this is going to be like bullshit gas station quality stuff. And he was like telling me, he's like, Hey, I understand like this whole industry, like, you know, they, they undervalue their own edibles. They'll say there's 30 milligrams in there and there's five or something, but don't do that for mine. Trust me. Like it's real. And then like they'd arrived and I was like, I bet took a couple of those blast off. (laughs) <laughs> just absolutely cooked on the couch, just sitting there watching hockey. It was great. It was great. So we won't talk about it anymore. Deathbygummybears.com. Check that out. New sponsor. I hope you guys really enjoy it. And obviously, if you're in like Colorado, California, not available to you. Sorry. Uh, womp, it's, womp. It's, it's only available in the non-legal <clears throat> states, I believe. So, Yep. Yep. And of course, lock and load. You're, you're the best company. And in the lock world. and load. Come like a man. Oh, oh. Oh, just rivers of, <laughs> rivers of it. Look, look at the woman being thrown by the blast of that of that come. Beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. I don't think I've told my mom about the cum pills yet. <laughs> uh, my dad knows. I told mine. <laughs> my dad. My dad knows, and it was a little awkward explaining to him what they did. It was, you know, that when the man comes, you know, there's more of it. And uh, and he was like, "Huh? Does it work?" I was like, "Yep, it does." Mm-hmm. And people buy it; they do. <laughs> <laughs> I might want some. I was like, "Nope, nope, no." Nope. <laughs> All my moto friends, everyone I talked to, I, I I told a van full of paragliding <laughs> people in Mexico. I told a, a, a trail full of moto friends. All of them are asking for samples. Every every single person would like to have more come. I I Thanks. don't know. Who- I can't imagine anyone who would want smaller loads. Like, like I know in Greek times, <laughs> no, I don't want any more siblings. No, I know in Greek times, you know, you see those statues of like the guys all have those tiny penises, um, and, uh, and and I've been, I've read or I've heard historians say that 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 at that time, like a large penis was was considered to be like an oafish quality. Like like you would think that a guy with a big dick was a dummy or something, or or, or like a barbarian or someone who was crude. I, I don't think there's ever been a time where a small load was a good thing, though. I think even like in olden times, they respected a man with a large, powerful load. Yeah. What? Well, when you guys first talked about it before we even sold the product, <laughs> I didn't think that it was like a desirable thing. Now I do. <laughs> now not only do I, I. I am almost fearful of being a regular person again. Like I don't want to downgrade. I don't want to. I want to come like a no, it's not cool, stupid. Regular. You want to be shooting I, natural loads? Yeah, no, like once you're jacked in, in, in the come arena, then you don't want to like go back. Like, I think your next thing is going to be tanning. Like, I think you should get real tan. <laughs> like, you know, those, <laughs> those guys tan, in, tan to love, like a bodybuilder stage, <laughs> like those guys in Miami who like who, who just get so dark, like, like, like you're already jacked, right? Like, like you've got you've got all these hobbies, like, like you're showing off your body, like. I feel like you need to get like real tan, like real tan. Well, I have a thing. Yesterday was a neat day for me. I got my braces off. So oh, I finished with the braces. I kept so I got Invisalign braces. If people don't know, mm-hmm. and um, basically, you wear these trays. I have them in front of me, and I'll, I'll go full screen in a second. Yeah, we are. I, well, you wear these trays. You put them on. And you wear them a lot, like 22 hours a day. But it's cool because you can take them off and not have braces for a minute. There are some brackets on your teeth. In my case, I was like, top front four teeth, off limits to you. I do a show and I'll get roasted too much. So, like, these are the lowers. And you can kind of see, like, this is my last one. This perfect arch of goodness. Mm -hmm. And this is my first one. Oh, Jesus. started, right? And uh, real progress. What an improvement, Mongo. <laughs> this is uh, this is the top save sort of thing. My tops mm-hmm. were never that bad. Like the tops weren't the reason, Zach. Nice. There you go. The tops weren't the reason, but you can see I had like a little bit of snaggle tooth. Mm-hmm. Right. That that's not bad right. at all. That's a lot there. of teeth you got. Oh, I guess a yeah. little one right there. Yeah, yeah. And one, uh, and this bottom one is my perfect one. And uh, oops, 
I'm out of focus. But uh, yeah, so I got my braces off and it feels really good. To... Your lower teeth look tremendous. I know mm -hmm. you were self-conscious about that, that like snaggle. Looks good. Looks like a perfect bite. Yeah, and, and they, they fit well together. And, and in my opinion, they were perfect like a year ago. It, it took 22 months. They told me, okay. They verbal, always do that shit. That, you're right. <laughs> Verbally, they told me 12 to 15. And I, and I heard 12, right? I'm mm -hmm. like, 12 months? Fucking sign me up. In 12 months, I'm going to have that. It's not that big a deal. These trays, you take them off, no big deal. And then when like the contract came to me, it changed from 12 to 15 to 15 to 18. So I heard 15. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then, you know, I'm talking to him and, and I was like, God, this is taking forever. It was 22 months, 22 months. I heard 12. It was actually 22 months to wear these things. But uh, it's Worth not the it. end of the world. Most people don't notice. Uh, like I, I've literally had sex with them in. She didn't know. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. People, people don't, people like see it. I've done Twitch streams where no one noticed. Um, I've never done a PKA. I always take them out. But uh, if you go yeah, to like a party annoying. that night or something, you can just not have braces. I had some brackets, but they weren't in the front. So no one really noticed or saw them. And now it's done. And I'm, I don't know, just kind of psyched to not have my braces in. Anytime I wasn't wearing, when you wear braces 22 hours a day, it's basically anytime you're not actively eating. Mm -hmm. And if they're wow, not two in, two hours a day then you know you're fucking up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like half the time. <laughs> Not bad at all. <laughs> if, you're, if, you're, if, if they're not wearing them, then you know you're fucking up. It's like being in school and knowing that you're supposed to be working on a project or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I'm just walking around all day with no braces like I'm not even supposed to. Fuck yeah. What's next? LASIK? Your, your eyes aren't even bad enough for LASIK. <laughs> they, are, <laughs> they are. My eyes suck. I dropped I the computer on my do eye it. Do, do LASIK. See if I you have thin if corneas or not. And if you don't have thin corneas, you're in. I asked my eye doctor and she said that for the problem I have, LASIK's not a fit. Maybe. I uh, I don't I don't know if another eye doctor would give me a different opinion or or what's up. But uh shit, what should I do next? Some sort I've of plastic. Drop some surgery. body fat. I mean, I've LASIK added muscles. Muscle. I got get, my teeth straightened. Do I need get, more hair? Get, no. Nah, you're pretty good there. Get some sort of ridiculous plastic surgery. I think you, need, you don't mm, need uh, like, like a split tongue. tongue. No, no, no. Get one of those. Get a cleft in your chin. <laughs> Dude. A cleft chin. That'd be cool. That's you know what? Get... Move. That's, that's, that's some real alpha <laughs> male shit. Get that Gaston. Shit right get that mm. Gaston little curly cue in get there. A, get like an aesthetic eye patch. Like, get like, a, no, yeah, get like one that would make patch. you look hardcore. I think they should make like a techie eye patch where like you're getting all sorts of information on the inside of there. And, you know uh, what? You know why they wore eye patches? The pirates did back in the day. That's not true. Wait, it's not. No. How do you? You don't know what I'm going to say. It was they. They would have an eye patch on, and then they when they had to go down in the hold, they could lift their eye patch up, and they were already acclimated to the. I talked to a pirate that's, historian. That's not true. No, nah, I watched the whole thing with a pirate historian, and he was like, mm -hmm. he called bullshit on that. Oh, I, I talked to an actual pirate. I he do said believe it was true. you. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, one of the, I believe Woody too. I, I know about, <laughs> <laughs> he talked to a Mogadishu pilot, like like one of those black guys. Oh, like, like you're looking no, for it was a from when I was young. It was in the 1500s. No, I, I'm interested in oh. blunderbuss pirates, not AK-47 pirates. Yeah, 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 it was when I was little. They, they, that was it. I lived in the Caribbean as a Old child school. in the, in the, the 1700s. Would, or that, would that have been a fun life? Also made up? No. Would being a pirate have been a fun life? Do you think or pretty? pretty horrible Real not a somali pirate again like the the fancy frills kind. a somali pirate has more fun than the old timey pirate there's no way they're in like fucking fishing boats yeah but then they go home to like 21st century technology in their hut or whatever like like and you whatever think that's what's stole. happening in somalia that they're I mean, going I, home and charging their iPads. You think a 15th century pirate is going anywhere but a filthy I'll tell you hut somalia and 15th century spain have about the same number of ipads <laughs> like there's just no fucking way. Like Somalia is like a failed state. Like it, it doesn't even have a government. They like that's why it's so terrible. I think the pirates are better off than everybody else. I'd rather be a Somali pirate than a Caribbean pirate. Mm, I don't know. Those movies made it seem fun. It's a Disney film with Johnny. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it no, doesn't I'm mean it's too. wrong. I'm, I'm pretty sure the, the eye patch thing is uh, like Hollywood schlock. Um, so is walking the plank. Uh, the the parrots. Uh, no, the Holly, the Hollywood part of eye patches was because the, all the pirates were missing eyes from battle. 
I don't remember in Hollywood them ever being like it was because of a darkness. But also that's the, that like getting rid of all of your depth perception for needing to maybe go get some grog from the cellar seems like a bad trade off. Yeah, I don't know. Like, um, just close your eyes for 15 seconds before you go down there. Yeah, or, or maybe I, I think what what I had heard that it was. And, and I, again, I don't think this is true. Is like if you're boarding the pirate ship and you're you're going to invade, you're invading and you're mm -hmm. going to go down below decks and start fighting. So if you need to be able to adjust quickly to like be, you're in a fight. Yeah, it's not yeah. about like going to grab a tank of ale. It's like I'm gonna go down there and fight a guy to, to the death. I should I should be able to see him right away. But I don't think that works exactly like that. Or at least that's what I watch a bunch of those YouTube uh, videos. That's like I don't know. Artist reacts to painters in movies or like oh, yeah, race yeah, yeah. car driver no. reacts to racing mountain climbers. Scenes. Yeah, yeah, mountain yeah. climbers. Cop Every reacts to unarmed shooting. He's like, see, he should have shot him more. <laughs> you missed As him you that can one see time. here, he completely missed his opportunity to shoot the wife as well. Yeah. She was <laughs> Look <laughs> at that, that dangerous school of fish over to the left in the box. Yeah. Um, no, I like those channels a lot. There's a bunch of them. There, there's like a bunch of different uh, channels that are doing it with everything you can imagine. And I usually don't like the ones that some like special forces guy judging a, a movie about like military stuff because they have no. Like, I'm going to give it a one out of 10 because, you know, we would never do that with this and that. And it's like, dude, I think they're just doing it because it looked cool. Like some of them don't have any sense of humor or like sense of like, hey, that's a movie to entertain people. Like, like you know, it's, it doesn't have to be an accurate representation. But sometimes I really like those and it's, it's pretty educational. I like the ones when they've got like, I don't know, some historical expert and he's looking at mm -hmm. like Gladiator or something. Like the Ro there was a Roman like legion expert that watched gladiator and he was just like sucking its dick so hard really so, he, yeah. he was like this is correct this is good yeah he liked mm. like every he gave it like a nine out of ten or something for really? for like the costumes and the tactics and all that stuff so he was like this is like the actual kind of matchups you would see in ancient rome oh he wasn't talking about the gladiatorial part as much as he was talking about oh. the costumes the weaponry and that scene in the beginning where they're fighting like some germanic tribe and they're utilizing That's one of the best scenes of the whole movie it is really they, they they have like a legion face off shield and spear with a flanking cavalry with uh, Le um, not Leonidas but Maximus uh, you know leading the charge and apparently mm -hmm. there was a general called Maximus like I guess it's loosely based upon of course he didn't become a slave or fight that was a that was a common Roman yeah, name yeah. so there were probably a yeah, million that, Maxes yeah dude, it's a cool fucking name though right like Maximus, Maximus that is a cool one Maximus you sound like you're a fucking like superhero Maximus. right off the bat. Man, we we dropped the ball when we switched to Maximilian over over that. Or just Maximilian Max. is cool. Well, but like everybody who's named Max is named like Maxwell or Maximilian or mm -hmm. are there any other Maxes? I would be Maximum. Maximum. Mm. Yeah. That's good. That's like a rapper's name. That's Maximum Jones you're talking to. <laughs> <laughs> See? I do like Maximum. I was trying to one up it. You chose the top name yeah you did it yeah that's it maximum and then you could have a sidekick called min that's maxi pad min yeah. <laughs> no minimum she <laughs> hates <it. laughs> uh, kyle i was i was looking today your your braves are unstoppable i think they're 15 and 0 <laughs> in a row look the mets are strong um and uh and it's it i don't know it, it's it's real early in the year we'll see uh the postseason is all that matters like 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 i don't even like games like this it'd be fun to go watch a lazy game let down at the field i can't mm -hmm. get them on tv i'm always it's always blacked out it's super annoying you should just uh, go i bet you'd have fun yeah i think i'm gonna go um i don't live very far from the stadium at all and they're fairly cheap like, like i just want to go and hang out on it next time there's like a cool day it's not like blazing hot like it's been like 90s here and humid. Same. Uh, i think i'm gonna go uh, catch a game because it fuck they're the champs and they're good and I cannot wait for the postseason. I might try to watch, like, go to a postseason game if that happens. Um, you should. That'd be fun. I haven't been yeah. to a baseball game in probably – or actually, no, I went to one about four years ago, and that's been it. You yeah, break it's their been winning a really streak while they blame you? I feel like you'd be responsible. <laughs> I wouldn't give a shit. <laughs> I mean, they um, won – how many did they win in a row? 12, 13? They're, they're, uh, I was wrong. Four, they're four, 14 in a row right 14 now. 14 wins in a row. Kyle goes to a game and they lose. Don't act like that's not causation. Yeah. Correlation, actually, correlation equals causation. That in Kyle's case, yes, yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I have no belief in that sort of luck or anything. That thing where like guys will like wear the same wear the jerseys or like not wash their socks or any of that shit. Like sports fans, I'm talking about. Like if you're on a team, I could mm-hmm. see like wanting to be in the same groove that has served us so well. Like, sure. hey, let's not upset the balance that we've clearly stricken. I, I know we're not scoring because we're all wearing Nike socks and we're all eating chili dogs before the game. But that's how things have been going so far. So let's just keep keep wearing the socks, keep eating the chili dogs. Let's keep getting those wins. I can yeah. see getting into that mindset. But as I a mean, fan like, at home, mm-hmm. <laughs> if you like, athletes get those weird superstitions in every sport. Like I, I, I imagine a sport like golf probably has the most because it's so like, like they, they probably like eat the same breakfast and all that. Like in hockey. Like mm. Alexander Ovechkin eats chicken parm before every meal, and Wayne Gretzky between <laughs> every period would eat a hot dog with a shit ton of mustard and a diet coke. His entire career, between every every game, he ate two hot dogs and two large diet cokes in between. And like you just know that coaches were like, eh, Wayne, maybe a little water, or something. And he was like, Go Why fuck yourself. Though? I'm the best that's ever been. Yeah, like, I don't think that he's his issue is going to be dehydration out there because he had a diet coke. I yeah. don't, I, I don't know how diet coke is is so much worse than water. It's not uh, Ovechkin. He doesn't drink water out of those Gatorade bottles. He has his own, and it has coke in it because he likes oh, the sugar while he's playing. Oh, that's that's <laughs> actually kind of cool. Yeah, I, if you're a professional athlete, you can drink whatever the fuck you want at that point. You like work you, that hard. If, yeah. if, if you run on pure glucose to be like the best, <laughs> then, like, then do it. I wonder. I want to see more athletes with their shirt off. God, I'm always the gay one. But like, I want to know what peak performance looks like, right? Like that guy we saw who's going to fight um, Sam Hyde Mm -hmm. looks really good. But is that what peak performance looks like? I bet Ovechkin carries a little more fat than that guy. Okay, Taylor might know. Yeah. But I bet like all those guys, like it's very rare for someone to have like any vascularity on their like pecs or deltoids. I, I, I think peak performance is just a little more fat than say a UFC fighter, which is a weight yeah. class based. Oh, so Ovechkin is six foot three, two hundred and forty pounds. I, I think that I think it's one of those things where like <laughs> no two two forty. That's a that's a heavy NHL player. Like usually okay. they they dedicate a lot more to speed, but he's he's just so big and tough, and he's just a, a Russian phenom. Like he's one of a kind. I'm sure there's like speedy guys that have like abs in the NHL, but I'm sure there's sure. cruisers that have bellies. <laughs> you know, they're just different positions and, and use cases. Look at those guys in the NFL that are like clearly like aesthetic, <laughs> aesthetically, they're 80 pounds overweight. But for their position, mm. it's like, dude, I need to be hauling 80. Pa- if I could throw 30 more on my back, I would. Like, like yeah. they want to be right. big and heavy and carry some play- my part of the play lasts six seconds, you know, so I just thrust this body fat into the guy in front yeah. of me and then rest. My yeah, job is to not be moved, <clears throat> and and I'm those, good at not being moved. <laughs> that's what you do. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I, know, I, I know Taylor hates superhero movies, but, like, The Rock is getting his own superhero movie called Black Adam that uh, that looks pretty good. Did you see good. the preview? Yeah, I actually did. Like, there's a, there's a part mm-hmm. where, like, uh, I can't remember who's who he's talking to, but the guy's like, okay. like, like, you're, like, like, you're, you're a superhero. We, we don't kill, and he's like, I do, and then just like <laughs> straight up kills the guy. Like, like, um, so, I, so I could, I'm always down for that kind of hero. I'd be good. With, is Black Black Adam? I feel like he was in like that Injustice game. Is he a, nah, an older this is hero? A, this is a new thing. That you, this oh. is a, I mean, he's not a new made up superhero. He's he's. God knows when they invented him, probably the sixties or seventies. But uh I don't I do not like his outfit, I'll say. You don't like the green? No. I don't like the green. I don't like the way the lightning bolts kind of fucked up. I don't like how much trap is showing. I, I, it I looks very like feminine. Mid, I think he's like mid battle. I will admit there's an awful lot of trap showing. That's too much trap showing. And why is it so tapered in the neck like he's a fine Victorian lady? That that's an odd neckline that they've chosen for it for is, and that's not just me, right? I like, like that his is belt, a weird though, right? I, I do stiff. like I do like his belt. I like mm-hmm. the gauntlets more than anything. I was about to say those gauntlets are. That's the I like, and I, I like when they have disparate. I like I like I when the like gauntlets have body. like There's so much disparate armor on them. I, you don't like his body? That guy's actually so, so hot. <laughs> uh, I, I he has one of the flaws that I see in myself, which is like a wide waist. And I get that he's big, he's strong, he's probably really good at like picking shit up, but. I don't know. He's just thick in the middle. He does like a Vander Holyfield had a much better physique. I I think that's crazy. He looks tremendous. Like he's that is a dream physique. 
Like really? just being fucking huge and having your beautiful neck scooped out with a Victorian <laughs> style, and like that's that's mm-hmm. what you want. Like I think it, that part of him, he his body looks great. It's just what do you think like, the this outfit? Look- this leaves a lot. Wait, what are his powers? Does he need armor? Like or not? all of them. He's he's like Superman adjacent, isn't he? Yeah, he's like okay. super OP. So that even makes it worse because it means that everything he's wearing is aesthetic, so it could look like anything or mm. magical. I can't remember, but uh, but yeah, I I wonder what the Rock is gonna look like in like. 10, like 20 this. years oh how much play. longer is he gonna live isn't he like 50 yeah he's like 50 he has so. 10 years tops yeah his heart's gonna pop I yeah, when he's like 57 strong. um I, I think see schwarzenegger even we can get rid of the image now i've, I've stared at him too long um i think schwarzenegger uh <laughs> kind of went more. downhill with his physique after the heart thing well, he's like i think he just couldn't and he I kind of bounced I, back. Am I crazy? Or am I wrong? He did. He absolutely did. But you know, oh. the bounce back that you—he's probably on a normal, very low dose of like TRT. Whereas mm-hmm. back in the day, he's fucking uh, just blasting, he's uh, doing well, all the steroids. D ball. I, I, he always here with him. Yeah, Deanna ball. I think he used instead of testosterone. Like I think he used Deanna ball and Deca. Um, at, like like he, I think he replaced the test with um, Deanna ball. Uh, oh, I, I thought you always that. added the test, or maybe. Back I then. think this is an old school thing uh, okay. that, that maybe isn't done anymore. Um, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that's accurate. But yeah, he got fucking gargantuan. But then you know he lost it. He never got back to being colossal again. But I wonder what The Rock's gonna do because his trajectory, not only as a celebrity but as like a mass of human, have both been pretty steady. Like he's been getting bigger every year since I've I've known that he existed. I remember like. Watching him wrestle when I was like 13 or 14 or 15, not, I, I I thought wrestling was white trash. I always have, but like I'd, I'd catch it at, at like people's houses and shit, and uh, and like oh okay that's that guy cool because he was funny. He had he he was he was one of the best people in the mic in the the WWE or whatever. But then like following his career, like like I think in like 2000 early 2000s like 2005. That can't be that's that's an absurd photo. Like first of they all, both he's like shopped. He's Those squished. are both shopped. These are the worst. What are you? <laughs> These yeah, are like think... deep, deep fried memes. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that's that's not the one on the left is so funny. <laughs> um. Anyway, uh, God, I lost my train of thought after that. Uh, you watched him in wrestling, and we were talking about him getting bigger every year. Oh, he, I, he the, the first movie I saw him in that I thought, oh, this guy's a good actor, or at least like mm-hmm. good enough to be an actor and not like a freak show. Like, like, uh, was Walking Tall. Did you ever see that movie? Walking that was uh, the Johnny Cash sure. movie, right? Johnny Cash? Do you mean Johnny Knoxville? Oh, I thought that was the one where John C. Riley played uh, Johnny Cash. No, that's no, um, that's a different movie. That's Walk uh, Hard walk, or something. Oh, yeah. Well, walk, oh, walk Hard is the Dewey Cox story. <laughs> Oh well, I'm I'm so disjointed. I don't know. I'm sorry. The, the, the uh, which is the like parody of the uh, the Johnny Cash movie. But this is called okay. Walking Tall, and it's the true story, I think, it, it, of uh, this guy who lived in a corrupt town, and uh, he was like he's he gets savaged by the corrupt uh, casino that's in town, drugging the kids, and the sheriff supporting it. He's getting paid off. So this guy goes to court for this assault thing, and instead of defending himself, The Rock says, "Hey, the town is corrupt." This is what they did to me. If you find me innocent, I'll run for sheriff. And if you elect me, I'll clean this town up. And they find him not guilty. And he runs for sheriff, and he immediately wins. And he, he uses the piece of lumber that he had used in the first part of the movie to, like, savage an entire casino worth of, like, henchmen as, like, his sidearm. Like, he's got <laughs> it on, like, a gun holder in his, in his like, police truck. And uh, it's, it's a fun movie. It's, it's, it's early rock. And Johnny Knoxville is, like, the comedic sidekick. So it's fun. It's a good movie. That that's the first time I was like, ah, all right, this guy can do stuff. This is good. And then he made all those like kids movies, right, where he was like a, a tooth fairy or something. And I thought it was over. I was like, well, that's the end of your career. There's no way you can like start making the kids movies this early. But he's like the biggest action star in the world, right? Probably. <sighs> Tom, who, who I mean, unless you can, him? like, he's definitely physically the biggest in the world. But like mm-hmm. Tom, I gotta go see this Tom, Tom Cruise movie. Maybe, actually, do that's you know a, Tom how, Holland? Do, Tom Cruise. No, Tom no, no, no. I'm, I'm offering another one that could be bigger than The Rock. Tom Holland. I, I feel like Tom Cruise is bigger Tom than Cruise Tom Holland. Tom Cruise is the Holland. biggest thing in the world. I don't know anything about Tom Holland. I know he's Spider-Man. Yeah, that's yeah. where I was going. Every movie he makes is a billion dollars. 
Um, yeah, that's not him. Marvel. That's Marvel. He's in yeah. the Marvel franchise, but he is Spider Man. Marvel could cast me and make a lot that's of money. Not... <laughs> <laughs> a lot. Like... Okay, I, I didn't let you. Finish. They call him the Blob. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, come on, man, I'm not that fat. Like, <laughs> I'm just trying to come up with an action star who might they rival. Call him no, I don't know if you know, but Diabetrix. The new top. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's the Parks and Rec guy? Chris Pratt, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, he's um, a big so the new, too. He's so the new Top Gun movie is uh, Tom Cruise's biggest mo- movie ever. Uh, it's like racing toward a billion dollars super fast. It's only been out for a couple of weeks. Um, and it's looking like it's it, it already is going to be his biggest movie ever, which is saying something, right? Because he's got he makes a Mission Impossible movie every every other year that makes a billion dollars. So uh, I got to go see this thing. I like the original back in the day as gay as it is. You ever catch the the gay like undertones of that movie with Val Kilmer and Tom Cruise? Like, I, I have not seen. I fucking mm-hmm. each other. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen Top Gun. Dude, the should... the beach ball scene. I'm sorry, the beach volleyball scene alone is so gay. Just that all these guys in their shirtless pictures, like pose, like 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 they're. Yeah, I love that one moment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I've, I've heard that it like it's funny like all the people like i i work with like email they they have calls with i like the people who are in the age where like they were coming of age when top gun came out every single one of them when it comes up they're like it's the best movie of the past 30 years i love it a uh, top gun's great like they these boomers and like well i guess like gen xers love top gun the new one. And so it's making me feel like I have to watch the original, hmm. watch the gay scene, and then watch the new one. Because if for <laughs> no other reason, then it is it's unreal how good Tom Cruise looks after this many years. It's unreal. I'm blown away by it in a non-ironic way. Who has aged better in human history than Tom Cruise? I, no I mean, one. He must have plastic surgery. That can't be denied. And he's probably on some steroids or something. Although he doesn't look super jacked, but it he just it would great. help. He looks he's amazing. Rubbing, he's rubbing like baby stem cell <laughs> blood like all over himself. Whatever every it night. takes, this man. He's I'm just taking a on, bath in abortions. Dude, Val Kilmer looked, in my opinion, significantly better than Tom Cruise in the better first film. Man. He's a better look. He's a taller guy. He's a just a more handsome person. And while Tom Cruise was supposed to be our guy, you couldn't help but look at Val Kilmer and be like, well, that that's the better looking dude. Look at him. That's current. Jesus. Um, now, Val it's Kilmer? Cool. Val Kilmer's disgusting. And I don't, uh, well, I don't throw stones at people. Well, did he see, have I didn't know that. <laughs> it took his voice away from him. They had to use CGI to give him a voice in the movie. Did he have I, cancer I of his adipose tissue? <laughs> it the recovery has been rough on Val. It's a real sad thing. They made a whole documentary called like I'm Val or something. And his voice is like this now. And it's real sad. Oh. It's you real know what? Sad. I you know, in my I, defense, I he, he has it. Dead. He doesn't look good. He I doesn't was right. look good. <laughs> Look, he's got that thing it's sticking out of his throat. He's got the little Hazuza, what's it? <laughs> the kazoo? <laughs> what is that called? <laughs> Trachea? It's called a tracheotomy it's called the um, fourth when they hole. do the thing. But he's got mm. like a, dude. I On a man, the I would, third hole, I guess. I would totally fuck that <laughs> hole. Like not on Val Kilmer because I respect him too much. Wow, but you're like, just not a gamer, dude. On a hot chick, like, <laughs> <laughs> I would do it. You wouldn't, you wouldn't fuck Val Kilmer's fucking esophageal hole to say you had? What if I no? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, what, no. I'm a little worried. I won't stay hard. I'm a little worried. I might kill him. You would. Yeah. yeah. Well, you'd have it to would, let him breathe every so often. But anyone that's how fucking oral can go. someone's. Uh, what are those called? The angles. What the fuck are those holes called? Well. I can't remember. I, it's called it an e hole. An e an e sig hole. Yeah, yeah, I'll put it in my e hole. Yeah. A tracheostomy. Uh, a stoma. Stone. Okay. Oh, what's well, it? Well, anyway, uh, it's, it's real sad that that happened to him. I'm yeah. a huge Val Kilmer fan. Uh, I always like, like, like in Tombstone, his Doc Holliday is like one of my favorite characters ever. Just I can picture him now, all sweaty and pale, with those like circles under his eyes. Like, oh, I wasn't as sick as I let on. You know, <laughs> like or that like he, it, the, the line, uh, is, oh, my hypocrisy only goes so far because uh, he'd taken that <laughs> fucking badge off and stuck it on Ringo after he smoked him. The whole, all the gunfighting, the Latin scene. If you want, if you're a big Tombstone fan, go on YouTube and find the scene where he and Johnny Ringo are going back and forth 
in Latin at uh, at the the casino slash bar, and they translate it so you can see what they're saying. Some of it's like basic Latin that everybody knows, like in vino veritas. But they really go down a lengthy like back and forth there. That's fun to see translated. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if they both actually spoke Latin or if for I, some reason that they... would be an incredible level of education, right? At the time, apparently, like it was common for for like someone of their of their status because Doc Holliday was called Doc because he was a trained dentist. He he'd been to he'd been to college, mm. and. And Ringo's presented as an educated man as well. That's kind of what that scene's telling us, right? That's, right, right? That's even what Doc says. He's like, oh, see, that's that's Latin, baby. That that means Ringo here is an educated man. <laughs> now I really hate him. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you remember lines. And, and that one I thought was a little spoon-fed to us. You know, they speak in Latin for a while, and then he literally tells the audience that means he's an educated man, baby. And I'm like, I, I, I'm not that dumb. I got it. <laughs> I got it. He's your peer. I see. They've got a Doc Holiday too. Yeah. Um, what do you say for plural for um, if there's an octopus? If you see a, if you see multiple octopus, what do you, what do you think is correct? I think, uh, I think this is one of those where octopuses and octopi are both correct, and as well as octopodes. Octopodes. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. making that up. I'm not. So the how do you deal spell is, that? Octopodes. So the deal is that um, I, you're, you, uh, you can say. You're not thinking of octopods. So octopus is, is correct because I think that's how it was in the dictionary first, but octopeds is correct if it's um, the plural of a Latin-based word. And they went with that for a while, but someone said, wait a fucking minute, there's no Latin word for octopus. It's a Greek word, and the plural in Greek is, uh, is epides, so it's octopides. Um, so all three are correct. You can use any of them. Yeah. Octopus are very cool animals. They're very smart. I think they're the coolest of animals. I think they might be the most intelligent of animals. And it's really sad because they live these short lifespans. Because if they lived like for 30 or 40 years, like maybe there'd be some some way to like eventually communicate with one, right? I but didn't they, know they had short lives. Yeah, they don't live for very long at all. Oh, I'm mixed up. It's it's a jellyfish that can live for like fucking ever, right? Uh, like I know one kind I of jellyfish that can like can. resort back to its infant stage and then regrow and then come back. I know lobsters live for a very long time. I've even heard yeah. them described as being immortal, but that's of course not true. Yeah, because someone's going to eat it at some point. And also, apparently, the bigger the lobster, the shittier the meat. Like yeah, a big lobster that's mm -hmm. been around for like fifty years and then it tastes like scum dog filters. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're scum filters. Same with catfish. Anything that's a bottom feeder mm -hmm. like that, you want a young one. I mean, I think it's not like an old cow tastes extra good, right? Like it soaked up all that grass-fed flavor. <laughs> old Bessie's 37. <laughs> she can yeah, well, barely an, move. An old dairy cow is only fit for fucking dog food and prisoners. To me, the creme de la creme of beef, like unless you're going to go get some Wagyu or some Japanese nonsense that, that you can't even import, is feel. Like just baby cow is so fucking good. It doesn't matter what you feed it. It delicious. tastes so good. Like it is, it's a net benefit to have those little fuckers chained to the ground. To I wish make they sure. Them. Yeah, they should. <laughs> what a what a horrific <laughs> thing to do. <laughs> I wish as soon as it came out, like they, like like don't have a grown man do it. That just seems like overkill. But like if you had like a mob of little folk go in there, yeah. like uh, the dwarves, the, the little cows in his Stephen Hawking chair for his short life. I just want to see him go in there like like and club those those little those little baby calves in the legs like break their legs right away like like in that scene in misery. Dude, unbelievable series of W's we're having against pigs, chicken and cows. It's not <laughs> it's not even close. Like in the universe th that has to be one of the biggest owned species to species is us over chickens, cows, and pigs. I mean, just the whole... Stealing them from the wild, saying, yeah, you're not going to be like this anymore. We're changing nature. And then we do that. Pretty cool. Pretty alpha. I don't I know. I looking all that time for what different groups of crows are called. <laughs> you can find anything. Different groups of what? Crows. So everyone, well, most people know, a group of crows is called a murder. Mm -hmm. It's a but... group name. If the crows are, I think if they're eating together, they're called a mob. If they're standing around, they're called something else. A if gaggle. I don't no, think that's so. Um, they're that's also, gander. if they're talking, 
Like if they're making noise, it's called a storytelling of crows. Like the the names for crows in groups is really interesting, but I couldn't find it laid out properly to tell the story. But, the the, the, uh, the crow mar- crows got to, mm. you know, simplify those terms then. You can't have five different names for crows just standing around. A murder is oh. you, you, you hit a home run on the first try. <laughs> a a murder of crows, of crows is pretty good. A storytelling of crows is pretty good. I like a lot Awful. of these. I hate no, them. No, no. Mm. Storytelling, I don't like that. A murder of crows. You that's knocked out of a park with a murder of crows. That's such a cool that thing to good. call crows. No other animal gets a murder. What's like what like a pod of whales? Wow, cool. Hmm. A gaggle of geese, neat. A murder of crows. You saw that gif the other day of the a orca. rape of chimps. <laughs> Ooh, a rape <laughs> like, that's of... how you should do. It. <laughs> <laughs> I believe a rape is dolphins. That's what we call <laughs> groups of politicians grouped together. A rape. <sighs> <laughs> oh, so did um the uh, help me with her name, Woody the the conservative crazy bitch with the the brunette the Bober Lauren Magic Bobert? The Lauren Bobert, what is her something name? like that. Yeah, You're so thinking of Marjorie Taylor Greene, oh. but he's talking Am about I? Lauren Bobert, I think. Which Who's one, the, like, which one did yeah, that so, gr- group go after and expose so that she? I'll lay it out a little bit. There is a group on the Republican side who attacks Republicans, and they went after Madison Cawthorn, Lauren Boebert, um, and they got him with the like naked humping his cousin, and they got him with the like he's wearing sort of lingerie outside, like in mm-hmm. a club environment or something, and uh, basically made him lose his primary. So Madison Cawthorn is going to lose his job next election cycle, whatever. Now they've aimed their guns at Lauren Boebert. And apparently they have, they can back this up. Two things. Yeah, she's pretty. She was a sugar baby. So um, people don't know what a sugar baby is like a sex worker adjacent type thing is that they tend to be like real relationships. But I, I, I don't think know. everybody knows what a sugar baby is out there. Dude, at some point it blurs the line between giving money to a girlfriend and giving money. Like there's somewhere in between ex escort and girlfriend. But anyway, um, not really. She was not really. Well, she was a sugar baby. She had, I think two sugar daddies at different points and she had two abortions, which, you know, the abortion thing I'm, I'm pro choice. So whatever. I like but... your only fans pitch picks. With oh. the, those were hot with the, tat- with the tattoo above her ass. Are you um, sure she had OnlyFans? I, I don't know. They looked really racy, and I, I, I didn't. They didn't look like campaign photos when she had like that tramp stamp, and and like she's like, I don't know, showing off her butt in her yard or whatever. All I know is this will not affect her in a negative way. Oh, um, like, like, like go it, on. It, it's like like now she's got my vote. Like I want to keep you in office. She mm-hmm. she seems cool as shit now. Now that so, I know she's like a dirty whore. <laughs> That's so awesome. like that, that, that endeared me to her. Like before, she, she was like a dumb blonde karen bitch provocateur who promoted like the most ignorant backward stuff that and it's, it was embarrassing but now she might be a whore yeah All now forgiven. she's slinging that <laughs> pussy on the street that I'm, is a mark in her favor I'm, you know it's funny that like what he what he brought this up like this is gonna hurt him you know with a lot of people and kyle and i are like no i this person i don't know who she is is much cooler now for <laughs> for having done so this. much cooler now i yeah. i don't like that She's pro life and being pro life combined with um did she get abortions? T- two. Yeah. Oh, that came out. Who is would that, know like, better is than that her? like a is that a for real thing or is that like a, a TMZ who knows kind of thing? Uh they were right about Madison Cawthorn. It's like this group has some credibility. Those, those picks of is it the Lincoln Project, those fucking losers? No, it's I forget the name of them, but uh in any the case. Madison Cawthon thing, like I didn't see, I, maybe I didn't see all the pictures. Like I saw him like in the lingerie thing, and I was like, yeah, I knew a ton of fucking frat guys in college who would do parties like this. Oh, like, absolutely, lots yeah. of people who fucked in around. Opinion, and so, like the whole thing of like he was dressing in women's underwear and doing this, I'm like, stop pretending that you're offended. This is clearly a costume party. I, I don't think that that's why he lost. But his, I also don't uh, know what else happened with him. To be, I fair. don't think that's why he lost his race. You know, he'd been talking about um, cocaine sex parties, like. A month prior to that and yeah. then all that oppo stuff came out so i Cause think that he fact. was i think he was already he was like on the way out and uh, i don't think that anybody was like look look, look people on the right like, like they they elected donald trump they will forgive anything if it means beating a liberal liberal tears is a real thing mm-hmm. they love that mm-hmm. shit Mm-hmm. The, the, the enemy of my enemy is my friend and they don't care if that if that person has an only fans a tramp stamp an aborted 
Pause this there, that. though. I don't think her, she's going to lose her district as much as she could possibly lose her primary. Now, I don't know where she is in the thing right now, but there might be someone who runs against her who hasn't had a couple abortions, the whole who party hasn't been a, a sugar, who hasn't been a sugar baby before, and he's just like, look, would you like a you know, more upstanding politician like everyone else has. Well, you know how that works. It's it's you not as if like someone can just be like, hey, I'm Matt Woodworth and I'm running against that whore. I'm not mm -hmm. a whore. It's like, yeah, wh wh what's your pack like? Like, like how many senators are going to show mm -hmm. up at your events? Mm -hmm. Who's paying for your events, by the way? How much, how many millions of dollars are you pumping into this? It's like, oh yeah, I don't have any backing. So like, there's probably some people in the Republican Party who like either say yes or no about who gets to run for this thing. It was just going to take them literally being like, ah, we're going to run someone against you in this in, in your primary. Like they would have to do her like that for her to lose. And, she's and got like, so much name recognition. I don't even know where she's from. Isn't she from Georgia here? It like, says what Colorado. Are, okay. It's, it's the Colorado. other crazy. It's Marjorie Taylor Greene that's from here in Georgia. Yeah. She's the other side of this lady's coin. Madison Cawthorn's us. North Carolina. Really? Nice. Woo! Yeah. Congrats. I don't even know who we have. <laughs> in Missouri, I could not tell you. Is but I, I am seeing here, like, mm -hmm. apparently, and this is from Daily Beast, a very liberal rag. They're saying there's no evidence that she had two abortions. It's all hearsay as of now. Yeah, it's a real smear campaign. Which, and um, mm. it's interesting that it, if it Yeah, she's taking out, legal action over it, according to Fox. Daily Beast says no evidence for it. Mother Jones, unbelievably progressive, left-leaning, mm -hmm. says, stop spreading misogynistic rumors about Lauren Boebert. So, yeah, oh. this is just a made-up talking this, point. So this, these people have been accurate so far. I think if they can't back up their claim, they've lost the credibility that they've built up on matter. Madison Cawthorn. But by the time this comes out and it's a story that it was fake, people will have moved on and the public will already have the knowledge that he had to abortion. No, no, no. That's how these no, I think it does matter. No, we like I fake. think that, you know, if you start, if you take down Madison Cawthorn and every fucking thing you said was right and all he can say is like, yeah, locker room boys hump each other naked. It's fun, fun. And then you start taking down the next one and they're like, oh shit, these guys haven't told a lie yet. What was it's it like right? Well, released... hold on, hold on, hold on. What was it right what they said? Because from what I remember, they lied and implied that he was like having gay sex with his friends wearing women's clothing. When in reality, he was at a costume party. Like, I'm not even a Madison Cawthon guy. I don't know fucking shit about this guy, but I have enough people, enough friends who went to college and went to enough frat parties that had custom like like dress requirements and stuff that like that's very obviously a party. Very so obviously. it was a party. I don't know if it was a costume party, but he was there with two like hot women behind him and he's wearing women's clothing. And yeah, it's, um, costume party. it's a lingerie maybe. party. Yeah. Oh, OK. Did guys usually wear lingerie. Anyway, yep. the, I'm what I'm saying is if they lied, I didn't see it. I um, shit. What was I going to say? Oh, instead, I just saw them say, here's embarrassing footage of him say mm -hmm. what you will right which is which is what they did and if they ruin their own credibility then the next time they come after whomever it, it won't be as heavy hitting I, I just i don't see the media having any credibility like I, I when i see them say something like my initial reaction is to be like what what is their angle who yeah this is like, the, the media the way this is looks to people be. who are like outwardly biased and not hiding it. This is opposition. This is we're trying to take her down, but you can trust us because we haven't lied to you so far. That did you that's see? Where uh, they are. But they but they have lied. Like all of these rags have lied dozens of times about thousands of things. Like you're just grouping them together with people that lied. Like all of these rags. Mm -hmm. These people said, "Here's the they embarrassing footage." Right, but and, you're, and, and, but it's I'm not, not about talking the... about all of them. I'm talking about this group that releases the stuff. What is the group? Fuck, what is the pack that's trying to take that? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, to, to start a thing. You don't have to find it. I, I believe you. I'm just saying, when things like this come out, my initial reaction, I feel like the uh, people's initial reaction for all of this, regardless of sides, after we've seen how biased our media is in this country, be like, you know what? I'm not sold. Like, I don't know. Like, when, the, when all that Hunter Biden shit came out, my reaction was like, I don't fuck. I don't think it's as fucking wild as a lot of these people are saying. But there's something there. Like it ended up what, being pretty wild though on? with the crack. Well, I'm talking about my initial thing. Is I was yeah. like, I don't trust fucking Fox 
or the Daily Wire, like Ben Shapiro's rag, to do an I, honest I, analysis. I, so this, this is a group, a political action committee called the American Muckrackers. And they successfully embarrassed Cawthorn out of office, I would argue. And now they're trying to do it to her. If so they're, they just, they're a shameless tabloid group that, like, that's what it sounds like. The they're media. they're I mean, muckrakers. That's what they're called, muckrakers, right? Uh, yeah, I've never heard of that term before. Yeah, that, that means that you're trying to bring untoward things up to the public to try and malign someone. Yes, and it that's does, what they, don't, they do. And, they, and muckrakers <laughs> do not care. Whether or there not are a political true. action committee. They make no attempt to pretend they are unbiased, right? That, that's what I'm trying to get out. Okay. They're, if you're like, they have no credibility. They're, it's much like when they released the emails for the Democrats, like the, the private ones that they got hacked or whatever. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, whoever released these is definitely not trying to be fair and balanced, but they're not lying. Yep. This is parallel to that. Interesting. Okay, it, the, fair, fair enough. The the whole like, I don't know. I, I in the past I don't remember there being characters like uh, this Taylor Green lady and uh, this Cawthorn guy. Like they seem like a new breed of politician almost. And I hope that it's not something that continues. This sort they're of mimicking like, Trump, or they're trying to. I call it the I performative think. branch. I, I, at the moment, it's mostly Republican. Although I'm open to the idea yeah. that there could be AOC. Democrats. She's performative like that. Uh, yeah. yeah. No. I she, definitely she writes agree. legislation and tries to get it passed. These guys really just put on shows. That that come on, like you're going to say like they're performative, but like AOC isn't. Like right, I'm gonna I'm absolutely going to stick to that too because okay. AOC has had aspects of the Green New Deal already get put into the budget. Like whereas like Marjorie Taylor Green is literally not on a single committee. Doesn't I'll have, agree with that. Uh, all right, so AOC is a professional politician and she's excellent at her job. Those she other is. two I think of is like uneducated, dumb Karen cunts. Yeah, Madison yeah. Cawthon, who's on his way out, literally just out there like saying things he thinks Trump would say. Like he yeah. doesn't write any bills. It's the performative branch, and, I, and I'm I'm coming off biased. Democrats will m perhaps evolve to this too when they see that it's a winning formula. It's just that at the moment, wait, wait what do you mean they'll they'll evolve to it too? You don't think there are performative Democrats out there? Mm, this is I, I guess not Taylor. solely performative because right, so, so they're like, also like, trying like, to make change. Let's draw some like like there's some obvious and clear differences. Like, like when we're talking about like this trio of like conservatives. Well, this trio of retards are are like th that's what they seem to be a trio of retards. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Like I don't think there's ever been people like them in the political sphere. I don't remember it growing up that there were just wild. Remember they yelled at the 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 State of the Union, like that yeah. was them. Mm -hmm. That was the, those two <laughs> women. That was them together screaming like at the worst possible time about dead soldiers when he's talking about his dead son up there who's a fucking soldier yeah it's it's a bad look and then you know i don't know if you saw the freeze frames but they look so insane they're like ah! they're like mid well no, no for, for freeze frames you can make any person look ridiculous but no you're winning me over it does make sense like they yeah but they're they not truly sitting like they're supposed so to they're like they, they're like leaning over the thing like, no like, i know ah! and they they they, they are so angry. Yeah, they, they do seem like they are just performative. They're they're trying to like it seems like those three like people like that are more interested in getting public opinion and yeah, people so behind right. them, and then they can like once they lose, they Which can start a hotter? podcast and get a shit ton of money. Which Obviously, one the one on the left, not even a fucking contest, not even close, right? That's not the even close. Colorado, the one on the right's my lady from from Georgia. I will say this: the one on the right, she makes these absurd campaign commercials. Where she's shooting like a Barrett 50 cow and blowing up a car full of Tannerite. Dude, I fucking love the, the champion of that photo. Bring that photo back up. The champion is that guy sitting in between them, <laughs> just just trying to to not be lumped in with it. Look at <laughs> me, me in the middle right there. No, not that lady. The guy, the black guy. The guy, the black guy. Look at look at his eyes. Just like I'm sitting between the two craziest white women in America right now. How did he end up drawing the short straw and having to sit between them? I don't know. They're Republicans, so they were probably like, we'll pay you to sit next to us so we don't seem bad. No, I'd like to see them les out. I hope there's a uh, there's a porno like that where they find some lookalikes look because I loved that, uh, that Nalen Palin uh, thing they did for... Um, uh, Palin back in the day, and they, mm -hmm. I can't think of the, the the porn actress's name. She's one of my favorites. She's an mm -hmm. older, like, she's like MILF style. Like she's probably mid forties or maybe even like fifties now. Like Lisa Ann, big fan of Lisa. Zach, Lisa quick Ann. on the draw with porn names. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But can, do we have like a PG photograph of Lisa Ann? 
like 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 as like, as oh uh, as Palin. Palin yeah if you just search Naylin Palin um you, you could find her like with the glasses Sarah, on Sarah and everything Palin probably the best looking female politician in the time in the time since then like i would not like you remember back to 2008 with mccain that old codger and then oh, I'm all she, about looks, this. Uh, she she looks a lot like like sarah so, Palin. so this is her like the a uh, uh, like does. award show or something like that so but like when you see her in the porno she has those same rimmed glasses that sarah palin wore and she's mm -hmm. wearing like one of her like blazers and there's a scene where, like, remember Sarah Palin had that line about how she's a, she was the governor of Alaska, and she's like, oh, the Russians are right over the border. I can see them across my backyard. And and so, of course, they have, like, two Russians just, like, walk in from the backyard and fuck her. You, uh, you know Sarah great. Palin never said that, right? I don't I care. Do that. I, yeah. I, I think, though, they Woody, did say it on Woody SNL. Woody clued me in on that because I was oh. convinced. That was one of those things where I was like, yeah, remember when she said that? And I, it was years ago. Woody was like, she actually didn't. That was in the porn. And I was like, oh, I just oh. told on myself. Like, <laughs> it, was, it was in the SNL that I can see him. Oh, from the, the SNL. That, yeah. That's what it was. But, uh, like, who else? Tina Fey oh, wait, wait. said it, though, and she's close. <laughs> who's, uh, who's the Hawaii lady? What's her name again? Mm. Ooh, Gabbard. Gabbard. So uh, I would say probably Gabbard beats out Palin in prime because Gabbard's very hot. She's got like a surfer body too. Yeah, she's always surfing and such. And so I, don't I, think would, she's I would like put her. White, up there I think she's like she's like part Islander maybe or something. She's, she's got Is like there a brown. picture of her? I have no idea. And something more revealing yeah, than like can, a business. Can you suit? search Tulsi Gabbard surfing? Let's see if that put in happened. put in Tulsi Gabbard butthole. Yeah. Yes. And see, you know, you, you never know unless you try. <laughs> I, I mean, roll the dice. Like, what's the worst yeah. that could happen? Okay. It's hard to look good. And once you get some board shorts on, that's. Oh, shit. Uh, let me see what your picture you guys are looking at. Uh, see, I'm looking some, at way more revealing shit. Those are some power. Yeah. Let's have, let's have Woody send his picks to Zach and then we can look at those yeah. because I would say that she probably edges out Sarah Palin. Because think about it, who else is the hottest female politician since then in the last 14 years? So my only caveat to her oh, being she's very hot. hotter AOC? than... Uh, maybe. I, I think Sarah Palin's prettier. AOC probably has a better body. The thing about... Yeah, I said that right. The thing about Sarah Palin is she looked really good like post-50. Dude, AOC is hot at a time that a lot of people are hot. Like you're not blowing me away by being like a hot twenty something year old. If you're a hot fifty year old, dude, like you, I can only imagine what you're like at twenty. No, no, that that's actually a very that's more compelling an argument than I was thinking. For that reason, if we're doing our rankings, stack rankings competitively, you would have to give it to Tulsi because how? Wait, wait, how old is she? How old is is she? She's not fifty. Tulsi, she? how 40s? old is? I think Tulsi's young. I was making an argument for <clears throat> Palin being hot deep into her. Uh, lifespan. Oh, Palin's yeah. even not Very bad true. now. I mean, I I, I looked at our recent 41? Sarah Palin 2022. I'm going to look for a picture of her. I saw her and I was like, you know, I, not like killing the game or anything, but for her age. You know, oh, you yeah, know, that's the thing. For her age, killing it. You know who's not holding up well? Yeah, her former, running, her former oh. running mate, John McCain. Yeah, that is he's true. dead. He there, looks terrible throw up a palin from <laughs> that's in the a, comment section for john mccain i really wish zach had pulled up a picture, picture of like skeletor <laughs> that sound skeleton. like a random candid where she's not smiling <laughs> zach is clearly biased against sarah palin <laughs> here she is knowing that she's on camera uh you know, does she look 21 no but how old is she? This is current too. This is this Alaska house seat thing is like breaking news. She's fifty-eight <laughs> years old. Oh, yeah. that's a great. That's a strong fifty-eight. That's a strong that's what fifty-eight. I'm saying. You know what? Good for her. I bet yeah. she runs. I bet she runs all the way to Alaska sometimes, all the way to Russia. Rather, sorry. <laughs> uh, they probably don't let her on flights because of a mask thing or something. I know there's a couple people like that. She seems like an anti-masker. I don't think they do that shit anymore, do they? Do you need masks on planes anymore? No, I don't think not you anymore. do need masks on That's planes. Very I recently might... took that down. Oh no, no, you you definitely don't ago. because yeah, I I flew like a month ago <laughs> and like nowhere was requiring it. How Dude, many people, people wear them voluntarily? Uh, it was rare. Like I was sitting in the waiting area, and you know how there's always like seven, eight, nine rows of people all sitting there right before boarding. I bet out of the 
200 people on the flight. I saw three masks. Yeah. Like maybe three. Like it's rare to see a mask. Yeah, the proof's in the pudding. Like, like nobody wants to wear them. We're done. No, We're all of done. Not. And look, and look, COVID isn't gone either. Like, like mm -hmm. I haven't looked at the stats recently. I did see that Fauci got it, which is like this fun little if you're an anti-mask like right. from the beginning patriot, you've got to be <laughs> laughing your ass patriot. off right now. Is it the first time he's had it? It might be. I, I believe it is. I, I think there would have been more said if he'd had it in the past. Yeah. I don't recall him getting it before but of course you know he, he's got it now and of course they're, they're using the meet your maker memes <laughs> you know, a lot of that, so lot of that I, going around i um like I, I know people who've had covid recently include i guess i'll just say it hope had covid a couple weeks ago and uh it, it hasn't been hitting that hard mm -hmm. and i wonder like is it because the omicron variant isn't that hard is it because my sample size is like I know kids that have had it, and I know a uh, twenty-something-year-old that had it. Yeah. Did you notice they stopped like informing us what variant was mutating this week, like two months ago? <laughs> like it, for a long time, they were pumping out new variants like they were Marvel movies, and then all, <laughs> then all of a sudden, we didn't need Ant Man six to like whip us into shape anymore. We had Ukraine to talk about, and now who knows? You just mentioned yeah. Omicron. That's like four months ago. Like like. There would have been yeah. 16 different variants since then. Oh, Is that more true? Than I thought the virus was, was still the one. All the time, right? You think how though? How do we know though? Because they haven't. They stopped telling us about the new mutations. Maybe they I just naming, assumed it. That's they, a good point. Saying, yeah. They stopped naming. Them. Well, if like I mean, you said like hopes was mild. Like mm -hmm. everyone I've known who's gotten it, who was young, not obese, not diabetic, not elderly, like they have been have been okay. And, yeah. and like, and we've known that since like the beginning, like they knew the risk factors were primarily obesity and diabetes were like what, like the two Age. biggest comorbidities that like aligned with, which is like to be on like to be understood because that's kind of the two biggest comorbidities. Age too. There was like a big shit. nursing yeah, home. Age issue. of yeah. course, stuff like that. Like when I got it, it was wild how fast it came on and how fast it went away. It was so bizarre. Zach wrote he was dead for two days. Would you describe yourself something like that? No, like I, and I'll breeze through it because I know I've said it before. Like I, 10 a.m. the day I got it, I was doing a call and I was planning out my workout for that day. By 1 p.m., I was like, the area behind my eyes hurt so much, like just from looking around. I was like, something's fucking weird here. Mm -hmm. And like I knew I was getting it because my wife had gotten it prior and the all the exact symptoms, pain behind the eyes, headache. That's what we got. Like she tested positive. And then the next day when she started feeling better, I got it. And over the course of maybe 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., I went from feeling like one million dollars to feeling like absolute dog shit. And mm -hmm. I was it was a Tuesday and I did PKN and I was worried and I was like, God, like this is like a bad flu. Like I'm going to be fucked up for the show. I'm not going to sound right. And the next morning I woke up and it was fucking weird. Like 80 percent of it disappeared overnight. Like mm. I had a couple days of like a little bit of fatigue, but the biggest thing for me was that behind the eyes headache whenever I'd look around and it like it came on like a storm. Like and I'm not exaggerating to the point that I was worried that two days from then I would still be too sick to do the show next mm. day by 5 p.m. Dinner time felt 100 percent like normal other than a little tired. When did you lift again? Uh, it took me I, I think I lived, I lifted Friday. So the day okay. after PKA that week, I lifted again, so and it was wasn't little... it wasn't the yeah it wasn't the best workout, but I think it was almost as much to do with the missing the workouts as it because like I I never had a problem with breathing or uh, smell or taste. I just got this wicked headache that that sucked. I don't know. You haven't had it, have you? I have not. Not that no. you know of. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. If mm -hmm. I had it, I was symptom free. Did um, uh, Did Hope get headaches? Because I've heard like th that isn't as common. Most people get like the flu symptoms. And only some people get like time, bad headaches. She quarantined in the guest house. So I she just disappeared. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Hope, you doing OK? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I recall. She was um, graduating from college and it's like, are we going to go to the graduation or not? Let me know. Let me know. Oh. We went to the. the well, I hope the way it is, is like, you need like so many days after a negative test or something. So she. She just cleared the one of her graduation ceremonies. Good. So I'm, I'm glad she was able to walk. She got I know, to go, yeah. I know walking means a lot to a lot of people. I don't get it, but you, I, I literally, my parent, I was the first 
person on my dad's side of the family to ever graduate from college. Mm -hmm. And so like it was a big deal for my oh, dad. For some reason like, I thought your father did. But anyway. Yeah, I was I was the first one to graduate from college and like it was a huge deal. And so like my dad and my grandma on that side, like people were like, we're going to come watch you walk like you graduated college. That's a really big deal. And I was like, yeah, but they're charging seventy dollars for the robe and I don't want to do it. And they were like, OK, well, it's your decision. And I just just didn't do it. Just was I like, didn't no, do it either. I, I thought walk. that's not where this was. I thought you were going to say you did it unenthusiastically. No, I didn't do it. I was like, I don't want to. I'm done with college. I, I, I'm punching out. I'm leaving. Like, that's what I wanted to do. Not me. So I had plans of getting a master's when I finished my undergrad. And mm -hmm. I was like, I, I hate to put down everyone with a college degree. That's not what I'm going for. But it felt a little bit like eighth grade graduation. Like, no, high school graduation is the last one. Mm -hmm. This is just an intermediate graduation on my way. And uh, when I got my master's, I knew I wasn't getting a doctorate. One, I'm not even sure if I'm smart enough. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, but I really knew that my motivation for comp sci related stuff was sapped. Sure. So uh, for the master's, I was kind of excited about walking. I was like, I felt like I had achieved something and mm -hmm. and I walked and I didn't make any. There's two. One was the great big ceremony that most of the school went to. And I just did that by myself. I didn't drag like yeah. anybody to it. Well, you, you then, had like a real degree, like something that was hard. To, I, I had an undergrad psych degree. It was me mm -hmm. and every, you know, good looking <laughs> girl. <laughs> all <graduating laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. I, I had a master's in engineering and uh I did make my wife go to the one that, you know, the smaller room with like a hundred people in it. Like she attended that. It wasn't so painful. And yeah. uh, I think who's the left political talk show guy from like the eighties. It might be Merv Griffin or it might be like Donahue, Phil Donahue, I think was our commencement speaker. And you have to understand, even though NC state is a university and you'd mm -hmm. think it'd be left leaning, it's kind of the right leaning university. If there's such a thing and they fucking hated this guy. And he was like, I thought his points weren't that extreme. Like, you know what? No knock warrants where the police bust down your door and shoot you with no trial. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. And all the other audience is like, oh, I don't know about this guy. He's anti-police. And yeah, he got booed quite a bit. I finished, not to change the topic too much, mm -hmm. but I totally am. Um, I finished Ozark. Uh, oh. I, guess, I guess spoilers for you know the end of Ozark. If you haven't watched it yet, you're really... You really, really need to. It is now mm -hmm. in my top five shows of all time as a series. My top, definitely top yes. five series of all time. I knew they, you'd like the ending. I knew you would. I will say that the last season is not their best season. It, it can huh. be a bit meandering, and, and they really have a hard time staying focused and keeping the tension like on. They have it where in previous seasons, it always felt like Marty and Wendy were on the verge of disaster, like, like on the precipice, on a razor's edge. This last season, it seemed like they were more in control, which I suppose is only to be expected. But right up into the end, I was waiting on things to fall apart. And again, spoilers, but they fucking won. The bad guys won. The, mm -hmm. And they won by being as bad bad as they could possibly be like but the way they won wasn't by turning over that new leaf or taking that fucking deal it mm -hmm. was by finding the most shitty mexican that existed and and making a deal with her it was by turning on everybody who who who, who, who ever helped them or had anything to do with them ruth fuck you you blonde dumb hick you're dead in the dirt you're dead in the i dirt like ruth you, i liked her too she couldn't keep her fucking mouth shut though why are you Fuck you, Ruth, you dumb bitch. You got exactly what you had coming to you. You got exactly what you had coming she to you. She got what was coming, but was there a part of you that was like, you wished that didn't, like, I, 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 I came her. to like Ruth a lot, and I didn't want to see so her Ruth is so lucky she didn't get tortured to death. She got that. She, she, I, I was like, man, they're going to rape Ruth to death, I guess. Look, she has got off so light getting shot in the heart. But like, like, at the end, like, like dead yeah. in like 30 seconds or something like that. She was she got she even got to like say her insults in the end. No, I loved it. And and that fucking piece of shit cop that, who that PI his, or whoever who it was the take, investigator. They're like, we've given you what you could have only dreamt of. We moved, we did we moved mountains that you didn't know could move. 
we pulled strings that you didn't know existed. And you're going to show back up here and break our fucking window and take my goat with the evidence in it? Fuck mm -hmm. you. Guess what? I got a little autist out back with a 12 gauge. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And, and this guy's been watching nothing but disturbing movies in his motel room for yeah. the last two years. He's been playing Doom. <laughs> <laughs> for two years he's gonna fucking click on your head like it's call of duty look in that kid's eyes <laughs> that was that was such a good like they obviously we have the spoilers thing running so we can talk about it i i did never i never really liked the sopranos ending as much you know i i liked it because it was like okay tony dies at the end yeah. that's the way it's going mm -hmm. but it never fulfilled me mm -hmm. this the the structure of it like with uh, jonah holding the gun pointed at the guy and then just the blast and the black is like the whole team's in the whole family is doubling down all of these little rifts between their interpersonally that doesn't matter because we're all cartel people now and we're all on the same team and it was a cool solidifying moment of yeah the birds are just getting started and now they're a family force not you know and, uh, these kind of ancillary characters working on their own pursuits and they're safe like, like they, mm -hmm. they are so rock solid. Like the cartel couldn't be cooler with them. The feds yeah. couldn't be cooler with them. All of their enemies dead. It, yeah, like, they're like, ready to roll. The only person left is the pregnant black FBI woman who is like the FBI does it. She's dead to the FBI. Like, like yeah. she is done. She blew her wad taking down the the cartel guy. She has no no credibility left. They have no enemies. It it's how you want something to. Mm -hmm. to, to end i don't know it's the I, good i would have been happy, happy with ending. a lot of endings yeah. uh I, I get that it's a happy ending if you're rooting for the bag what i liked about it was that they answered all the questions True. i didn't want them to be like oh well whatever happened to this guy they never really explained mm -hmm. this or this didn't make sense you know that the whole what is it five years four years you mm -hmm. know this it was going this way and then in the last episode they just flip a switch and now this guy's something that didn't happen yeah what happened is it was like they knew how it was going to end a year or two ago. They led you up to it. There were some twists, you know, that I didn't necessarily know where mm -hmm. things were going to go. It made sense, and it left me with no questions, and I appreciate it. Yeah, and, yeah. and you can see their trajectory that Wendy Bird is going to be so, like a regional, national, political force of power. She yeah. is going to be a, a, a kingmaker. By uh, the end of it, she, like, runs the Midwest, Yes. Like of yes. politics, which is like, oh, so you control Missouri, all Illinois, Minnesota, Michigan, fucking Iowa. She, like she can literally shape national policy at this point. That's how mm -hmm. powerful she is. She's bulletproof. Marty is going, it, they have as much money as they could ever want or need. Like they just have money flowing out of their ass. What happened to their mm -hmm. marriage? Like, are they just they resolidified partners? it there at the end? They fucking yeah. shored it up by the, right at the end. You know, fucking hugging each other after the accident. Like the accident from the accident forward, they're like mm -hmm. coming back together. And then, then you know, lots of hugging and embracing, and her saying, "Don't leave me," and him saying, "Like I never leave you." Like it's, I loved it. I was so happy. It's mm -hmm. everything that I wanted Breaking Bad to do for me. I mm -hmm. wanted Walt to get back together with his fat wife. I wanted I wanted Walt Jr. I no, wanted Walt to be I wanted Walt I wanted Walt to be like son, little Walt Jr. Rickety Cricket, come here. I know that you're not so down on your dad's drug empire, but look, I had some Colombian scientists make make a make a whole new body for you. And now you're gonna be walk like a real boy. Like 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 I wanted I wanted them all to get on now board. Now you're pick a Walt. <laughs> now you pick a Walt. But dad, I don't want to be a pickle. You're like a wall. <laughs> um, it was Breaking Bad saddened me. I, I don't rewatch Breaking Bad because I don't like the downfall of, of 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 Walt, which is you know, if it were a book, maybe you'd call it that the downfall of of Walter mm -hmm. White. You could you could imagine it being that because that's what it is, really. He 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 his it's sad. It's a sad thing to watch him. I don't know. Watch his reach extend his uh, exceed his grasp, and and watch him eventually lose everything. It's sad, mm. but with this, it's like, oh my god, these guys were ruthless, evil, conniving, all, all of the above, and that's what it took. And that's the, that's what the winners had to do. They are also, the winners. They weren't lucky. They were mm -mm. smart. 
They made good decisions from the beginning to the end. Any decision they made that didn't, excuse me, that didn't work out wasn't dumb. It just didn't work out. You know, like um, they need to money launder, right? So to, to launder money, you need to have a business in which you can claim it came from customers. Kind of hard to count. That's why they did car washes and Breaking Bad. Like a lot of cash rolls in. People put it in the machines. You can just say this cash didn't come from selling heroin. This cash came from the little machine at the front of the car wash. Cool. Mm -hmm. They come up with the idea of a church. They're like, yeah. What, we have a lot of cash we need to figure out and we need to pretend that it can't. You can't count church money. It just flows in from the everywhere, much like drug money does. It didn't work out because there were complications, but I never thought it was stupid. I never was like, this idea won't fit from the start. It's stupid. Every idea they had was smart. Every character was smart, except perhaps the kids now and then. Uh, I And I appreciated that about it. And I appreciated that it was smart people against smart people mostly. Uh, I... I I'm done with the wildly See, that outmatched. With the, with the yeah. characters who are written to be as stupid as they need to get into trouble and as smart as they need to, to get out. Mm -hmm. Like Harry Potter. Time. All right, leave Harry Potter alone, all right? That's how he's written. He's Harry the smartest Potter's wizard not, on earth until no, he like forgets not. about curfew, and then it's like, oh, well, Harry, <laughs> you're for missing you curfew. The books. You must be punished. That's why I'm giving you 600 curfew, points to Gryffindor. <laughs> this is kind of interesting. I'm, read, I'm you going, well, you, I'll put you on the team if you blow me. None of that happened. <laughs> that <laughs> happened. <laughs> Kyle didn't that read happened. the books carefully. You don't remember that scene where Dumbledore held Harry down and molested him? That's pretty no. fucked. No, I don't remember that scene where Dumbledore. It was, it was, he was, he was, you don't remember that? He was licking nice. Harry's earlobe talking about oh. how you want to be the captain of the Squidditch team or whatever the fuck. Yeah. This, he, it, <laughs> like, he's the seeker. He, that's the position he wanted. Yeah, you're about to be seeking this wizard cock in your mouth if you want to be yeah. the seeker. Yep, and that's how Gandalf turned white. Yes, yes. Oh, oh, Frodo, your, your <laughs> hobbit hands are so soft. <laughs> that would, that would be you now. <laughs> Kyle, what, come on. What? What would an old timey wizard call his cock? Oh, good gracious me, my staff! Oh, yeah, I'm obviously be a staff. Yeah, my staff is great. Yeah, and then if my, it was Harry no, Potter, no, 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 he'd call about, it a wand. What about his trouser wand? Oh, my mm. trouser wand. I like oh, it. Oh, good gracious me! That's how that's how he sounded. Mm. No, he would he would. Uh, no, we're gonna make my fun of the Oh, I see what Zach did there. <laughs> his magic wand. Yeah. His magic wand is a dot. Okay. I like it. I, right. You don't I think like that? It. You don't think that? You don't think, that you don't think that Dumbledore and a little bit of funny business is going on with Harry and Ron back in the in Dumbledore, the back rooms? Look, 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 Dumbledore is given a boyfriend in the fucking books. Okay, so so no, I don't think he was molesting children. Dumbledore is a gay no. wizard who He's likes so, other gay who so likes naive. other gay men. And who are wizards as well. So just, just he didn't molest oh, the children. But age is but a construct in the wizarding world, Harry. It is not a construct. <laughs> it is a it is a <laughs> finite point. Uh, it, is, it happens. People age and they die. I don't know. It seems to me, based on nothing, that he was probably raw dogging some boys you leave, you leave in the Harry middle of Potter that hall. And his and his wonderful wizarding world out of this shit. Okay, it's it's, it's just it's, the it's, cutest it's, boy sits under that uh, hat, and then it. the Sorting Hat puts him in a dark closet in Dumbledore's quarters <laughs> instead of one of the. Oh, the you're not a wizard. You're not a Gryffindor or a Huffleman or a whatever. You're the fuck. a bottom boy. You're a bottom boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a what? A bottom boy, Harry. You're meant to be a slave for hung wizards. I'm a what? <laughs> that's what it would be and then Harry would be like I wish I'd just stayed in that shitty house under the stairs I, I, I feel like you're really taking... that's what it is It's uh, Harry's kidnapped by an elderly rapist and Hogwarts is the reality he creates as an escape <laughs> from, from being raped so often by the wizard Oh, man that would dark. be a true switch uh, a Shyamalan it? twist, as you say. A Patreon question? Yeah, We have a Patreon like level. That. It might be $10. I'm not really sure. It is. Um, <laughs> and they can ask questions that we answer on the show. Yeah, sometimes. 10 bucks gets you like everything except for into the you know the $50 Hangouts and, yeah, and Discord. We, yeah. Which is the Check out price. the Patreon. The, the $50 Hangouts are a bunch of fun. If you were to pick three yeah. bitch traits, what would they be? Three traits oh. of a bitch. Ooh, tits. Yeah, I, I, wait. I, 
I, I interpret bitch traits to be like like El Presidor would say bitch made, like like not a yeah, yeah, like, like like things that break man code is what I think of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to. for like female traits. Uh, okay. honestly, like 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 I feel like someone who's gossipy, who's like telling other other people's business. Mm. Like as soon as you hear that somebody like had a divorce or like I don't know, like failed at a thing that they really didn't want to fail at, or like like something bad happened to them. If you're the first one who wants to like spread that bad news about them, and not yep. in like a way like, hey, Dylan's mm -hmm. business is failing. Like maybe we could do something, you know? Like like I think that if he just had just be sensitive to this thing that just happened to him, right? That's yeah. Okay. If yeah. you just gossip, be like, did you hear? Dylan's little enterprise didn't turn out so well guess he's not the zuckerberg he thought he was <laughs> <laughs> like if you're that guy that's a real bitch move and you would that's like that one. no no it's a a bitch move is not a positive attribute in a guy oh i thought you're asking bitch what made. bitch bitch attributes would you want if you had to have bitch attributes? No, uh, let me read it more carefully if you mistake. were to pick three bitch traits what would they be i i can see why taylor got that but that'll be the said entirely <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think they're saying if you could name three bitch traits, what would they be? Things yeah. that are bitch It would be being offered the opportunity to pick what restaurant you go to, failing it, having me pick it, and then being pissed that it wasn't the restaurant. Oh, God, wanted. that's a great one. That's a good I, one. Yeah, I have a counter for that that I use all the time. Frequent listeners know it. It's like you can't just be against it. You have to be for something better. Where are we going? Mm -hmm. uh, fucking Red Lobster. No, I don't think so. Yeah. You don't get a vote. You get a counter offer, but mm -hmm. you can't say no. Yeah. Suck my dick on your no. You know, you, you need to beat my idea. You got to say fucking cracker wait. barrel or something. Like you need a, another offer. Oh. And I agree with you. That's 100% true because I prefer I, I, the way I'll barrel. do it like with my wife is I'll be like the if biscuits. she's like looking around where she wants to go, I'll be like, "All right, you pick your top two places. I know you're spending a bunch of time looking. You pick whatever two you want. I'm deciding between those." And then mm -hmm. Usually she'll pick one and I'll be like Stevens barbecue, whatever the fuck. And then I can tell a meat. And obviously I'm a absolute pig. I have no preference where I go to eat. I'll find something delicious anywhere. And she'll be like, Oh, Tommy's barbecue. Uh, what about, what about Giuseppe's Italian? And I'm like, well, then we're Ooh. going to fucking Giuseppe's. I just tricked you into telling me what you really wanted. We just wasted <laughs> 20 minutes here. Like just to just tell me where you actually want to go because I can overeat anywhere in this city, <laughs> anywhere in the city. I can overeat. Like it, it Dude's got pick skills. anywhere. TGI you like George Fridays? Costanza Good. instead of knowing where every, all the best public bathrooms are. You know where all the, <laughs> all the all you can eat buffets are. I have my bitch trait that I that is. I don't like. When there's a amount of work to be done and you watch, right? Like it's a, like, for example, on Acro Day, uh, we have mm -hmm. to carry a whole bunch of gas cans across the the field, the heat to the to fill up the boat. If you watch me carry 12 gallons of gas, right, six in each hand, and then you watch me go back and get the next 12 gallons mm -hmm. of gas, bitch move, asshole. Yeah. Right? You know, that, that's not cool at all. And, and it's like what you needed to be told. You needed to be told to step in. This isn't a hard task to sort of figure out that needs to be done. You're watching me do half of it mirror my actions. Yeah. Right? You know what I saw the other day? And it just – every time you see Keanu Reeves do a thing, you're like, ah. Oh, Man, I like him more. They're mm -hmm. on the set of a John Wick movie, and I, I'll try to paint a picture. It's nighttime, lots of cast and crew moving around, kind of, and they're they're moving uh, those stage boxes that hold like gear. They're these black sort of fold together cases. They're move they're moving them up concrete stairs, like like a big flight of them. And Keanu has like two things, like two heavy things that he himself is carrying. And people mm -hmm. are like, no, Mr. Reeves, no, please. <laughs> and he's just like, no, no, I got it. And he's literally like helping them carry shit up the flight of stairs. What a nice guy. When, yeah. when like, I don't know, he's the guy getting paid $15 million to beat I people up. And, and Keanu no is too. a bit of a meme, right? Like, like he was great in John Wick 1, probably all three of them, but I really liked him in one. Mm -hmm. He was a little wooden in Matrix, but maybe that was the role. I get it. Uh but people love him so much. And maybe that's the reason. It's the off-camera stuff. He's a poor actor. Um, he he has to have mm. a role that fits like 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 his range because he doesn't mm -hmm. have a lot of range. I, I mean, I've talked about it a bunch of times, but if you want to see him absolutely almost ruin a movie, go mm. watch Bram Stoker's Dracula. 
where you have oh, Gary yeah. Oldman. Gary Oldman is the guy who plays like commissioner, the the commissioner in the Nolan Batman films. He, he's the, the has the line about like maybe you're not the hero, not the hero you need, but the hero we whatever the fuck. He's got that mm -hmm. line. A amazing actor. He's in this a ton of Dracula makeup. He looks like Dracula. He's wearing a handmade silk robe. That like he looks incredible. And Keanu is supposed to be a British like. Uh, accountant, like, like, like a junior accountant who's there on Count Dracula, Count Dracula's mansion to like formalize his Brit his British real estate purchases. He sounds like Surfer Dude. He's got the Point Break Surfer <laughs> Dude thing. Go He's like, oh, Count Dracula, I just don't know. Have you signed all of the paperwork? <laughs> and then Gary Oldman has to play off that and and be like, like lick the fucking straight razor and be all maniacal and terrifying. And you go back and forth between like being like, you know, if there was a centuries old blood drinking demon, I think it would look and act a lot like Gary Oldman right now to like Keanu over there still in point break surfer dude mode. Like, Oh no, Dracula won't let me leave his mansion. Whatever will I do? Who's the dead actor? He played opposite Tom Cruise in one of the mission impossibles. Yes, Philip um, Seymour Hoffman. He is yeah. one of the greatest of all time. Yeah, Wonderful I didn't guy. appreciate him till he died. Same. And, and yeah, he uh, he's one of those guys that just like makes a role. Like, good gosh, he he just nailed it. He, he wasn't he in um Charlie Wilson's War? Does that sound right? I think so. Yeah, he was um, that guy. I liked yeah. him in The Master. The Master is it's about it. Scientology, but they're careful not to make it about Scientology. Okay, okay. you know, it's about L. Ron Hubbard and. Philip Seymour Hoffman plays the L. Ron Hubbard character, the seductive cult leader. And mm -hmm. Joaquin Phoenix is like his newest, um, like, um, like recruit, recruit sort of. And like the brainwashing and stuff like mm -hmm. is really powerful. It was the first thing that I had seen of um, Joaquin Phoenix that I, that I really took notice and started being like, wow, he's just a really, really fucking, of course, like Commodus back in the day, like super duper evil in the Gladiator movie. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's been in a bunch of stuff. But I loved him in Signs. But after seeing him in yeah. that, I, I started taking him a lot more seriously. Uh, I don't know if you heard, but uh, the next Joker movie is going to be... They're, they're talking about making it a musical. A muse? Are you pulling my leg? I'm not. That's what everybody says when they hear this. It's it, like, you, can, you can look it up, but um, the, the pitch right now... And I think it's one of those things where they're like putting it out there to see how everybody reacts, and then maybe they go forward. But it's to have Lady Gaga play Harley Quinn to Joaquin Phoenix's Joker and for it to be a musical. I'm down for it because here's what I don't want. I don't want Joker 2. The same sort of long-winded down monotone and by that I mean like just one note thing and they just keep playing that same note for two and a half hours and I'll, most people disagree with me and like the first one. Mm. I think if they do it again, they'll come to my side. And that they should do something different. Musical sounds risky, but fuck it. Take a risk. I'm in. Yeah. Did you ever see um what's the Johnny Depp movie where he's the demon barber of Fleet Street? Uh what's that character's name? Um he, he's the he's the fucking I can I know the songs, but I can't think of it's Sweeney Todd. Thank you so much. Sweeney Todd is uh might be my favorite like modern musical kind of adaptation. It's not. A, it, I like I mean, the greatest show on earth. It makes me a little gay, but I've I've, I've grown accustomed to that. I, don't think I enjoyed that. it. I like the soundtrack. I I was in. Can I do a new question? Yes, please. This one I'm going to answer it first because I love it. If the government came to you and asked how we should reform police, what would you say? I love my answer. Right now, when police do bad shit, the city pays you, and nothing happens to the cops. I like the idea that when there's a big payout, right? $4 million because this guy died, $150,000 because this guy got hurt or the police lied or whatever. It comes from the police retirement fund. Let's change the nature of the thin blue line. Let's instead of having all these cops on their side against us, be like, asshole, that's my pension. My pension just went down because you shot a guy after you handcuffed him. We don't do that around here. My pension this, my pension that. Oh, are you going to beat a guy senseless for kicks? That's our pension. 
and just let it affect. They should put out a, a fucking flyer every everyone's pension went down by thirty seven dollars a year, you know, because of this action. No, Police I'm good with each that. Other. Yeah, I, I like the idea. I, I like the idea of um, a lot of civilian oversight. Uh, mm. like, like, I don't know why you need a police chief who carries a gun. You probably need a police chief who's a fucking nerd or something. Find find a black woman gay nerd and make them the civ- I'm not even joking. Make them the civilian oversight. And if you don't want to like work for for them, then fucking quit. Uh, like, I, I love whenever they're like, oh, police won't do this and th-. let them fucking quit. Like, 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 oh, they're gonna like do the. We were gonna have to go through you one at a time to find the bad apples. If you don't want to like go along with this shit, shit that makes sense, then you can just fucking quit. They do need to pay them more because I think that'll attract the high the the people that you need to be doing that job. That's what I've always said. Anytime that there's a job that people are underperforming in, it's because they're not getting paid enough. And just to be clear, I'm not suggesting paying the people who are doing it right now more. I'm not saying you take those knuckleheads that are in police cars now and give them 30 more K a year and suddenly they'll be good cops. I'm saying they'll quickly be phased out and replaced by the kind of worker who was going to go to a, a, a different job that pays $85,000, $90,000 a year. Someone who I don't like, like you should have, you should be like halfway to a fucking law degree. You should be a paralegal before we put you in a cop car and give you a gun. Maybe do something about the, what seems like lifetime employment that they get now. Like once yeah, you get like hired as a cop, it's tricky to get fired, and that's not true in other jobs. Yeah, I, I think it should be super easy to get fired as a cop. Uh, I, I think that, uh, oh man, I, I would I would like to change. You know, I think there's been a lot of looking at that they're not required to like act and help people. Well, let's fix that. That that's you know, been let, a thing for a while, apparently. Let's let's make it so that if a cop doesn't like do his job then they're they're liable like like, like i i like that I, yeah. I like making i mean it's not just cops though right like isn't that like a whole government thing that like once you're hired it's borderline impossible to fire shitty government employees that's why the dmv's ass that's what there's there's no uh baseline <laughs> metrics simple. by which to gaze gauge their success like they're not looking at the amount of turn in the dmv and being like oh we can make more money like they just don't give a fuck like they just won't like like that I seems agree. to be a government employee thing that like once you're hired on, it's very difficult to get rid of you. Oh, and another thing, um, I really don't think you should be able to police in a district that you don't live in. Uh, That's like, so like, true. Like, like down to oh, the smallest really? municipality. I don't think you should be the police officer in my town mm-hmm. if you don't live here, in my county if you don't live here, in my state if you don't live What's here, million, or in my country percent. if you don't live here. I don't understand you're, why you're going to be – so like uh, – so like if, if you want like, – like let's say there's a, there's a big riot going down in Atlanta – Okay. or something that like needed to be handled by government officials. Like they're, they're going to send the national guard who were born in Connecticut or whatever there, because there's no connection to the local people. There's no connection to the community. They're more than happy to do whatever's asked of them. Whereas if you ask someone who a, a police team that was a part of that community, you know, hopefully they would be a little more understanding about it and be like, well, this is where we fucking, or ideally that's what it should be. This is where we live. We need Dude, to be more measured in our I response. Watch, let me put a counterpoint out there. Kyle, are you changing the topic or more police really? stuff. It was just a, just a police video I just watched. Okay, let me let me answer the, the, this thought you put out though. <clears throat> Let's say you're in a town, maybe it's not the biggest town, and mm-hmm. I say all your cops have to be locals. You might have a really shitty talent pool. You might be forced to hire Billy Bo Bob, who we all knew was a bully in high school because he's the only guy applying in Ocean City for lifeguards. This is before I got on. There was an interview, and all the local kids. Got a hundred percent on the interview, and the people from out of town would get, you know, whatever five percent or whatever mm-hmm. they, they deserved. And it gave locals a leg up. And when they figured out what was going on, they got rid of it. They're like, This is an athletic competition, it's timed. We don't hire people based on whether they live here or not. Mm-hmm. And they got better guards. If you had to hire cops that were nearby, maybe you don't have the best ones. Yeah, and I'm sure you could extend it. You know, if there's a town with a hundred people and you need two cops, there might not be someone there I, who's qualified. I, I, but as a whole, best- like I do think it holds true that like a group of any sort of enforcement officials who is from the area they're being forced to enforce on, like, is going to be better than like 
Okay. People from a different city, like a, a bunch of St. Louis to... cops going to handle a Memphis riot. I think they might be a little more apt to be like, we don't, we don't fucking live in Memphis. Like we, this isn't our community. We have no ties here. Maybe I'm a million percent. So they'll off. do what? They'll let the thing go down horribly or they'll be too rough. They, they might be too, too rough, too aggressive, okay. like too apt to harm people. I, I see that. Maybe it's just a rule that applies to medium and large places. Mm -hmm. that, that could be like, I, I don't know what the fucking solution is. Yeah. But I, I and I think like like I don't want better cops as in what when I think of better cops you, like like what does that even mean does it mean we're getting like a guy who taller shoots, ones who are jacked you know, like, like yeah. we're getting like a more like like a a a, a, a more efficient killer shaped you yeah. know like like if we're getting a more efficient killer then that's not what I was looking for but I I, I would like someone who's a little slower on the draw but maybe like went to high school with some of the people he's gonna be like yeah. showing up at their houses. Because you, there's so many scenarios where you see the cops show up at some fucking house, trailer, whatever, and there's like an old person who's like not acting normal, mm -hmm. and it's like, all right, we, this is a real scary situation here. Now that the cop is here, that's what mm -hmm. I always start feeling is like, you know, yeah, now, the cop the, now got, guns in the mix. Before the cop got here, there was always the fact that I know I'm faster than that old lady, and if she starts running at me, I have this outrun her. Hey, she'll get tuckered out if she chases me long enough. It'll make it easier to solve this thing. The cop is going to be like, one more step and you're dead, granny. Like, that's their attitude. So when you bring them there, like, you need to know that. I know that mm -hmm. the U.S. just instituted some new phone number. And the fact that, I, that, that like, neither of you probably have heard about it I and that not. I can't remember it is a good sign that they're not advertising enough. But I mm -hmm. think there's a new mental health hotline that you're supposed to call, like, 998 or something if you got, like, a kooky neighbor who might need to be looked in on. There's no way they're not sending the cops anyway. They're still yeah, going right? to send those two guys in oh the black God. and white. What Dude, if you, if you call the cops, though, like if someone's acting erratically in a dangerous way, they should send the cops. You don't send it, a fucking 21-year-old girl social worker to try and handle that. That You're, you're sending her into a mission that hot. can't be won. I'd have you call 988 on me all the time. If that's what they were going to do. Like, yeah, oh, I'm feeling, one, one. I I'm feeling, real, feeling real lonely. I might do something. I don't know. I, like, I know I have a Missouri number, but my my enemy Kyle, if he doesn't get his dick sucked by a sexy social worker, he's going to go on a rampage. He, he wants to eat gummies with a with a 22 year old and yeah. watch Lord of the Rings two. <laughs> it's two one one. That's the number Kyle talked about. I think I googled. It. I think I got it right. Uh, mental health hotline. This is for non. You call a cop if it's a life threatening mental health thing. If it's not two one one. And apparently yeah. you get a human, they say on the internet. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I know. I'll say this. Like, like, if I had someone in my life going through like a manic episode or something like that, I no way I call the cops. No. Like, they, like, like they're go you are bringing a, 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 an auto cannon into the mix. You might as well be bringing like a Terminator in oh, who shit. has like protocol. You're not bringing a person who's going to make rational decisions. They're going to kill your loved one if they make one mistake. And they'll kill your dog for fun. Oh, they'll kill your dog for fun. They love smoking dogs. I just can't imagine a, some piece of shit cop breaking into my house and shooting Fozzie and Teddy. Oh, he'd, they'd explode. They'd they would. The they'd use the 12 gauge. <laughs> they'd use the 12 gauge <laughs> and just absolutely pop my 12 pound dog. <laughs> you just hear, dog, boom, boom. I got him, Sarge. I got him. <laughs> <laughs> Tank goes down. Look at him shaking in the corner threateningly. <laughs> Don't worry, Johnson. You're going to get a medal for this. Menacingly. <laughs> I guess it's 988. I feel like Zach corrected me. 211 is. Don't for... call any of those numbers. Just, just, just <laughs> 211, I guess, is for non emergencies, and you might get a food shelter or a, a food bank or a shelter. 211. And 988 is a non threat, non life threatening mental health. What if there was a number called where they would just send a big guy who was on your side no matter what? I like that. What yeah. If, what What if you called one thousand and they would send like a six foot two, two hundred twenty pound guy, a black man just who is like Samoan. who is like on your side no matter what the argument you're having? Mm -hmm. is. You know what I want? I should be, be able to yell the n word at Kroger. He would back you up like he would give that? you a, a hood pass. <laughs> you what's should the be disease? Able to... What what's that disease that 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 makes those people like like uh, Tourette's? 
No, 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 no. Their skin goes from dark to light. Vitiligo. Yeah. He, he, he would have your back. He'd say, Vitiligo. Like, something like what? that. I mean, Tatum's got vitiligo. Yeah. <laughs> he can say what he wants. He, like, he'd have your back. He'd, he'd be there with the N-word card. Now, that's, I don't know why you went specifically to a race-based thing. I because was it was, because you said he was black, and I imagined the funniest thing for someone to having to be defend mm. would be a horrible person doing something racist. Remember those, <laughs> it, remember the Super Bowl commercials where you had, like, Terry Tate, the office linebacker yes. or whatever? Like like that. Yeah, that those is, were good. <laughs> you're able to like bring Terry Tate, the office linebacker, into your life anytime you need to. If somebody's giving you a hard time, let's say Granny's got a knife. All right. Mm -hmm. I want Terry Tate there, not a cop. Terry Tate's gonna <laughs> fucking knock her out, get the knife yeah. away. He's dealt with a crazy bitch or two himself. You know, you know what would be a, a, a good keeps popping in my head. It, when I'm in an Xbox lobby mm -hmm. and someone's talking trash in a British accent, I don't fuck with them. These people are experts at their craft. It You're just wrong. You give too much credit to these Brits. They're stupid retards too. You can make no, fun of them. No, they're less stupid retard than me. I, and and <laughs> if I if I see a British guy and I'm just like, he's gonna outwit me. Fuck this. I'm not into it. You know why? They don't have guns. They have to work with their heads all the time. Uh, if they came here, they'd lose. Right? That's true. for sure. They would. We now eat them right away. <laughs> we 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 shoot them, but but online we shoot them. <laughs> so we, online yeah. they're British and they're here with me, and I have to do a battle of wits with the British people. Fuck that! I'm you out. know what I could go for is a little revenge of history. Mm. I would love to conquer the United Kingdom, and oh, like yeah. name them like. Minnesota, something terrible, <laughs> and be like, You're the 52nd state. And they're like, Oh, buff, well, there's like six different places here. There's a, no, England, there's Ireland, there's Northern Ireland. And it's like, Shut the fuck up. You're from New Delaware, idiot. Uh, New like, Alabama, because they're <laughs> yeah. British. They, they're they incest. They need to be Dude. New Alabama. Yeah, they need to be teeth? New Alabama. Yeah, yeah, New Alabama. The teeth are it, perfect. It, yeah. I, I was, th I've been thinking a lot about. Like who I would conquer if I became president. England and for sure, dude. I would take the British Isles because I don't want England. Like England's already like so down with us. Anytime we want to go to war or make an economic policy, they might as well be a state. They are we just, a bitch. We That's don't true. want to be propping their their shitty economy up. They though. like to like, pretend they're an independent country, but they kind of just do what we tell them to. But but if we took their those British Isles down there, all of those like vacation properties is what I'm thinking. Like like all those places that people fly to. I don't know who owns Tahiti, but take that too. The Bahamas. How about, how about New Zealand? We could conquer New Zealand in a half hour and think of how what are we awesome do we with that? go. What are we gonna do with that buck tooth uh, pregnant woman that leads them? I don't fucking care. She can be a she can be a puppet. She can just be a, a figurehead that when we come over, we're like, yeah, J Jakinda or whatever her name is. You can stay in charge as as a puppet, but just know your entire economy is now about getting people from the Midwest mm -hmm. to a funner beach. I think they. I, I don't. I don't know. I, I don't know if New Zealand has a great economy. Like, like I don't think we want a dependent. We want something that could be a cash cow. No, you're 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 mistaken. Uh, we wouldn't help. We would just take advantage, like the same way we are with Mexico, where we're like we like carved yeah. out a little bit of Cancun, like the best beach area, and then we go there. We'll do that with New Zealand as well. Hmm. Like we'll find whatever the best beaches are in New Zealand. They can still run their own shit in, you know, in theory. But we're going to be overseeing it. We're Are they going to be like pay paying? Are they going to like pay taxes to us? They're absolutely going to pay taxes. Well, if they pay taxes, we have to provide like. I mean, who's oh, going to handle that? That's true in theory. It seems like the roads and bridges will kind of crumble away without us. Oh, like, what's like New Zealand? Back what's New Zealand going to do other than cry about it? You ever see those kiwis? Got? <laughs> what are they gonna do? Oh, I brought you. It's not entirely fair. You came in here. You, you stole our land, and you, now you're just using it as beaches. And it's like I don't know what you're saying, idiot. Shut up. <laughs> you're a second class citizen now because you've got a New Zealand patch on your arm, and I'm an American. <laughs> However, mm -hmm. we set it up down oh, there. Can we, can we do like a like a like a like a Nazi thing and put put some sort of some sort of sash on them so we can identify yeah. them? Well, not just a not an arm patch. That was very gauche. We'd have like a uh, like a good looking hat or something. That Star of David is a cool ass symbol. I wish I could rock that. I remember seeing um, Vin Diesel yeah. in that movie, The Knockaround Guys. He had the Star of David tattoo, mm -hmm. and I always thought that looked pretty slick. That is like Star of David, very good looking icon. The, mm -hmm. the perfect, like the two triangles inverted. You got the six points. It looks good. I like the Star it's of David. Solid. Yeah, that's a good yeah. one. Can I do another question? Isn't it five? Is it six? No. Points? Yeah, it's a Five it's a triangle the and then one. another triangle. Uh, uh, That's a pentagram. A, pen, a pentagram is the is the five point. 
Okay. Which is also yeah. cool, but it's the Satan one, right? It's also cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. This is a paragraph long, so buckle up. Okay. A question for everyone, probably mainly Kyle. My girlfriend just broke up with me, and I thought she was the one. So this poor guy got dumped. It's been on and again, off again for a few years, not unlike Kyle's past experience. In fact, this has attempted to drive me to suicide and into the depths of depression and addiction. So hearing Kyle's story meant a lot to me. This time around, we both gave it a solid try and it didn't work and I'm ready to move on forever. I don't want kids or a relationship in the foreseeable future. I just want to have fun and fuck around, but I don't enjoy high energy parties or going to clubs, mainly because I never get laid doing that, but because my personality can't shine and I feel awkward. I'm an attractive dude with a good body, but at the end of the day, it's the personality that seals the deal. Basically, my question is, how do I be a hoe when I don't enjoy loud environments with tons of people I don't know? It's overwhelming. I just want friends with benefits, meaningless sex. And then there's a PS. I'm on Tinder, and I get a lot of responses, but it fizzles out. <clears throat> um, yeah, you want to be on like all the dating sites uh, that you can afford, and you want to pay for the premium versions of them. They cost money. Yeah, they can. What you do you know? get for the premium version? Various things. Uh, one of the big ones is you can see who's looked at you or liked you, depending on like the service. It things that help you get more likes. Literally, there there are ways that you can pay to like boost and make sure that your profile is on the t on everybody's homepage. Essentially, mm -hmm. that works. Like when when I would pay for a boost, like I would time it so that I was like, okay, people get off work at five p.m., probably home and like sitting in a chair by seven if they're like. I just figured that someone's chicks are on Tinder at 7 p.m. That's the hot time. So like, all right, we'll boost at 6.30 and we'll run through there. And like, it would be so effective. Like, like, like as far as, um, I, I, you know, I, I can't read your text messages to women and see what you're saying. That's not like sealing the deal. So who knows why one, why two people don't like, you know, mm -hmm. hook up or, or, or make, make things work together. But I would say it's really important to be direct and, uh, but not too direct and, and if you don't know the difference, then you're just going to have to go by experience because I, you, you got you to be somewhere between let's fuck and talking. I've, I've and, had and, success with the first one. I've had success. All right. So let me just say this. You can, it's easy to get a fucking female pen pal that you fucking chat with every day and nothing ever happens. Those are a dime a dozen. But mm -hmm. so, so, so you can go that route and hope that, that this chick is eventually going to be like, Oh, by the way, I would love your penis inside me one night. Come to my house. They're never going to be that direct about anything. Women don't really do that. So you're going to have to be the one that's like, come to my house. Like, like set up a date at your own home. Get them there. And, mm -hmm. it, you know, generally, often, sometimes and here's, they're going to want to meet another, you. Another like, good have tip. a bar near your house that you're going to invite them to. Like, be like, hey, like, I under, under, be understanding that dating is scary for women as well. Like, you need of to, course. like... You need to. I would often like bring that up right away, like be like, mm. "Hey, I, I know it's a little sketchy. We just met or whatever. We just started sp talking, but would you like to go grab a drink and or, or maybe something to eat tonight? There's this place kind of between us. We could meet there. I'm gonna be there either way. This way, you know, I'm not a crazy or something. Hey, look, make tell your friends you're gonna be meeting me there. Whatever you want to do, I'll, you know, I'll, uh, like. You, I want to prove to you that I'm not a crazy. Like, like no, just show up. My right name away. is Matthew Woodworth. <laughs> <laughs> and i'm um, from raleigh <laughs> Just but, but I, look I, on it. Yeah. I will say this like the first hint of being a fucking creep that you ever accidentally give to a woman who's who doesn't feel safe with you yet is going to be an immediate so like dry as the desert pussy blocking you stringing you along a little because so now she's afraid kind of blocking you kind of thing. creep like if yeah. you say like dude you look great i'd love to jump those bones creep it's, it's gonna just or is that the you're like that aim for the middle you, right you, now you've got to you've got to get a feel <laughs> love of to like jump those bones <laughs> i like that one right I like that. Um, <laughs> so like it definitely depends but, like, what if like she's dressed like a skeleton that would be good. Jesus, but if, if she had like, if she was dressed as a skeleton on there, or if she had an eating disorder, that'd be hot too. Yes. Like, like let her like, know that you've noticed she's put been putting the work in. Right. Yeah. That's she's been hitting that toilet three, four an times. Anorexia. <laughs> <laughs> no, like you've got to feel that out to know if it's time to like start talking in a more of an adult way. Like, hey, you're. 
I, nice I, I, tits. I, I, <laughs> like literally, like 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 there's a there's a point where you're going to say nice tits, and to her that's going to be a genuine compliment from someone she likes. Well, yeah, trusts. after she sends a picture of her tits to you. Well, yeah, if she sends a picture of your tits to Which you, she demonstrates then, a like. Yeah. All right, <laughs> if, if she's sending nudes, then, then we're already in the home stretch, right? Like, like, mm. like now you just have to like send nudes that she's not going to be grossed out by, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I just um, send, I just squat over my phone. <laughs> I, just, I, I, don't, I don't even send a dick pic. It's just my hairy asshole. It's a gif. It's a gif. It's a, it's a gift of my hairy asshole, and I'm winking. like, f- I'm like flexing it, yeah, that's <laughs> like good. Wink, winking my ass. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's how I get girls. I guess I, my takeaway from Kyle's thing was the premium uh, aspects of the dating sites are worth the money, and unless she's giving you hints, kind of aim for making this happen without being crude and outright like you know, mm-hmm. let's fuck, bitch. And yeah, here's you're, another you're, another initially tip you should I, be trying to form a connection with this person because a you want a connection with them at to mm-hmm. some like presumably you don't literally just want a wet hole you may you might want to like well it depends where a, you're at in life all right sometimes <laughs> that's where you're at in life okay yeah. fair enough but but what i'm getting at is like your initial job is to form a connection and find out if there is a connection and find the things you you have in common and talk those up right like like like, like mm-hmm. that's step one if she's wants your dick, like she's gonna let you know so obviously, like like within the first hour or two, and you, then you can transition into like just sending her your address. But but yeah. like the main thing is like if you can make the date happen at your house, then you really need to make the date happen at your house. Like it's much, it's so much easier to like transition a date at your house where it's like dinner and a movie, um, to sex or whatever you're. It sounds I, I like never... that's what you want. I never did like the just come to well actually that's not true I did that a few times but usually it was like we'd like grab a drink somewhere and that was more as a way to be like hey I'm a normal guy mm-hmm. like let's go grab a drink you'll be able to see that I'm normal we'll be around a ton of people and then you'll feel comfortable enough to come back with me when you realize yeah. I'm not a murderer this is when I became high level tinder back in the day this is what I also did is I would I would get the in and set up the the sex date for them to come over and and us to fuck and what I would do is after that was secured, I would start mentioning passively plans I had at 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 1030. And they were coming over at 7, 730. And so the whole time I got to be like, I can't wait. It's going to be so nice to meet you. It's a damn shame. I have to go to my buddy's thing at 10. And so they would come over and we'd have sex. And then by like 930, 945, I was like, ah, God damn it. The time has flown by. Like, I got to hit you back up. We got to hang out again. This was a bunch of fun. And then I would go hang out with my friends and they'd be like, Taylor, did you do the Tinder thing again? Where you, <laughs> where you like tell a girl to come over and then you fuck and then you have plans at 10. And I was like, yeah, dude, the plans at 10 thing works great. Cause then I would like just walk across the street to where all my friends lived in the apartment complex and hang out the rest of the night. Like a, like a stag, like a, a single guy. Yeah, I've definitely had girls like, uh, I had a girl come over one time and then she's like, is it psychopathic? No, no, that's that that's, that's normal, right? I think that's from Seinfeld even. Why like having 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 to, have having to get up can? early in the morning, all that stuff. Why do you want yeah. that? I never pulled the wall. It's because I, I wanted to go I wanted to go hang out with my friends that night, but I didn't want to bring a girl that I wasn't really that interested in with me. And so I would say, like, you come oh. over, we'll fool around, and then oh my stars and garters, I've got to head out, and then you usher her out I and she leaves, see. and then you go to your friend's house. I, I, yeah. I, I my dumb ass didn't contemplate the idea you'd be having sex with someone that you didn't want to have sex with again and not this, today yeah. well not to yes not today like some some recurring customers We're all done of course, for today. But, but like it, it wasn't like and we're most of these mo- most of these girls also were not like oh i wanted to spend the whole night together they're like no i got my dick i want to go home okay like, and that's what they want like yeah i've only ever had i think like one or two girls like this one girl she had pajamas and I was like, Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> like I didn't say anything, but I was thinking like, you just, you just assumed that you, it was pajama time and you're supposed yeah. to, <laughs> she's like in like a full pajama thing. Like, like she had planned to spend the night over and that was the first time I'd ever met her. And it, it was like, oh, okay, well, it's fine. I guess I'm a light sleeper. I know you won't rob me in the night. We'll be good. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I do that. Realizing that someone's spending the night when you don't want them to is a troublesome thing. I, I had that. I, uh, I fooled around with the girl in the bathroom of a restaurant, uh, probably <laughs> five restaurant? years ago. It was called, it's called Bar Louie in Central West End. Sure it was it still there. <laughs> but, no, it wasn't RBs. It was Bar Louie in Central West End and where I lived at the time uh, when I was in the city. And I remember going there and I was just blackout drunk. It was late at night. And I was like with this girl and not with her, but like but I, I went to the restaurant across my, my apartment and met up with a friend of mine. And he was like, this, this cute girl is kind of into you. And I was like, oh, that's neat. But I was fucking wasted and then we went all with all of us went to bar louie and i saw a girl that i knew had a crush on me in high school that i hadn't seen in many years and she ditched her date and we started talking and then we went in the bathroom and she wanted me to do cocaine with her and i said no that's okay you can just suck me off and so then she started giving me head in the bathroom there and i could hear outside the bathroom the girl i was with prior to this like getting like pissed and like talking oh. to my friend Tim, like what the fuck is wrong with your cunt friend? And like I was so oh. drunk, I didn't, I didn't realize like what I had done was so like shitty. Oh, so was like, that I, wrong? Yeah, was that <laughs> wrong? And so then, then we just left and went back to to my place, and we we fooled around for a while. And after that, I remember being like, "You want to watch an episode of Sunny or something?" Like, and in my head, I was like, "This will be the twenty minute buffer before you leave." Yeah. And she goes to the bathroom, comes back out full frilly fucking comfortable sleeping clothes yeah. and then it's like okay you're a real true piece of shit if you tell her to leave or you yeah. imply she should leave you are truly garbage a yeah. garbage dear person you have to let this girl stay and so then it's like oh well you're more than welcome i was expecting you to stay the whole time i got some gatorades you want some gatorades out of my single guy like apartment blue it's <laughs> green it's the worst <laughs> flavor i've got two greens in there Oh, I remember she was like, do you have anything else to drink? I was like, I have half a bottle of tequila and two green Gatorades. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and she was right, like, so that's fine. That, uh, here's was, another thing, bad. bachelors. Uh, here's a couple <laughs> things, bachelors who aren't getting laid. Um, get a trash can with a lid on it for your bathroom and don't fucking use it. Just leave it there. It's for women. And uh, also, like, fix your hygiene. If you're not using the the the... The, the deodorant that causes cancer, then you just smell. Um, if you're not bathing, all right. So let me let me explain this to some of you because not everybody, no, but not everyone grew up with dads, and not everyone had a dad who who was not a piece a good of shit. Dad, yeah. All right. <clears throat> Let's say you got you got a date at eight o'clock. All right. You're gonna leave your house at seven thirty, and you'll be there thirty minutes to pick her up. Let's just say that I, this is in a fantasy where like people drive on in cars to pick up people who live thirty minutes away for sure. dates. Okay, this is this is this is where I grew up. Um, but you take your bath, your shower at 7 p.m. Okay, the last minute. Do you know why, boys? It is so that your asshole and your balls don't reek. Okay, I've had so many girlfriends be like, "Oh, you smell so good." And I'm like, "I don't." It's called because you're a clean guy and you're. I'll be, like, I'll be. They're like, "What's that smell?" And I'll be like. It's soap and deodorant. That's my balls, bitch. It's called <laughs> soap and deodorant. And, I, and I, I've asked women about like smelling it. She's like, I've had women have told me that they've had guys that would like, like when he took his pants off, the room was filled with a stink. Oh, good gosh. And like he's not like, wiping his butt well enough or something. No, just like B.O. Like, like his balls and junk are all so sweaty. Uh -huh. and, and like, you got to keep in mind, like, like this guy has driven to somebody's house to like, it's red panty night. Fuck. And, and yeah. like, this is, this is what. What I'm saying is like, like, just be the best version of you mm -hmm. if, if you're going to go on a date. That's what you should be. That's that's the fraud that we all tell the opposite sex. This is how I am all the time. Like <laughs> you, you should be spending the whole week to peak at that moment for your mm -hmm. day. Think of that as well. Like, 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 if yeah. you're, if, like, like, all right, is your house clean? Does it smell good? Are there shit stains in your toilet? Fix those things. <laughs> do, you, do you know how many compliments I got in that like Tinder dating era? Because I had a nice apartment. I kept it very fucking clean. There was never like a bag of garbage sitting there. If it got mostly clean, I would take it out. And I always, that was at the time where I was like into making candles. I would, and this was a great end. And I would like have candles and I would like light them and they would be like, it smells so nice. And I'd be like, that's great. That's actually a peppermint candle I made a few days ago. And then you start chatting about things like that. And they're like, wow, this is, uh, would a straight man light candles? I don't feel threatened. 
like because they thought <laughs> yeah. I was gay for a little bit, but then mm-hmm. but then I got hard for pussy, so they knew I wasn't gay. And they knew yeah, that gonna... you weren't strictly mm-hmm. gay. They knew I wasn't only gay. <laughs> yeah, in my they opinion, knew I they still know you're bi. <laughs> but I think, in my opinion, like you've got to be able to read the room uh, to know whether it's time to start being more direct about like sex. Because if you if you start talking about sex too early, you are that guy who's getting memed on Reddit for for mm. like being like opening up like well, I want that pussy. All right, that is ne- the only time your opening should be I want that pussy is if her pussy is visible in her profile picture. <laughs> I saw yeah. a girl one time, she had her tits out in her profile picture. It's not allowed. I was about to but, ask that. But wow. nobody but who's going to fla- but who's going to flag her, right? Like like who's going to flag a woman? I'm certainly like, not. I'm not gay. The first thing I said was about her big titties and her profile. What am I gonna be like? Oh, so you like you like literature, huh? <laughs> yeah. No, she wants you like to talk about big, She clearly wants to talk about them big titties. Like, like mm-hmm. read the room is, is the real thing. Because and like you, something like I, I don't know if you've experienced this too, Kyle. Sometimes like when you were chatting with them, they would bring up sex first, and then almost as a way to reinforce how much you don't even care. You're not even interested. You're getting so much pussy that's not even tempting to you. You just keep on with your current conversation. Just be like, nice. And then you just keep talking about whatever other benign thing you were talking about. And that makes them think, that that little fishing lure didn't work. This guy, this guy's not not quite as horny as the other 3,000 losers I've talked to on this app. And that makes them realize another way, you're not a fucking weirdo. And that you're not going to fucking assault them. And also realize that you are like... You are not a commodity as a single man on this dating website. All I right? know. Like, like, like there are, <laughs> like, 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 I don't mean, it, like, whoever's listening to this, you probably aren't. If if you need help, you aren't. Okay, you are one in a you. You are not one in a million. You are a million of a million. What does it mm-hmm. take to stand out as a guy? That's what. Like, yeah, that's what we're talking about. You have to be. About, right? uh, you have to be right. like either have a body like Kyle's, like outrageously ripped, or you have to be funny. Like I, I had a better approach, like getting them to to laugh or like mm-hmm. telling jokes and stuff it's because, like, like, I looked, oh, I looked good in my photos because I, I was like ever then, but I didn't, you know, I wasn't, you know, turning turning eyes or anything. I think that like, like it's like like having like like thirsty pictures, like I I would use on Tinder, like like help to get like um to the conversation stage, mm-hmm. but. If we get there and I'm a dumb dumb, like we're not going anywhere from there either. You know, like like it's definitely yeah. helpful to get to the conversation stage. If I don't know, your chicks are starting the conversation with like, I, you know, with compliments about that. If that's their thing, yeah. that's clearly I mean, a lot why of guys they like have gym pics where they look good. It's not that rare. Now, Kyle yeah, but that's pretty... all I put on there. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of a lot that's, of guys. In another like... way, that's kind of what I'm like. That's kind of what my profile is saying in general, right? It's that like. I, I'm I'm looking for a good time mostly, mm-hmm. and and when mm-hmm. you know, that's a question that I would ask a lot, like what are you looking for on here? And I think it's a cliche. It's it's probably like like um, not not a smart thing to ask, but it's what I really want want the answer to, and it's also they're always going to follow up with what do you want on here, and then that's when you act confused, like like you you, you should literally tell them I'm not sure, something between a friend with benefits. Or situation, or or a hookup, or maybe even something that leads to a relationship. Kind of looking for a sex slave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for like a 90 pound Asian girl who will pop the zits on my back and. I'm looking do for someone to to fuck occasionally, but it's mostly a laundry and dishes uh, job. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, that's what Boogie wanted. Like 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 we were. He was talking about. Made. He yeah. was like holding. He, he was like, ah, I don't have time for all these hoes. I'm I'm holding out for I'm like my that. my perfect girl. <laughs> and it's like, well, what's your like half cackling at this point? Because he, I think that was probably the same episode where he talked told us about intimidating people at the fucking gas he station. He did. He intimidated them um, with his fucking fence post teeth. <laughs> they saw his gums were bleeding and they thought he had a bowl up. <laughs> right, right. Oh I my god, those are some white oh, vinyl yeah. oh, planks he's got in his mouth. <laughs> Here's the thing on that. If if I have my facts right, that (laughs) perfect girl he was describing that we all thought was like ridiculously aiming high is was his like low key girlfriend. And I think she might have been his sugar baby. So when he was like, I'd like a lightweight Asian girl who would he's describing his sugar baby. I wasn't laughing as hard at the sugar baby comments he made as the 
when I walk into a gas station, yeah, fucking people look. And it's like, yeah, it's not because you're scary. It's because the chips are shaking. <laughs> it's because I, the Snickers container is bouncing around as you're walking around. I there. have an issue with that. Like, like, so he's he's so heavy. He can't fight. It's an athletic endeavor. Mm-hmm. It's not any different than a guy who was really small or a girl talking about how everyone was afraid of her physical prowess. Yeah. Like, probably not. Probably not. Mm-hmm. You, you just don't pretend you're a tough guy. Well, yeah. the the number one guaranteed way to get more pussy is, of course, by maximizing your loads with a, a bottle of lock and load. I'll tell you this. Exactly. Amongst your profile pictures, if you doesn't matter what you've got up there. If you also have a picture of like a test tube with like eight, 10 milliliters of cum in it, women love that shit. Okay. When they women they, love it. They when they when they know that you're a fertile man <laughs> who could mm-hmm. blast them so full of baby batter that they end up with their own TLC reality show when they're done when you're women want to be scared scared of how fertile you are yeah yeah <laughs> they want to see you as a threat <laughs> they, they want to wonder if they if they even have enough eggs to 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 be with a man like yeah you, you need, you need a, that that's what that women makes want. sense well, you All guys right, well, want to call the show i am hungry yes um, buy All our right. uh buy our gummies hundred uh, yes. Check out the links in the description. We got Lucy, we got gummies, and we got uh, cum pills. Death by Gummy Bears. Check them out. Very strong, very high quality. 20% off with PKA20. You're going to enjoy them. If you don't have a tolerance, take it slow. They're strong. They're no joke. PKA 600.